You ready? There is a connection between the paranormal, UFOs, and the myths of ancient history. The clues are scattered across the landscape from a forbidden past. Maybe even in your own backyard. There is a connection between the true nature of our reality, consciousness, and the unexplained. I am Carl the Crusher. Let's explore the unknown. Let's go over some historical context so everyone understands what we're about to do. Here's our team standing at Mount Wilson Ranch in front of the motel, the same motel where Bob Bigelow took the NIDS team and had his paranormal encounter with the ghost shaman in motel room one. Here you have Hal Putoff, Jacques Bellet, Colm Kelleher, and Bob Bigelow and the rest of the team standing in the same spot. We also have Bob Bigelow, Jacques Bellet, and Hal Putoff standing above the meadow at Mount Wilson doing some kind of research there. Follow Hal Putoff throughout this story. It gets interesting. We've got Hal Putoff, Kit Green, Russell Targ, and Pat Price in the next photo. These guys invented remote viewing and built the psychic spy program at Stanford that was used by the CIA. They were remote viewing everything from Russia to UFOs to Skinwalker Ranch and beyond. Hal Putoff, Phil Corso, George Knapp, and Colonel Alexander. Nids, Bass, ATIP, Project Chameleon, aka Skinwalker Ranch, To the Stars Academy, Mount Wilson Ranch, they're all connected. You've got Hal Putoff, Lou Elizondo, and Eric Davis in the next photo. Here's Bigelow, Tom DeLong, Elizondo all together. On September 14, 1993, Bigelow, Linda Moulton Howe, Stephen Greer, Lawrence Rockefeller, and a whole team of notable people were at the Rockefeller Ranch in Wyoming. The current owner of Mount Wilson Ranch, Jeff McBurney, purchased the property directly from Bob Bigelow, and he said that soon after, one of the Rockefellers actually came to the property and said they wanted Jeff to take him to see the portal. The Rockefeller Initiative included some major players. Here he is with an autographed photo with President Ronald Reagan. Reagan was announcing his Star Wars program, which included everything from MK Ultra to the MX Missile Program. Mount Wilson Ranch was a potential location for the MX Missile Site until archaeologists ran into a load of indigenous artifacts and multiple encounters with skinwalkers, the shaman, and even extraterrestrial encounters that began on the ranch. Here's Bigelow in front of the fireplace in the ranch, the same fireplace rumored to be designed by Howard Hughes himself, the same location we are researching today. NIDS was actively researching at Mount Wilson Ranch. And you can see in the photos in front of the motel, there's Hal Putoff. Keep your eye on him because he is going places with Bob Bigelow and it might surprise you where. Bob Bigelow, Jacques Vallée, and Hal Putoff are going directly to Skinwalker Ranch. Hal Putoff, Eric Davis, Eric Bard, and Brandon Fugel. There they are, standing at Skinwalker Ranch. Eric Davis was one of the original physicists and researchers supposedly conducting research at Skinwalker Ranch. Eric Davis has interesting connections to some highly public figures in the UFO community. Jeremy Corbell, Gary Nolan, and Gary Nolan is the Stanford research scientist who's been going on Fox News and the New York Post claiming that people who come into contact with UFOs and paranormal phenomena can have health effects called interference syndrome. Similar MRI brain scans have been conducted on my friend Chris Bartell while he was working at Skinwalker Ranch. If you're surprised where Hal Putoff is currently working, he is alongside Tom DeLong at To The Stars Academy. Here he is listed on the advisory board right there on their main website. And this brings us back to Mount Wilson Ranch. Here we are back at the hill above the meadow at Mount Wilson Ranch with Bob Bigelow, Jacques Vallée, and Hal Putoff. Hopefully all of this information comes full circle back to Mount Wilson from Skinwalker Ranch and you see the connected pieces. The big part of this that connects is Chris Bartell. Chris has worked at Area 51, the Nevada test site, Nellis Air Force Base, and over six years as a lead security officer at Skinwalker Ranch, where he was asked and tasked several times to conduct psychic experiments, including trying to levitate things and do remote viewing, similar to the research done at the Stanford Research Institute. The way that Chris Bartell was able to keep himself clear and his mental sanity intact was by spending his time with the dogs. 
Chris Bartell took me to Skinwalker Ranch personally and helped me meet the team, search for petroglyphs, retell stories and recount paranormal experiences that we've had with the team, and even do research and collaborations outside the ranch and beyond. We've been able to explore underground tunnel systems, conducting infrasound tests, and using EMF and radiation sensors in underground aquifer sensors and around Skinwalker Ranch, looking for the source of energy that might act as a portal to another dimension or a gateway that unlocks human consciousness. Welcome back to the Carl the Crusher channel. Check it out. I'm here on the fly with Chris Bartell. We've got Brent from the Museum of Terror. I don't even know your last name. Stone. Or Stone. Stone. Brent Stone. And we've got Chris Lado here. Yeah. And we're actually, okay, I'm going to flip my camera around. Bartell's going to tell you where we're at and what we're about to do because this is kind of crazy. And this is all Chris's idea. Yeah, we're <laughs> this not we're not legal accomplices. We just I, want yeah, to say that. I'm being held against my will. <laughs> <You're being held laughs> right? All right, this is what we're doing. So basically, we're going to go to the park house over here. This is Mr. Bigelow's private office. And we're going to just uh, pop in, see if he's there, see if he can help us with this Wilson document, with, with us, with the Wilson documentation of the, the, the ranch. ranch that's going out yeah. there. I know he's got vital information, so it'd be great to collaborate and uh, see if he's here. And leave a message. If he's not, we'll be here all week. So. Uh, hopefully he comes up and hangs out with us for a while. Right. Come in, call him. We're going to see. Yep. So we're basically making an unscheduled, unplanned visit to uh, <laughs> this mansion over here that Bigelow owns over the way. We're just going to roll up and see if they'll give us any kind of documentation about Mount Wilson Ranch. Uh, any files, let us look at anything. Maybe we'll even get an interview. I don't know. This is the mansion here. Do you think he's got security here now? Probably. So Chris and I are gonna to try to go in, just the two of us, and we'll, we'll see. This whole place is crazy. Okay, I'm gonna turn my camera off. Here they are coming out, and they're both filming. Everybody's filming. <laughs> we did it. Well, that went okay. pretty well. We didn't talk to Bob Bigelow, but we talked to Colm Kelleher. Colm He was in Colm, yeah. And uh, he talked about Mount Wilson, kind of downplayed it a little bit and everything, but yeah. kind of had a funny smirk on his face the whole time. <laughs> did me? Yeah. Well, it's a little bit odd. All right, we're going to catch the other guys up. <laughs> All right, so what happened in there? Okay. okay. So we went in, uh, Chris just went up to the front counter, said, hey, is Mr. Bigelow here? We're here to talk to Mr. Bigelow. And she was like, who are you? And so she just said, Chris Bartell. And I said, Bigelow or Colin. Yeah, it? yeah, Bigelow or Colin. Huh. So yeah, she called up and then Colin came down, just came right out and started talking to us. And, and to break the ice, we basically just said, We've all been having like experiences, you know, like uh, going to these places and having different paranormal encounters or experiences or dreams and things that affect us. And we're almost like on a certain migration back to this place. And we've all found ourselves back at Mount Wilson trying to figure out what they were doing up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I told them that there has been an animal mutilation in the meadow and this and talked about some of the locals and their abduction stories that they told and all that. And the whole time he had like this shit eating grin on his face, like a smirk. And he, he downplayed it like, uh, we didn't really spend a lot of time up there, right? He yeah. said he only spent like a, a little bit of time. But, it... but we have photographic proof showing that they were up there for decades mm -hmm. doing stuff. Maybe Calm wasn't there for that long. Or but Maybe off and on they were up there. Right. At some form or another, you know, collecting data or whatever. But he was like super interested. You know? yeah. He was like, yeah, this kind of research is a lot of fun. And he's like, it's really interesting. And he talked about how they're doing the, the grant. The, the grant for the uh, consciousness, life after death. Huh. We talked about that for a little bit. And uh, I talked to him about some personal things. Uh, and uh, it, was, it was nice talking to him, but also, you know, I have questions too. And I'll, I'll probably come back just myself and talk to him about stuff one-on-one. -on -one. We asked him, you know what? 
what happened at the ranch, what was going on up there. And he basically said it was like one of the best places that they know of to go watch the sky, but it's hard because Area 51's right there, oh, which we know. Mount Wilson. Yeah. Mount Wilson, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, what else did he say? I asked if there was anything paranormal down on the ground and he just said no, but it's like, yeah. we kind of know better, yeah. <laughs> right? He's that's cool what, with us going up there? Is he? Is, yeah. It seemed like he was like, oh, well, cool. You know, so I said, you know, Jeff, the new owner said that wanted to invite him and Bigelow to come back up even yeah. and stuff. And he's like, can't make any promises. But like you said, he's he's probably on the phone with Hal put off and Bigelow right now, right? <laughs> probably. <laughs> right. Right. We'll I'm get an surprised. interview. It was yeah. kind of, you know, I just wanted to catch him off guard. Not to like get him like an, uh, a gotcha boy, but I was like, I got yeah. questions. I know everybody works and I've been here for 20 years in Las Vegas. I've worked in this industry for a long time and I have questions and I like to go right to the source and talk to people versus third party. Yep. And I've been doing third party stuff for three years now, collecting evidence and talking to people and getting to run around on certain things. So I'm not done doing that now. I'm going right to the yeah. source. I mean, it maybe he clears it up quickly or, you know. Yeah. I mean, we just kind of broke the ice, but I'll come back and talk to him one on one, you know, with no nobody else around. So we can just like really talk about some things that were, there's a lot about Skinwalker Ranch that people don't know about. And the, especially the people who were up there for the longest time, there's a lot of stuff that there's a misconception. So I told that to Colin. I said that, you know, I really feel like my extended time on the ranch, you know, almost six years, well, over six years, I really felt like it expanded my creative vision. Like it, it enhanced my photography, all the meditation I did up there, uh, immersing myself in the environment with the dogs and sleeping on the mesa at night. Yeah. I really believe I tapped into some other frequency that enha enhanced my creative vision. And I'm able to show that through the progression of photographs I did through Skinwalker through those six years. Right. Yeah, cool. And, um, and even to this day. And with my foot photography, I feel like I'm tapping into a, a whole different frequency now. So yeah. that's why I wanted to go on this Mount Wilson thing was to see what I can see with my eyes and what, what other things can, can... Well, wait till we start doing that and pair it up with all of your devices, right. Brent stuff to yeah. enhance the meditations yeah. and developing our own uh, version of contact modalities mm -hmm. and meditations and everything like that and we're gonna go right to the source and give it a shot right now decided to take a little bit of a pit stop here on the side of the road we are uh, documenting this is a one of the hyperloops so it's like Tesla's hyperloop only I think this is owned by Virgin the same company that has the airlines and is doing all the Virgin space travel yeah, Somebody's like firing guns over there. Do you hear that? Yeah. yeah. It's like Star Wars out here. It looks like Tatooine. Tatooine, yeah, totally. It's been a fascinating drive so far because we've got Bartel telling us he's worked at a lot of these locations and sites and he can't say much, but he's like, this place is interesting and that's interesting and giving us a lot of backstory. So we're pulling off along the way and checking out a lot of interesting, uh, cool spots in Nevada because basically this whole state is federal ground, federal land, 31%. and all, even over the, the airspace and underground. Everybody knows it, right? It's like they're not even hiding it anymore. It's right under our noses. Find these with like little shells in them and fish. There's like little, see the little found fossils. See the, yeah, see the organisms in here. See that? Oh yeah, look at that. Because these are all dry lake beds. Yeah, I forgot what the name of the actual uh, amoebas or whatever the hell they're called. But these are all this type of rock is all over Nevada. You can find all kinds of cool stuff in here. Sometimes you can just find shells or some fish or whatever. <laughs> Quick update. <laughs> We're at the extraterrestrial beef jerky place on the side of the ET highway that goes to Area 51 and the black mailbox and everything goes right down that road, but we're not going that way. We're going to keep going north for now. Next stop, Mount Wilson Ranch. We're here, guys. This is Mount Wilson Ranch Road. Up here on the right, it's going to be a windmill where Donna Bardeen, one of the caretakers of the property, and another lady saw the ghost of the shaman off the side of the road. And then when I was coming home last time, I saw a huge black wolf run across the road from this side to that side, but I was driving the other way. And then when I got out and looked around, I couldn't see anything and there was no tracks. And that was weird, but yeah, this is the place. Whoa, Jackrabbit. Here we are. So we're going to be pulling up on the saloon. 
So when the animal mutilation occurred, the blood trail came all the way up here across the road through the snow, clear down to the meadow. But yeah, this is one of the oldest uh, standing saloons in the country still. There's like, where's the other one you were saying, Chris? You it's, in, it's called the Santa Fe Saloon in Goldfield, Nevada. Goldfield, Nevada. Yeah, in Nevada again though. But yeah, here we are. Can we trespass? Yes, we are. We have permission for, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. So tons of paranormal stories in the saloon and then the room over here, the far one on the left is where the shaman appeared to Bigelow, apparently. So we gotta sign the guest book. Yeah. Chris, this rock is from, I brought this from Skinwalker Ranch. Oh, yeah. Down that way is the saloon and it sounds like everybody's in the dining room in here. So. Busted! <laughs> Is everybody in here? No. The fireplace. Room. Welcome back. I brought the whole crew, Jeff. Howdy, sir. How you doing, man? Welcome, welcome back. Welcome. <laughs> Carol, what have you been up to? Oh. Blowing your budget, apparently. <laughs> right? No, this isn't all mine. It's not all yours? That's a lot. The rim pods are Andreas and Juana's. And I've got one ordered, but it didn't come in in time. What is this? That's that's an EMF. Oh, no, that's the grid, the IR. Oh, an IR grid. Very We've cool. Been using that. Do you have your SLS here? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. I brought it. It's Everybody like loves that video. Oh, Everybody do? watches it. Yeah, there's, it's got a ton of views. Yeah. Oh, great. I read some of the comments at the very beginning. Uh huh. And they were so interesting. <laughs> People seeing stuff, the shapes on the SLS. So cool. Yeah. 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 So everybody's meeting each other. So Chris has been from Skinwalker Ranch and Carol, Duana, and Andrea were the ones up here that did the seance and we did the SLS investigation in the saloon. So everybody's meeting each other for the first time. It's pretty awesome. Now I get to show and tell like all the cool stuff about Mount Wilson while you guys are here. All right, so this is the Knights of Pythias sword. Brent's going to come over here. He knows all about it. We're going to have to do a whole thing where you tell us everything about it. Thank you. Right? It's a Pythias about 1890 to 1900. It's an early version. It has the wood handle. Uh, after 1900, they started wrapping the handles. And, uh, and the nearest Knights of Pythias Lodge was in that uh, the ghost town down uh, in the past. In Pioch uh, or Del uh, Del Delmar. Delmar, yeah. Which is quite a ways from here. That's really so is. odd. I don't know how it made it up here. There was nothing else in the center of the state for a nice And it came and fizzled. There were about 100 people that were a part of the lodge and then it died out hmm. with the gold rush. So I've been saying it's a Masonic sword or initiation sword, but that's inaccurate. Knights of Pythias or whatever, they're not necessarily no. Masons, right? Knights of Pythias is an offshoot organization that could be, you, know, you could be a Mason and be a member of the Knights of Pythias, but it's a side order. And it's, a, it has its own creed and its own rituals. But this is a ritual sword. It's a, the longer swords were ritual swords used for ritual work. And the, uh, the shorter swords stayed in the lodge on a Bible and uh, things like that. So somebody was out here doing something with this that was substantial. What year would you place this? What time range? Uh, 1890 to 1890? 1890 to 1900. So that would probably fit with all... Wait until we walk down the halls and all the artifacts that we find around here. It would probably fit with that. But that's pretty interesting. What were they doing up here? If we can get just a... Permission. Let's see about opening up and see what the name is. We, These are always we, inscribed. They were like a, they have a name on them. Yeah, they're like a commemorative desk, desk set. Like you get somebody that's a commemorative gavel or something, and right. they always have the person's name on them, so we could trace down who this actually belonged to. Oh wow! Yeah. Let's do it. It was in the, uh, the ghost towns of south here. And, uh, which which ghost town? Uh, Del Delamere is it or Del Delmar? Delmar. 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 Awesome. It's not awesome. Home. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing else in this side of the state. But once you get the guy's name, we can trace it down. Yeah, so it should have a name on it. Yeah. yeah. We could one one day we're going to get it. Yep. <laughs> the right moment. The yep. right timing is coming. The big unshoe thing. Yeah. But you can unscrew the, uh, the end cap as well and pull this off, off so it doesn't splinter. That's what I was worried about. Work. Oh, so this will actually unscrew. It unscrews. Yeah, these are threaded all the way through to, to here. You unscrew it and then you can work on the blade and, so it doesn't yeah, mess that's up. That's why I, that's what I was afraid of. This piece of wood right here. Yeah, these are, it's getting brittle. It's cracking a little. It's an older handle. Um, after 1900, they started uh, wrapping them with uh, leather and braided uh, metal. Mm -hmm. wrapped. So, so. 
grid wire, I should say. There was, a, there was a group up here, but I mean, that's not really close. What were, they, do you think they were camping up here at the cabin and mining up here around? I guess like. I have no clue. No it's clue. Really, like you said, once we figure out who, then we can maybe figure out more. What was that? Is this the hangar that, came, that you this, have? You, this was on there. Yeah, that's not. And this was that's not standard. No. Yeah. And this was buried in the sand. Yeah. And again, you actually felt it. Yeah. See the it's all, yeah. Right over the right? yeah. Yeah. We're all getting a tour now of the uh, fireplace, the lounge area, going down to the saloon. And I'm kind of curious what everybody thinks about this mysterious globe that Jeff has. So this fireplace, if you come look at it, it's full, like they built in like wine glasses and mining cores and tools and lanterns all mortared into the stone working of the mantle. So it's pretty cool. Man, the lighting goes bad when I use my 0.5. Brent, come and check out this globe over here and see if you notice anything interesting. Just take a gander. I'm gonna come around on the other side here. Do you see what I see? Yep, if I could turn the globe just a bit. Tartaria. <laughs> right there. <laughs> what? Europa and Tartaria. Tartaria. Let's see, what do we have from the Americas here? How do you figure? Oh, right, my man actually spun the he globe. He spun the globe. I yeah. didn't even know the globe spun. He was, you've been you. afraid to spin it. And oh, Brent just... <laughs> this one might have some relevance. To this us. is Tartaria. Tartaria, and if you come over here to America Septentrion Nullis, you get the lost cities <gasps> what? of Quivira and Tachana and the uh, Wait, quick. Regnum. I got a focus camera. There you go. And there are indeed old, a lot of old maps uh, that show that Tartaria actually spread into the western United States and had their own cities throughout this throughout this region. That, so it would have come across this entire yeah. northern. Oh, yeah, this correct. Is this. Come across. Look at all the uh, zodiac stuff or whatever astrology and then underneath how, how's the big compass and then i wonder if we looked underneath what antarctica and stuff Ooh. if it had anything interesting well, this, this should open up it's a decanter isn't it? he says it's a decanter jeff yeah it's a yes there we go oh yeah okay look inside there too mind if i pull this out yeah okay, okay. So you obviously know about this thing, so oh, I'm good. Let's see if it's a... This is why I brought him, dude. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> okay, that's not going to come off. We'll need to flip the whole thing over. Usually these pop out. Oh, that's I don't okay. Want to take it apart. It's we have a project. We, we call it Morning Coffee. There we go. Morning Coffee Globe Talk. So, so we will come back right. and try to uh, flip the globe over and check out Antarctica later. There you go. Flipping that whole thing over. Isn't this amazing? It really is. It's like one of the oldest freestanding saloons mm -hmm. like that still exists in the country. So, so there's been all kinds of paranormal stuff that's happened in here too. Like people sitting at the bar, seeing the reflections that there's people up on the balcony when there's really no one up there. So Jeff, yes. Chris and I went and we tried to go talk to Bigelow. We talked to call him Kelleher. He came down and spoke to us and I wasn't able to film it, but he did say, uh, he tried to downplay it, like nothing really happened up here, like la la la, but that doesn't jive with the photos we have. And what you know that, that the bulldozer uh, buried in the was meadow. buried in the meadow. What was it, what did they even need a dozer up here? And not to mention right here where homies are sitting at the bar, it, we have photographic evidence that might go clear back to the 70s when we had Andre Puharic and Jacques Vallée and John Keel literally sitting right here in the same chairs. In fact, I'm going to overlay the picture so you guys can see it on screen right now, right where these guys are sitting. And so 
when he's like, oh, we were only up there for a little bit. Does that jive with you or no? No, not at all. No, that's why he was smirking, right? Like, uh, Again, I, see, I would say, I wish I was there. I know. I bet you had, didn't have your little pocket thing on. I didn't record it, no. I didn't. <laughs> I, did give, I did give him my number and told him that him and uh, Bigelow should come back up to the ranch and, and talk to us. Yeah, so we'll nice, see. Nice work. <laughs> yeah. From, from Vandenberg, maybe, something coming up, but it, you know, again, didn't go in this direction. It's not usual for that in the ending. It was, that was an absolutely unusual one. Yeah. So that's why we're talking about getting those the Sky 360 systems or whatever, yeah. the meteorite tracking systems. That would have been ideal for something. We, could, uh, for sure. we were just talking about getting the Skyhub set up up here and then, or Starlink, not Skyhub, the Starlink, and then we could do that here at Mount Wilson. If it had a Starlink, That's part of awesome. why you're here, yes. <laughs> to see if this is a viable yeah, spot to do this program. If you need uh, uplink, that would be great to have internet. Yep. So we're, the idea that Jeff and I have been talking about is having like sort of a command center with internet and like an interview station, almost like a podcast studio, like an actual place to do research, conduct experiments, do meditations and all of that. Uh, and setting that up maybe like right even in that room right there, right? Ha ha, gotcha. <laughs> So was that in the bunk These house? Guys love it. You had something run up behind you like I did down there? No, I was right here by the uh, fireplace. Oh, here? Yeah. Okay, down the hallway. Yeah, and we were all hanging out in there, and then they all went to bed, and I just did the fire a little more, and I was standing there, I was looking at my phone to turn on the flashlight, and it literally felt like something ran up behind me, because... I jumped and I turned the flashlight and I was looking around and there was nothing there, but you could hear like that and the the feeling of like there's a mesh of like cobweb sensation, like static electricity that like goes through your body or across your face and stuff, and that's very weird. But yeah, they're rushing up behind you. That was weird. I had that down in the bunkhouse too, so. <laughs> Very I'm like, she left me. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Brent's like very psychic, intuitive remote viewer. So everyone I brought here is like a walking biosensor, except for Lado. He's a walking critic <laughs> and skeptic. <laughs> I need to test this room out for Yeah, so I get weird, weird tri-field meeting, uh, meter readings in the other door in there. Okay. But we'll have to come back and check it out. My head's pounding. Your head's pounding now? Yeah, yeah, I even have a headache, so right, right here in the neck, the bulls. Really? Yeah, so it's like, a, it's like my muscles all tightened up. Like a pressure or something? Yeah, yeah, and I, I didn't have a headache before, so. Interesting. I was feeling a little off, and I was wondering if I was dehydrated and just had some water and broke out. No, so I need to test it. Figure out what's up. I know, tons to do, man. Okay, so we're doing a little test experiment where we're trying to do telepathy, like psychic spy stuff here in the saloon to see if the ladies at the end of the bar can send a message to me down here and if I can guess who it is that's sending the message. If you wanna check out this experiment, go over onto the Lado files where he's gonna be uploading it onto his YouTube channel. I'll put the link down in the description below. We have a whole bunch of experiments planned and research stuff. So Chris, you wanna go up to the, the wheels and the cave yeah. and all of that stuff. I say we do that tomorrow because that's like a trek. Okay. When we get up tomorrow, we'll go just straight up to the caves. I say today we do like an orientation where we hike the, a loop around the ranch and up and around. And then tonight we're going to do techno shaman stuff with Brent. Uh, Chris lado has got quantum physics experiments with lasers and fog machines that we're going to do. And we're going to do like a seance and a bunch of stuff with the, with the spirit ladies. Yeah, <laughs> It's going to be awesome. And my wife is pregnant for the first time. And we were kind of scrambling for a good job because I was transferring back to Montana, Montana back to Las Vegas, and I reached out to my friends that out there and got hired to take one first. And then another friend of mine said, "Hey, I got some gay security." Yeah, security. Yeah. And then. Uh, Mother friend was like, hey, I got some, some gig in uh, Utah. Do you have a clearance? I'm like, yeah. So I met with him in private, and he's like, hey, this is a job. He was very vague about it. And then the next day, I had a meeting with him and Colm at a pork house. And then 
you know, they asked me normal security questions, and then it was like, you know, how do you feel about the paranormal? And I'm like, I wasn't too sure to answer because I had a, a few parents in the DOE. And like, All of a sudden, you're a kook. Yeah. And so, but I was like, you know, I'm going to answer honestly. And so I did. I said, yeah, I do believe in it. And uh, that was it. We wrapped up the interview, and I sat down for and like, and the guy, my friend came in, and he's like, you got the job. And then a month later, I'm on Skinwalker Ranch. And that's where, and that's where it all started. And then for eight years, he's a human guinea pig biosensor. Well, six years. Six years, sorry. Yeah, eight years total. Or eight, no, yeah, eight years total. Yeah. But uh, and now here we are at Mount Wilson Ranch, <laughs> and we're going to use him as a human guinea pig biosensor. Right. But, but at least this All time right. you, you know oh, that we're doing right. it. Right. You're, you're aware. And you, you, yeah. Right. You get to choose whether you want to do it or not. Well, I'm game. I'm <laughs> right. game for it. That's the correlation. Everything is Native Americans. The Native Americans are the foundation of almost every single site that reports paranormal and UFOs. It always goes back to those traditional foundations of hey, who's here before us. And then you dive in those cultures and you realize they talk about star people. And that's why the artifacts are important because then we can have physical evidence and link up a timeline. And then that makes all sense. And then some people ignore it, but I embrace it fully. Yeah. It's written in stone. It's in stone. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. It's not up for interpretation. Clear as that. I mean, it's not up for, when you see something in the skies, you don't know what it is. That's up for interpretation. It could be a satellite, it could be a, a, an aircraft. Yeah, I guess it could be a UFO. But when I'm pulling the artifacts up and you can date them and find out who's here, it's factual evidence. There's no debate in it. And now you can correlate, well, maybe that native energy, frequency, vibration is displaced in this environment because that's how everything is, energy, frequency, vibration. So once you turn your mind to that, you see the world in a whole different spectrum. And you've been saying that like like all of the significant experiences that you had at Skinwalker Ranch were always correlated to that Native American presence every, there. Almost right? every single one. And that's when when I flipped my perception that way, it seemed like the ranch opened up on a whole new level. Right. And I was being guided almost to like find the artifacts. Right. Or even protected by something. And I still feel that to this day, which is why I spend time out in these locations to see right. if I can find more of that evidence. It's kind of frustrating when you see it all going off the rails and the research goes on to all these different avenues when really the consistent thing in all these places seems to be like the same formula. Yeah, but everybody's got their own path and they got to learn their own way. And some, I had to do the same thing because for a while I drank the Kool-Aid as well, you know. But then <laughs> yeah. I guess it's like it's in your face so much where you can't ignore it anymore. So... I yeah. drove into it. For real. How it's curved out here. This what? This is a scraping tool. So this isn't a fight. This is actually a tool they use to scrape hides. Right. Get the flesh off of animals. So they make them like this sharp thumb to get in there. I didn't see that one. Yeah. That's actually a scraping tool. The rest of these are flakes. Most of them. Flakes, flakes, flakes. Mm -hmm. no. but that is a scraping tool. This is a piece of pottery, I think. It might be. Yeah. That's like some so, uh, shale stuff. This is. Uh, I pulled uh, all the pottery out of this basket already. I separated it all so it wouldn't get crushed in that. That, that, that could be another skinning tool, possibly. It just depends. Here we are. This is where we're going to be spending the night tonight, fellas, in the bunk houses. Uh, all kinds of weird stuff. So, this is the settler's cabin and the meadows right out in front of us. Yeah, it's amazing here. The, there's no light pollution and. Uh, this is a hot spot for some interesting stuff right here. I mean, uh, some people with embassies in East Germany, when they're getting bombarded with microwave weapons, it protects against Havana syndrome. Yeah. This protects against Havana syndrome? Yes, the, that's the purpose of them originally, yeah. And I just Turn on the blue button? Yeah, so um, if you look in the, in the little guide, oh, sorry, it's, sorry. Got a, it's got a table of the different hertz. One of them, one of them is 7.8 hertz, so if you want to be in the Schumann frequency for meditation, you put it on okay. with these switches. Three is, uh, these first three is 10 hertz. That's just good for just about anything, sleep, uh, just general walking around, being alert. If you want to be, uh, if you want to lift weights or something, be hyped up, you put the last one on, it puts you up to 20 hertz, 25 hertz. But three is just about perfect for uh, sleeping. I, I put it on the bedside table when I sleep, or I wear it around like this if I just need to be focused and not be uh, affected by electromagnetic uh, interference. Three, Computer so monitors, all three that. up? Yeah, so three, uh, if you, you can turn it up for that one. Yeah, you can see there. It's kind of upside down. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, so cool. Turn, yeah, as, and as soon as you turn it on, this is a test button. You push the button down and, and, see, and see what it's pulsing at. 
but so that a, shows you, displays the, I'm trying to film this as if somebody was gonna buy one yeah. and they didn't know anything this about awesome. it off of your yeah. website. You push the button and it'll show you what it's actually turned on to, but it's always turned on. If we test if we test so this right now. So it's going right now. Yeah, if you had a magnetometer, you'd see this going at 10 hertz. Uh, this is great. So if they wanted to turn it on, what would they do? Okay, so this is not on right now. If I want to go to, uh, I think this is six hertz right here. Different programs, right? You can yep. set different programs. Exactly. That changes the frequency. And you see, as soon as I turn on, and this is something that you that you built. Well. You built this. Yeah. Well, I redesigned you, it. You yeah. redesigned it. Yeah, I didn't come I mean, up with I, the original. It's immense, but I do feel something different. I don't know. It's not. It's not I bad. just feel like more. Just chill. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah I feel like. Uh, really? Yeah. I'm not kidding. I, I haven't know. even put mine on yet. Is it just? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, like the placebo, or is yeah, it? Yeah, I feel just uh, like more uh, less uh, vibrationally. It'll get you hyped up. For, I feel like less. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like. That's so cool. I'll put a link down in the description below so you guys can go check it out. Maybe it's just. 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 Maybe you go. You've got to go in a ten hertz right now. If you take the second that's the one, chill one. That's that's I, yeah. That's just normal normal functioning. Because I put it on, and I'm like, whoa! It's already got to feel it. No, I, yeah, I put it on as soon as I rested against my chest. I, it was like, wow! Like it, I felt it. It sinks go. <laughs> Did you feel that? Yeah. Yeah, you feel it. Like it's like a what? You have one too. Now just try putting down the number two switch. To get to 7.8 hertz, that Schumann meditation, and you'll believe more. I see why awesome. why it's like this. So the sticker is upright I for anybody looking at you, yeah, but when you pick it up to change, the numbers are upright for you to adjust the numbers. So it makes sense why the yeah, stickers are not right. So now I put two down and two down Thank and four down. Yeah, cool. so it's, it's so it's just, just yeah. alternating like this. Yeah. Correct. There you go. Okay. So it just resonates. I can't wait to sleep tonight with this on. Give it a shot. See what I will. Yeah, you can feel it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like it goes through your body. Right? Yeah, it's a two foot bubble around you with a magnetic pulse and it just really? attracts you. Yeah. And you can change the battery. It's on a little watch battery. You just it's kind of making me feel weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. Yeah. So, so That's cool. Just walk around and we're not used to feeling normal. We're all hyped up because we're around electronic. I, yeah, I feel like my, my ADHD went. <laughs> yeah. <Whoa. laughs> you really? Is that how you felt too? Yeah, it gave me like a, yes. like grounded me out. Yeah, it does. That's, that's what it, it totally feels like. Yeah. Yeah. Like two days of being at the Dude. I, I can't leave that. That's cool. that. I, can't claim, yes. I can't claim any medical stuff, but that's what it does. I could have used this back Whoa, dude. in 2003. I didn't know either, so yeah. That's yeah, can cool. you imagine if you got to patrol with one of those? It would have felt a little bit better, I might right? have a better experience. Right? Instead of that whole like... nauseous and lethargic. <laughs> right? We're just sitting there at the saloon and... I saw something walk past the door from this side to this side. I saw a figure walk right to left and there is no one up here with us. I saw someone walk past the doorway. Dude, this is the second time this has happened to me. Do you remember last time I was up here when I, I swore that I saw a woman with a white uh, blouse standing at the sink? I do. I thought it was Andrea. And then I came in here and saw that she was actually sitting at the dining room table. And, and then I came back here and there's no one in the kitchen. <sighs> Jeff. This place is weird. Yeah, I, I saw somebody walk past the doorway from the right to the left. Yeah, I saw somebody. <laughs> I was sitting at the end of the saloon down there, and I was just listening to Lado and Bartell talk, and I saw somebody walk past the doorway right here. I didn't want to make a big scene because I thought maybe it actually was somebody that came over here. Right? There's nobody else here. Okay, Good morning, everybody. Brent yeah, right. just is walking around and says, hey, here's these goodie bags. And you got upgrades? <laughs> Dyson and goggles, look at that. That's so awesome. Those are replacement lenses and stuff. So see, these are the Dyson and goggles when you look through them. 
you can see into the astral plane. And so, yeah, Brent's the one that makes them. If you guys are interested in getting some, they're at Brent's website, Museum of Tarot. Oh, so the idea is, you know, like, so you wear those, and when you walk around outside, it forces your eyes and your brain and everything to see in a different uh, spectrum. And people can see cloaked UFOs in the sky. They see shadow figures moving around. They'll see light auras and stuff, balls of light moving around. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool, right? Oh, those are like steampunk style too. Those are rad. It looks super trippy. Yeah, it's like if you go out and look at the clouds, it's crazy. It's like all neon. And I'm laying there, and I'm falling asleep. It's like I wake up at four o'clock in the morning, and I had this vision where I was floating through the universe, and I came in contact with some type of floating entity of different colors, and it showed me these images in my brain, and it said. Uh, well, it said, God, galaxies, other, other, other dimensions. And then it said, your connection to the universe is at, is at your fingertips. And it showed me these images. So I ran down the mason. I made these images. So this is what, I, what it was shown to my head, was our fingerprints and the galaxy swirl. And it said, atomically, we're all connected through our atoms. But we're all unique celestial spirits here for spiritual evolution. And the proof is in our fingerprints. So we all have yeah. different fingerprints. So. That's insane, this, yeah. Yeah, so this is what was shown in my brain. You'll love that, dude. Yeah, you have to see that video I made. Yeah. Because I used that exact same uh, from a certain study. Yeah. Yeah, the so this was in 2011. So I felt like, like Carl said, I felt like I was downloading. And then I went down. I, I you know, I wasn't not a very good writer, but I do graphic design stuff. And this is very crude designs at yeah. the time. But this is also when my vision changed and my graphic design enhanced and my photography enhanced after this, after this event. Right. Great job. Yo, yo. So we got Brent. Also, I got some really harsh lighting going on, but we're going to do the best we can. What do you have here? Okay, I have got an infrasound sensor, uh, a seismic sensor as well. And I'm just testing out the infrasound in the room. Now, infrasound is sound you can't hear, you feel with your body. It's below, it's subaural, below 20 hertz that you feel in your body, and it's psychoactive because it coordinates with your brain waves. So your brain waves are within that same range. So if there's infrasound in a room, it could put you into an altered state of consciousness, it could affect your health, it could all kinds of positive and negative effects that could happen in an infrasound. Uh, like paranormal world. things. Very much like, so. yeah. Infrasound can, uh, it can give you a fear reaction. It can alter, uh, it can alter your eyes basically. So you see things out in your periphery. Make like, you feel like something's exactly. walking up behind you. All exactly. the things that we experience. But, <laughs> yeah. it, but it can also, radically shift your consciousness into a, a more perceptive state there's also dude awesome you got to come and look at what he's figuring out he's got an infrasound thing testing the the room so we need to like be quiet and get a baseline or so, something yeah. and do some studies here i'll need to come in here a few times when it's silent at, during, at different times of the day and night and uh, take it to take a, a test here but what you can see is uh, this is the range and if i expand it you can see a lot of activity in a very specific range and that range is Infrasonic. Let's see. Oh, cool. Let's take a look. Yeah, so you can see where most of the activity is. You can see the frequency one to ten hertz. Most of the activity is here within the infrasonic range up to twenty-four hertz, which is prime area. This this area here would be uh, altered state into theta, and this would be alpha right here. The same thing that we try to do with like. So just walking around here, there's something naturally putting people in a hypnagogic state? It could, yes. Really? Yes, and it's very strong. You can actually see how much of it is oh. between 14 and 24 hertz right here, and that will that will entrain your brain. Uh, so there, and at Stanford, they were literally trying to put people in that exact state artificially right. yeah. in order to do astral projection, remote viewing, out-of-body yeah. experiences, and even contact uh, other dimensions Correct. and extraterrestrials yeah. and everything. Wow. The, the so there's something naturally here that just sitting here, whether you're trying or not, can maybe induce that. In fact, let me show you right here. You got this big peak, that's big. Peak spike right here. That's, this, that's a this, big finding. This is one of yeah. the main areas right here. So you can see it's kind of the band is small, but the, the band is larger right here. There's a lot of activity in that seven Sorry. point seven point whatever range, which is the Schumann frequency. Seven point three. It's right here up to seven point eight, which is exactly in Schumann. So between seven and eight hertz is the prime spot for remote viewing, altered, the right. positive altered states of consciousness, clairvoyance, clairaudience, you name it, and out-of-body experiences, you, you name it. So maybe this baseline frequency or whatever's occurring here 
is naturally putting people in an altered state of consciousness and opening people up for supernatural paranormal type experiences, whether real or hallucinatory or whatever. But from our experience, these things are potentially more real than people want to think, right? Yeah, yeah they're, 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 they are more real. They're the physiological basis of your own consciousness. And they are the most real thing you can perceive. Wow. The question is, is it just local to the, the saloon here? or readings throughout the ranch up in the caves and says or out in front of the settlers cabin where we see exactly. the nids team exactly. and all the photographs and everything is there is that at a peak or is there a certain time or place mm -hmm. where this suddenly goes off the charts and then everybody is like having out of body exactly. experiences and seeing orbs and all kinds of stuff now the, one of the ladies actually told me um, that she sees a difference in the wi-fi signal during the day and night which could also be a fluctuation in the energy levels of the ranch itself uh, from a multitude of things, solar activity, etc. Being, you know, um, so I don't know what is affecting what right now, but there's definitely a, a strange field effect here, and we're seeing the infrasound here that proves it. So. That but to test it throughout amazing. the whole ranch is going to be the. So we're going to have to, yeah, test it, move it around, and we'll keep you guys posted of all of the findings and make all of this available. There you go. Okay, so we're piecing this all together now. This is why Hal put off and those guys were so interested in coming up here because in all of Ingo Swan's book, he is a professional remote viewer for the government, they were trying to go around the country and find spots that were naturally amplified in the first electromagnetic field so that these remote viewers could do psychic remote viewing to spy on Russia and do all kinds of stuff. From but a naturally could, occurring. Yeah, because they were trying to build Faraday cages and put helmets on people and, and amplify like telepathic abilities and stuff with their remote viewing team. But what they found is they could come to certain places that geologically were way more powerful than anything they could do in a lab. And what Brett just found on his uh, infrasonic testing device is that something in, the, in this place, in the geology, is like right now in the saloon, has a baseline that automatically puts you in a hypnagogic state that opens That explains it. It literally, naturally, what they were trying to do in those uh, psychic spy labs to enhance consciousness, this place naturally does to people. Creates out-of-body out travel experience, astral projection, remote viewing, you're gonna see ghosts, orbs, UFOs, the whole spectrum. It's like there's some sort of a distortion in reality that, that opens this up here. And he just found it with the sensor. So we just gotta now zero in on where the signal is the strongest. And technically that would be the portal, right? <laughs> yeah. If in that cave or some area that's got just 7.8, very strong, you're, 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 you can't, you couldn't do anything to keep yourself in, in your body in the normal state. You're going to go to sleep and have visions and you're going to see shadow figures and all kinds of stuff. Like not, even when you're not trying. So imagine when we put the, these guys to protect us from this so we can test it objectively. Yeah. yeah so then we can put your mind to minds on and like actually find the hot spot and then really crank it up and see what happens. Woo. <laughs> right? Welcome to yeah. The adventure. Here we go. Yeah, baby. Here's what this means, Jeff. I'm going to try to let this all settle in and, and tie it up really quick for you guys because you guys literally live here. So what it means is that the NIDS team and what Bigelow, Jacques Vallée, Andre Puharic, um, John Keel, all those guys, what they were really doing up here when they talk about looking for the portal was they knew that this place had a natural resonant frequency, a Schumann frequency that puts your consciousness in a theta state that's primed for what they called a hypnagogic mindset, an altered state of consciousness where they could do remote viewing, where they could find Russia's nuclear submarines, they could find kidnapped um, ambassadors that had been taken from um, you know, their homes and kidnapped and held hostage. And so they were trying to find places where they could take these remote viewers and do psychic spying and like basically win the Cold War. But that means that while you're living here with his infrasound device, he proved that there's a natural frequency, electromagnetic field, a resonance harmony that puts you constantly swimming in that theta state of brainwave state. So now what we need to do is walk around the property and use his infrasound device and locate where that frequency is, is exactly the ideal state where you could sit and meditate or maybe even put one of his headsets on 
and amplify the effect or even put, you know, focused, targeted lasers and sound frequencies in that spot and actually prime it for the whole host of the paranormal. You want to talk about C CE5 and making Focus. contact or opening a portal. This is exactly what they were doing. This is exactly why that they were here. It makes all the sense in the world. Yeah, so when they would cut the funding from one government program, like, like, oh, you're not going to do the psychic spying, then they switch the story over and say, no, we're looking for UFOs. Oh, no, we're looking for the afterlife. And they have to keep changing, like jumping from one lily pad to the next or whatever. But really what they were looking for were these hot spots where the geology would focus them like a laser beam. Uh, with now, are we sure remote, it's a mean, geological anomaly? Is it a land-based anomaly? Is it something? Is it a, some ancient thing relic? That's, is it an ancient relic thing? device or like a UFO buried underground or something like yeah, that? Yeah, that's yeah, causing exactly. it. That's the big question. So first, we got to use this infrasound device and go find where it's peaked and where we find it, or if it's pulsing or like an artificial signal, and then the fun begins. Then we dig. Yeah, Did then we dig. So the plan today is we have like kind of a whole spread. We've got an awesome crew with Chris Lado, Brent Stone from Museum of Tarot, uh, Chris Bartel with his photography. We all have kind of a different curiosity. So we're gonna basically do a tour of the whole ranch and the property, walk from up here at the saloon where the shaman appears up there. And we're gonna go through the whole thing so we get a lay of the land all the way up to the, uh, the ponds through the flake zone, all of that stuff until we wind up here. And then we're gonna to try to find the portal with the infrasound device and a whole bunch of cool experiments. Okay, you're talking about John D. Edward oh. Kelly, remote viewers. So yep. we're just gonna try and find the portal by walking around and looking for the infrasound ideal state where they would have been trying to do remote viewing and all of that stuff. But it could go clear back into the indigenous stuff. So yeah, and to tie it up with uh, ritual work, John D. and old uh, occultism. When you're doing occult rituals, you're doing things in a very ritualized manner, walking around, traversing, saying things, phrases. In are... conjunction with astronomy and everything. Yep, and, and all you're trying to do is change your consciousness by entraining yourself. All the mantras, all of these things that are being done in the OTO and Freemasonry and all these different ritual organizations, their intent is to alter your consciousness enough to connect up with these things. It's like retuning your antenna to try and pick up other signals from beyond. Like we were talking about, like if we're existing in a certain flat plane, like flatland, if you go to these places that are distorted or something like that, or enhanced suddenly like an amplifier, you see into these other dimensions. Like why you have all these uh, shamanistic encounters with other entities or downloads of information and all of it. So well, the pyramids, right? We talked about that. Could it be some sort of resonant structure built into a mountain? Right. You know, if it have it, could that resonate through? And, and could it affect? explain why an indigenous person or culture that seems totally disconnected and separate has the same kinds of carvings of deities and star people and symbology in their petroglyphs and oral traditions and all of that across the globe but maybe they were even in contact with each other when they were sitting in these places and connecting up and all about almost like a primitive wi-fi you know what i mean yeah like a global network yeah which yeah. honestly what chaco canyon almost seems like it was totally designed to do and everything like to hook up over these vast uh geological distances and stuff you know we were talking last night you and i both noticed that uh, if you look at the pyramids from overhead that it looks like a circuit board big circuit you know, board it looks yeah exactly like a circuit board could yeah. that be with needles and spires and all that stuff and pyramids yeah. like sticking exactly. up with some... with different tops and everything like they're trying to literally tap into that field these, these have been tested um, acoustic te acoustic and infrasound tests have been done in pyramids and in uh, burial chambers all over europe all over the old world um, Napoleon spent a night in the Great Pyramid, had an experience that shifted his consciousness, and he supposedly talked to something that gave him information to go off and win his wars, and he never really spoke about it. He always shied away from it. So people have been doing this for a very long time. And it makes so, sense why, like, Andrei Puharic and Hal Putoff and uh, Jacques Vallée, John Keel, and all of those guys were sitting right here in the saloon, walking around, uh, trying to find those sweet spots. Exactly. So if this is an outcropping of this area, that this whole area could be active. So right up over the hill on the other side of the meadow, there's like test mines and stuff that go, that are just like solid quartz and agate chunks and down into lava tubes and everything. So yeah, it's this combination of the geology being high with 
this crystalline structure like quartz. And then you have the runoff literally from that wedge of the mountain up there, that big V coming down Craw Creek that ends in the meadow that could act like a geomagnetic battery. Top of the battery there, bottom of the battery, literally right here in the meadow in front of the settler's cabin. And it could be the water flowing through there underground through this crystalline geology creates a resonant theta wave frequency that's like a natural beacon. Or even compression. There's a piezoelectricity and piezomagnetism and they're both, so they could both be psychoactive if they're the correct correct uh, frequency. Yeah, and you compress can... a crystal and it mm -hmm. gives off ele electricity and amplification. Yeah. And they yeah. can all be activated by flowing water by, uh, or, or fault lines. So what if we sit in one of these spots and then put one of your headsets on, your god helmets? You're going to go, you're going to see God. <laughs> you're going to have a good time. Man, right? That. Buckle up. There you go. No, it could be, it could be a very interesting tap point. I wonder what out of body experience you'd have because you will probably go off and see something that isn't here. I say we try. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. We are here in the settler's cabin down in the meadow and Brent is getting ready to set up his infrasound device. We're going to test to see if the Schumann residence is ideal or peaked for psychic and paranormal experiences and encounters. I'll tell you this, um, when I was here last time, I brought my radiation sensor, my EMF detector and all that, and literally right where Adam is standing, I was getting a radiation signal that was going up to 59 right here, like almost there's something underground or, I don't know. Definitely a, a lot higher than it should be, so yeah. So we're gonna go from spot to spot today, taking the infrasound device here and seeing if we can find exactly where the NIDS team was looking for this hot spot where you could sit and try to make contact through telepathy, remote viewing, uh, probably the gateway experience is what they were doing, different versions of that with all of those guys. So I don't know if that's what they were doing, but they were definitely looking for a spot and maybe uh, we're gonna find it. Using so here's the big announcement that we're going to make. There you go. We're going to use Terrascapes, there not Gateway. So we don't trust that system anymore. We don't mm -hmm. use it. Good for them. They uh, pioneered the process, but we're going to take it to a whole new level. Brent has developed this whole system where if you think like anything is cool about CE5, you think anything is cool about the Monroe Institute and the Gateway experience, uh, Terrascapes is actually the real process and we're going to do it in the real place and we're going to find exactly the right spot. So if you want to learn more, check the links yeah. down in the description. Man. You don't want met people messing with your brain yeah. unless they're us. So don't, there you go. Yeah, okay. don't tune in to the wrong people. We're going to do this no, no. all open source. You can go look at all of it yourself and it's all clean and good. We're going to use it all ourselves. It's all safe. Here we go. We're using the infrasound device right now. So can you, are you screen capturing this so this, I could overlay this data? This is interesting. Is it, are you saving this data? Yeah, uh, let me try. I'll, I'll start doing a recording. I would love to be able to. Let me just do it from, from scratch here. Let me just erase. For this stuff, to, they hunted for areas like this to look for and we're lucky enough somehow to live here. Or yeah, were so we, were we drawn here somehow, maybe? Well, think now back to the, like the Halloween party. We've got like the head of the area chamber of commerce's dad and all the locals that live here and, and everybody up here talking about how they have these dreams and out of body travel experiences and they've had contact with extraterrestrials and how they basically have like visionary experiences like making contact, other all that stuff. And so now it's starting to add up and make sense. That's what they were looking for. Okay, guys, I need complete silence and no walking around or talking for right now. We can overlay with the, you know, record over. Okay, we're going to go totally silent. Here we yeah. go. This is significant. Okay. Okay, I 
I keep screwing it up by trying to vlog it all. <laughs> the sensor just died. It what? The sensor just died. For no reason? That's why I'm just, yeah, just told. Yeah. Imagine that. No, you can capture this, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, so that's a common thing here too. It's just More suddenly failures. like this trickster phenomenon. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Will you run that like cell? Promise. You should run the selfie stick up here and see what's in the attic. Okay. I haven't uh, done that during the daytime yet. So if you want to see that footage, go check out the Lato files. He's going to film it. You're going to see what's in the attic up there. Okay, so we've got this. <laughs> what happened, Brent? All right. Oh, so, the suspense. Okay. The suspense. <laughs> so it restarted a few times. The sensor I saw the working. sensor failed a yeah. few times. And then it's, it skipped to the wrong time, wrong, wrong timestamp, which it's not supposed to be doing that because it's going off the system timestamp. In any case, there's a tremendous amount of activity that's infrasonic right now. You can see the how, how, how active it is, and we haven't been moving around. There's nothing that should be creating that. This is all in 10 to... What do you mean by uh, active? So, uh, in, in just intensity, decibels. So it's, it's it's screaming at us right now, but we can't hear it uh, because we are we, can, we can't hear that frequency. We can't hear anything 20 and below unless you're special or something. What's it centered around? What's the high point? Uh, it looks like it's about 20 to 25. Area. Everything from seven to twenty-five is strong. It's, so, it's, screaming. it's like being in a concert. Like so, would that be conducive to what they would be looking for? Is this way higher than up in the saloon? It is. Yeah, the saloon. Uh, you see the traces right here that are kind of they're, they're not they're not super faint, but you know there's there's activity. These and then it gets extremely dense over here that's just showing you the, uh, the intensity of what's actually going on here we're not making any noise that's just the environment of this something about it is screaming at us yeah. it could be that geology we were just talking about who knows yeah, or there's, whatever. there's no HVAC um, they mm -hmm. have identified infrasound as an environmental hazard back in I believe it was Russia Vladimir Gavro was a scientist that found out some office buildings there were making people sick because the HVAC system was giving off infrasound putting off a vibration exactly 
and then they it started to become a, a thing that you could monitor and you know you don't want to get sick in your workplace but this this is this is going to affect the amount in this in this uh, intensity and, and range definitely. in what ways would you say it would affect the human body or the human uh, mind it would keep you in a state of uh, this range specifically is a state of anxiety and fear this state will keep your uh it'll heighten your biological processes and keep your body in basically a stress state like fighter of oh, uh fight yeah. or flight state like you're being chased or something's creeping up on you or like yeah. you're nervous or huh. I think it can in, in, impact a lot of different things it can impact your uh, your your vital processes but also your eyes so like i said you can see shadow things out the side of your eyes because it's affecting the liquid inside your eyes um, there's a lot of different things that this does to you and uh, it's at this intensity it absolutely would if you were here at night and you were easily spooked. You would you would see things around. You would feel. Things you would around. interface with that energy with your consciousness Very and start much. to experience like paranormal things. Yeah, yeah, would, yeah. Especially with with how strong it is in theta, it would you definitely slip into a different uh, brainwave state. Most people are uh, up here above twenty hertz generally in the normal operating. And if it entrains you lower, you're going to be off. You're going to feel like something's off. Fascinating. You, you might get it in the pit of your stomach because you have a lot of the... this uneasy, like I'm being watched yes, or hunted exactly. feeling or something. Yeah. Well, I was thinking you mentioned the HVAC systems. Yep. Right, and that, uh, and we have been talking with Carl basically about the air conditioning. Yes. Right. We were talking about HVAC well, systems. Well, think about how it's a problem with negative things on your. In, I live in Europe, and like Europe, people think uh, air conditioning is for your health actually the whole yeah. beginning and the origins it is. It really, it, no it absolutely is uh, there is a lot of research done by dr robert o becker on body electric and the cro and cross currents there's two books and he identified a host of health issues that have been covered up because it would it would up in the whole industry what are you going to tell people you can't live in your house you can't live in this real estate that's you know multi-million dollar places that are turned together you know right uh, because now your real estate's worthless because it's going to give you you know because there's a baseline frequency that makes everybody feel like they're being attacked or a constantly state of anxiety that has a host of side effects to it when you live in that constant environment people get to the point where they descend their houses are haunted or and it could even be edging onto some reality that we're other dimensional reality that could be very valid that we need to explore but we have to figure out all those side effects that this kind of stuff creates even yeah. in, a, in, a, in a pragmatic medical sense it will trigger disease that's been found for 30 years. Isn't it the same like at the origins of the gateway experience with Robert Monroe started because he realized that pilots, like the rotors of propellers and stuff, mm -hmm. were inducing people into hypnagogic states mm -hmm. and they were having out-of-body experiences and crashing yeah. airplanes and stuff. So they had to figure out the timing of the propellers to not do the same thing. But you're saying that the earth here in the settler's cabin, naturally there's some resonant harmony that is the same problem or that has yeah. the same and, issue going this on this happens in certain areas that have specific geology specific seismic activities the fault lines things like that and this uh yeah it's it's strong here so now you got to find where that is peaked or has certain qualities to it uh that yeah. might be significant and yeah. we're right we're right on the so yeah so going yeah, we're, we're right here on the edge of the meadow I'm not sure if it's between because we came down close to the meadow or if it's because of this structure if it's the same readings in the meadow then it's the meadow yeah, so I wonder why the NIDS team had a bulldozer stuck right out there in the mud and why there's photos of photographic evidence of them standing all out here in the meadow and why they were looking for a portal or something buried underground. It also points to some of the uh, mistakes that could have been made by a bulldozer driver that's in an altered state of you know, right, not yeah. acting rationally and getting it stuck or you know, breaking a tread or something. And why there's medicine, ancient indigenous medicine wheels up the hill that could be all tied into yeah. all of it. Oh, yeah. It's starting to make sense. Now we are searching through the meadow at the base of Mount Wilson to try and find the peak signal, the best hot spot, and what they were looking for. Now what we are officially looking for, for our own research. So Dewana is like an empath and she's a psychic and does um, seances and remote viewing and things. And so you felt it right here? Yeah. yeah. Huge vortex. A right vortex right here. Yeah, this is right where we're going to set up the uh, it feels, test. I mean, it's not like right here. It's like all around. So, Duana, this is where the NIDS team, where Bob Bigelow and those guys really? had a, they had a bulldozer stuck right where Odie's standing. Yep. 
And this is where they were bringing the psychic spies from Stanford Research Institute to try and find natural places on Earth where they could sit and focus their remote viewing and psychic abilities like a laser beam to spy on the Russians. <laughs> and now you're standing. It's not just ground. It's it's coming. It's a, like a whole, whole area field. Yeah, yeah it's actually field. the entire mountain. I think, Duana. I think it honestly it goes down, all the way up the from way. to the V. Yeah. Is like the top of the battery is the peak of the mountain. Yeah. And we're standing down at the negative pole, negative yeah. end of the battery. We want to go up to where we found that. And guess. Gate and guess what? If you walk straight where you're pointing your hand, naturally, guess where the medicine wheels are. Guess where the shaman cave is. Really? Guess where all the indigenous artifacts are. Something's going on here. You can feel it. It's, it's coming from the sky, from the atmosphere. Yeah, it's a dimensional yeah. vortex. It's like a yeah. amplified theta wave state. Well, to show you everything stays, you know, in the field, I picked up Rose or Rosie over here, and he said that used to be the names yep. of the place. I didn't know. When I was here for the Halloween party on our spirit box, we got... Jeff's dad's name came through the spirit's box. Uh -huh. Jeff's name was said, Jordan's name was said, and my name was all said, all oh through the God. spirit, right here, standing in front of the bunkhouse. Yeah, yeah it's fascinating. <sighs> Odie, what is it? Did you find a buried UFO? Is it the portal? What is it? What you got there? <laughs> no, you can't steal my micro mop sneaker. <laughs> I have a windsock and she keeps trying to steal it off my phone. Has you got it fired up now? Okay, I'm going to hold really still. Okay, so what we're seeing... Yeah, I'm going. Okay. So what you're seeing is a really strong signal. Once we took care of the, the wind the, the wind interference. Let's put a glove over the needle. Doing the infrasound readings right now. We just took care of the uh, wind interference. We're getting some very strong signals. You can see how strong how defined these are it's is this similar to inside the cabin what we were getting earlier? much stronger stronger yeah i mean look at that whoa in the whole infrasonic range starting at about you know, four hertz but particularly here in the seven seven point one two seven point two range all the way down through another big spike at 20. um another big spike at 12. Okay, so you have uh, basically the 7.8 hertz multiplies into 14, multiplies into 21, roughly. Those are octaves of the Schumann frequency. And there are massive spikes here and density in those spikes. Massive Schumann resonance frequency spikes? Yeah, is it a pattern, like a pulse? It is in all three. Wait, what? Say so that again. Let's take a look. So it's you, a pattern? If you take a look here, you've got a big, see the, the spikes come down, you know, you got them about this big. This is the big outlier. This spike right here, this spike right here, Dropping and down. this spike right here are all twice the size, twice the intensity of the rest of it. 7, 14, 21. So you've got massive Schumann frequency resonance right here on this spot. Um, would that Does that look like a natural resonance or does it look like an artificial pulsing resonance? No, if I went over there uh, off the ranch or up the road, it wouldn't look like this at all. It would look more like this side of the chart. So this side of the chart is, uh, you know, kind of normal, distinct. You, you got some frequency there, but it, it's not nearly as dense and it's not nearly as pronounced in the, the intensity. So we might be sitting with your device right now on top of something that's transmitting a signal? Possibly. Possibly. Really? It's, it's, as, uh, it's as loud in infrasound as if we were sitting at a concert right now. If we we're sitting at a, a Metallica concert, this is, this is what it sounds like right here. Really, like a dog whistle in this unseen spectrum. Correct. We've got a pulsing signal at what range? Uh, seven, four, uh, 7, 14, and 21, and close by. So, wow. Okay. So that right, is significant. So dude. right in those, right in the, the, the uh, right in the uh, psychoactive ranges that would be necessary for altered states of consciousness and tap, tapping into consciousness, remote viewing, etc. There it is. There it is. There it is. Let's go test so we're just going to keep moving around like we're probing the meadow trying to find where this signal is strongest and clearest and most defined and then we try to discover what it is that's actually causing it and transmitting it if right here right right here yeah yeah so let's take a look at 
glare out. Here we go. So we moved right here at this point where it's a little, a little fainter is where we moved the chair over to the other side, the other, other spot on this field. So let's take a look at the most recent readings that look just as strong, even stronger even. We've got, oh yeah. Holy shit, dude. Yep. So look at that drop. You see the, these, these are the strongest areas right here. So boom, boom, boom. And here is, this one's even more um, pinpointed, 7.4 hertz, 7.49. It's just like a, mm -hmm. a drop line, thick line going down mm -hmm. off of the, the regular baseline yeah. band. Yep, yeah, this right here, and you got another with 14. And then another here that even goes off the charts at 21. This is same numbers. Boom, boom, boom. Same numbers, but stronger actually here. So if um, not not stronger, but more pinpointed, closer. That was 7.1, 7.2. Yeah. This is 7.45, 7.6. exactly overhead of whatever is transmitting the signal so then here's a question to follow up with that what do we do then how do we do we set up speakers is it lasers is that's, it in for in, in for, we start using consciousness and meditation how do we actually tap in to see what this all means or what's on the other side you know that's our that's our access point that's our tap point into the the internet of the mind Right, so then that's why they nickname it just the uh, jargon, they just call it the portal, right? Yeah, whatever this is, but we're getting a repeating signal of the same numbers and the same frequency. Uh, that's uh, three digits that's repeating, that's like indicative of an artificial beacon or something or area, signal. An area that's really tapped into the Schumann frequency itself with like a perfect resonant cavity that is making the music sound. And it's, and it's, we're getting closer to it more around here, around here. Do we just keep breaking into these epic conversations about the theory and how it all fits together? It's so amazing. <laughs> but okay, we're getting data, so active, active data. I moved the chair again, moved the sensor over again to an area that Chris actually doused down. Yeah, so you used the dowsing rods and found this spot. Okay. It was crazy though, because whenever I walked right past this spot, I mean, you're there even, even with the wind, they would turn the same direction uh, this way, and then when I passed it, they would go back. I so, filmed the whole thing on your camera. Yeah, so I mean, it was really uh, impressive, and then I moved it right to the spot. So, okay, we're over here, we start taking some more measurements. If we take a look, right here, you see the large peak. Seven point seven hertz. It's it goes same, all the way. It goes all the way to the bottom. Notice it's the same no, number. Oh, okay. Right seven point seven hertz. That's as damn as close as you're going to get to the Schumann frequency. Uh, and then another peak at fifteen point one, which again is a, the double. And right then there, fifteen point three. And then twenty one. Uh, then twenty one that goes off the chart. So you've got a very strong Schumann. It's the same three numbers. Boom, boom, boom. Yep. Like an artificial signal. Yep. It's, it's, just, it's the Schumann resonance. The octaves of the Schumann resonance. And this is a very strong Part of, uh, a big reason why we're actually standing here in the meadow is because of the photographic evidence that the NITS team were looking for something artificial buried underground here that was transmitting signals when the, what is it, the constellation? The Buotes, Buotes constellation is overhead. That signal is supposed to go off the charts and that's when you make contact. So we can uh, look at the time now and then uh, establish what's overhead. Because we can't see, yeah, obviously I've, see anything I've now. I've got it on my phone right now. We can look at Stellarium and see exactly. And I'll come out with boots up at four in the morning and we'll take a look. I think it's in June. Is it in June? Yeah. I'll see, come we also need to take. June. We need to take this device up to the the medicine wheels and the cave and see if we can validate that indigenous people naturally were tapping into this with their stone medicine wheels. This is Octaves too and sound is uh, just learned recently is the, the frequency doubles and that's when you go up in an octave. So you go, you know, what was it, 7.7 .7 you said? So and then up to 15.3 and then there's shift 20. We can even look at 30.6. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this taps at about 25, but my, my inclination is that this, because it's as strong as it is here, 
we're probably going to get up to those caves and that medicine bell and that peak is going to be much longer. Oh, you go up inside inside the, the, the resonant yeah. bell or something. Yeah, we'll, we'll see this peak probably, you know, go down. Well, but Jeff and I, when we hiked up there and we went inside the cave and sat there, it sounded like a drumming or like an engine within the earth, like underneath the cave is hollow and it was going whoa. And we felt it, and Jeff was like, I'm out of here, and he ran out of the cave. And I didn't have any of my equipment on me, but we definitely need to go up there and uh, test the cave and see. Brent, you've got, what app is this again? Okay, so let's take a look. This is called Stellarium. It's, a, it's an astronomy app. It just shows you what's in the sky above you at any time. So if we take a look over here, go over there. Right, so we can see where Orion is and all that, even when it's in the daylight. And so the, high, the whole idea is that whatever beacon or whatever signal is transmitting from the ranch, from the meadow here, and what we just detected with the uh, infrasound uh, equipment, we're, it was supposed to activate, based on the leaked information that we have, that the constellation Buotes, uh, when it's overhead, it's active. And guess where Buotes is right so now? Directly over here to the west. So if we look up, there, there he is. There's our guy. So directly in front of where the camera is. So uh, that's right up here. So and maybe what time of day would you say would be directly over the ranch? Let's take a look. Can you can actually right scan it back and then we can stand out there and test it to see if we get a clear beacon signal. That would be super weird to have a, a Schumann residence alternating in a triple digit pattern that we can capture and repeat. And it's if that matches up or amplifies when the constellation's overhead, then that would match the leaked information of what we're looking for. We're looking at about 11 a.m. Uh, tomorrow. Can you check it out? 11 in the morning? 11 a.m. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, cool. Yeah, and that would be as close to overhead as it's going to get, which is about off, off a little bit. Okay. All right, let's do it. And it could mean a lot of things uh, getting that get, uh, get alignment. So uh, it could be going down on the horizon, coming up on the horizon, there could be directly overhead. It could be, you know, there's some asterism that... Wonder, and when when it's straight overhead, mm -hmm. when we get up there with the medicine wheels, with the uh, yeah. primitive culture stuff, maybe that's really active up there. Just like at Skinwalker Ranch, when they did the, the, uh, the rabbi experiment yeah. where they made the stone circles, you know, and then all of a sudden they had the portal opening up. That's why I wish homestead. you'd do a drop circle in certain, certain locations, mm -hmm. like a legit... Authentic drum yeah. circle. So how do we, how I do we... I took African drum class last week. There you go. Oh, See, yeah. there's a serendipity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's the question is how do we knock back? How do we answer the call? That's the big question, right? So what we're going to do now... We had a powwow when you were like 2012. Sure. And I almost had him convinced to come out and do one. And he said To no. do a drum circle yeah. around the... To do an actual powwow drum circle in the Eastern Valley, which I believe is the most significant. But location. they're all spooked about the skinwalker. They're, that, and they, they, yeah. said, they said, no, no way. They don't even want to own no the way. land if it was given back to them. That's no the way. thing. If Brandon Fugel tried to give them the land back, they're like, we don't even want it. Don't want it. Don't want it. Don't want it. Because <laughs> right? they know the history. And it's not, it's not just because of the what's on the property. It's because the Black Hawk War, some of that went through that valley and that bloodshed is on that property. Yep. The whole basin's got the bloodshed. So right. a lot of negative energy. So if you have that Schumann residence or something like that, that's just like recording or transmitting, like how does that impact that over time and all that? So we're actually gonna walk down and kind of hike up from the bottom of the meadow, go up Craw Creek to where there's a natural spring and other stuff and a few little dams and uh, lava vent tubes and a few things nearby and do a loop through the flake zone and back around down to the saloon. I just step out of the bedroom here and Chris is just like, there, see there's rocks piled up. Jeff walks around here and finds old pioneer things and artifacts and stuff and just collects them and picks them up and you pick this up and yeah, this look is, at this stone. This is a beautiful piece of like Nevada agate, but it's also got a mixture of some volcanic in it too, but it's been worked. It, this whole stone's been worked, white. So it was probably used as a tool, it was a thumb place right here where it was probably used to break off and to make bigger tools for the natives that were out here. Yeah. This is super cool to find this because this whole place has got so much natural resources that the indigenous people would use. And this is a beautiful piece. I mean, this is gorgeous. Look at the color. I know. Wait till it's I show you man. where I think Jeff probably found that. Oh, God, that's amazing. There's, there's um, 
works tunnels, lava tube systems yeah. up here above where we're going to hike that right now. That makes sense because it's definitely volcanic. It's yep. beautiful. It's so cool. So this stuff, imagine this, oh. that the geology of the Dang. earth. Yeah, imagine yeah. that the, geo that? the geology it's underground, imagine if under the meadow is made of all of this. Yeah. And this then you've is, got the aquifer running through and the constellation like a, overhead. A giant battery. The whole thing is acts like a resonant Dang. harmonizer. Like just like in an ultrasound machine, it's literally a crystal inside Did vibrating. Grab it here? Right here and they would use it to pop, pop, pop. Just oh, like that. Job. So you found this just now? Or right here. Well, Jeff has Jeff found it and oh, had it just laying there like, like a decoration. This is like a oh, huge cool. thing to find. So it was a tool. Beautiful. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a tool for Dude, sure. Dude, there's tons of this. I'm so yeah, excited to hike you so up here, cool. man. There's tons of it. Man, I can't wait to see what else. I, I hold no responsibility for people tripping over shit. <laughs> so we're going to be walking yes, yeah. up the meadow. Lado's got uh, the Dysinon goggles on. I got my hiking. Dude, these are from Alaska, man. My hu hunting boots. So. so I know Not we just went over all this on Lado's channel, but basically... Uh, Brent at Museum of Tarot has sourced out the original way to recreate and rebuild these Dyson and goggles. The original purpose was the doctor invented them to be able to see into the human aura field to find and diagnose cancer and different things. And then they uh, started seeing shadow figures and human auras, all kinds of interesting stuff. And so, like, uh, I don't know you can describe it for yourself. Yeah, no, the, uh, that's exactly the story. A hundred years ago, Dr. Walter Kilner started using these for medical diagnosis. They gained some notoriety in the medical community. And then the, the occultists and the metaphysical community seized on it and realized you could see human auras with it. And it took off from there. And uh, for about you know, 30, 40 years, they were popular to train people in clairvoyance and how to see the auras. And then they just kind of got covered up and destroyed. The last person, the last authentic place that was making them in the United States was uh, <laughs> the guy that ran it was Naval Intelligence. And it, it's... So then how did you get the uh, information on how to recreate these? Uh, a lot of research. I had to go and uh, get some of the original chemical, rebuild the, uh, you know, replicate the original chemical, test it out, and then try to figure out a way to stabilize it so that it didn't degrade over time and I could actually have a usable, sellable product that people could have and would last. The old aura goggles used to degrade within a month and you can't see through the lenses, they're all cloudy. So this is a stabilized version of it in lens form. Right, so now, yeah, they used to degrade so they'd get all cloudy and foggy and you wouldn't be able to see through, but now you've solved that problem and even improved on the original design. Exactly. And now we're going to walk through this yeah. interesting theta zone uh, where all these paranormal events happen and UFO sightings occur. And we're going to walk up to where the NIDS team took a bunch of photos and see if we see anything. And here's a question for you. Why did an intelligence agency set up a cutout in Washington, D.C. called Mankind Resor uh, Research Unlimited? That held all the patent, have, have held all the information for Dyson and our, our goggles, for radionics, for uh, curly and photography, and then they covered it all up and took it all off the market. Why did that happen? Why? why? Probably because they worked. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Carl Schleicher, everybody. Look up Carl Schleicher. Carl Schleicher. Okay. Schleicher. We'll get the information. I'll put links okay. down in the description below so okay. you can find out for yourself. Very cool. Okay, off we go. All right, guys, I'm going in. By the way, there's snow on the ground and the wind is blowing. I've got a wind sock on my phone doing the best i can but okay going into the dicyanin zone brent i wanted to mention again yeah. what is the name of where we're going to be putting all the our version of ce5 that actually works those are the, the tarotscape project tarotscape released the free first version of tarotscape on my uh, youtube i've got a 1.5 hour and a 10 hour version for sleeping and we're getting fantastic results from people that are giving us the reports of how much is uh, awakening their consciousness they're sleeping great they're having lucid dreams and uh having remote viewing yeah and so we're going to continue to expand on that collaboratively and come up with an actual working version uh protocol for making contact uh working clean safe version yep. of uh, like the gateway experience and a whole plethora for like sleeping sound reharmonizing yep overcoming depression losing weight all of it so stay tuned yeah, completely unadulterated no intelligence agency nonsense we're not going to let anything contaminate it. we're going to keep it all open source that's the plan well, that's the thing right it's i mean the idea is uh, it, we can investigate how we want um, yeah we can walk around with goggles on get as weird as we want or as <laughs> yeah. scientific as we want like, 
<laughs> yeah, nobody can say anything. Well, what we're saying is we're going to set up 30 spots, man, and 30 get spots. multi-spectrum uh, analysis. Yes. You get uh, EMF readings, you get IR, you put on crazy-looking goggles. I think the more fun it is, the better. <clears throat> yeah, we test for radiation. We test our own intuition. We even use different meditation modalities. We're open-minded to the whole spectrum. Even inviting other people here to see what they find, like the ladies that do the seances, all of that we do open source on the table, without prejudice. Yeah, without prejudice. Yeah, yeah, she has a seance. <clears throat> here is the pond up here that was featured in National Geographic or whatever as being a unique feature, one of like only a few spots in the world that had a weird spring like this. Here in a couple of months, <laughs> you're gonna go completely off to Woo Land. <laughs> What's that? You. You. <laughs> you. Yeah, you're going to be doing laying on a hand. Yeah. I'll be like, oh. You're going uh, to be reading people's pets' orders. <laughs> and shit. Yeah. You're going to be doing remote viewing. There and you go. Shazam. Shazam, right. <laughs> so how are the goggles? What's your thoughts? I, like, for a second, I just thought I, I, I forgot I was wearing them. It reminds me of, like, those, those like, crappy goggle X we wore in, uh, in Afghanistan. You know, you remember, or whatever. Yeah. I've never been to Afghanistan. Those goggles, you know. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it looks cool. Like uh, this, it's a different spectrum. Yeah. It, it looks like everything's like shifted. Uh, like the saturation is turned on like full blast. That's the filter. Like What'll full be blast interesting saturation. If we hear uh, if we hear one of like Area 51's jets fly over, sometimes you hear it and look up and don't see anything. And I wonder if you can see it with the goggles or not or something. Yeah, I could tell Maybe right see away. The, the, the sound earlier I thought was a fighter when I when it was going over, but actually, you know, when we saw it, I could see clearly, and then I was like, you know, I guess it doesn't really sound like a fighter. But yeah. Like that sounds like a commercial jet to me. Yeah. But it, it depends, right? Because when fighters are just transiting to and from their practicing airspace, they're going to be flying like a commercial jet, and you can't really tell anyway. You are the rocket man. Look at you. <laughs> Those are so cool. I can't tell. They, they look. They gave me the gold ones. Oh yeah, they, they gave me awesome. the cool steampunk gold ones, man. <laughs> They're awesome. Yeah. Can you see the? You can see the hat. I gotta put the hat. Yeah, on. Right, yeah I got yeah. the UAP hat. Yeah, it's okay. cool. So awesome. Use this for commercial So yeah, check this out. This is the whole pond up here. And this is the dam that we're walking on. That's a paddle boat. Paddle. Yep. So yeah, there used to be there used to be trout up here. They stocked it, right? They stocked it, yeah. This is a stocked pond. Yep. When? Um, back when, probably f ten years ago, fifteen years ago. Okay. Here we are um, at the upper pond. I'm trying to see through the lens right now. I'm just holding the the goggle up right here, so you guys get an idea of how it looks. There we go. Getting a little bit of my reflection coming off. Let me see, I'll flip him around here. The elevation here is killing all of us. We're at like 7,000 feet. Okay, ready? Here we go. Here's the goggles. Sorry, my gloves a little bit in the way. These are awesome, man. Okay, so now we're gonna follow with all of our goggles on up the creek to the spring. Um, there is a tree house up there. Did anybody notice? And the trees right down there. Up in the trees right there. So we're gonna go up to the natural spring, and then we'll loop back and go up through the the flake zone. You guys like walking down in the snow trench? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, so we're headed up to this uh, spring up here. Chris Lato says we need 30 points of interest that we can test. And so we're identifying these 30 locations. So hopefully we'll do that with different spectrums, right? We want to do different right. spectrums. Yeah, we'll test gamma, gravity, test uh, optical. electromagnetic, optical fields, test with lasers, check for different sound lasers. levels. Yeah. Who's got the lasers? Brent. 
Lazy. Yeah. Maybe you got everything in that backpack that says lazy. Bartel, take a stroll through uh, these rocks over here. We'll do it later at night oh, anyway. But Actually, no, I do have laser. We I need do. to split a, we need to make a double split, uh, a little double split. Uh, it's kind of an interesting Very spot here. You feel that, right? Right. You put your hand there and you come back and put your hand there again because you feel like what? I've done it before. Like what? I've done it before. Someone's done it before. A lot of times. Right through here. Yes. Right? Oh, that's cool. So the vibration of the rocks through your body. This is connected right down. It's probably touching that aquifer. Oh. So you sit right in between there, right? And imagine. It could be like uh, t tuning forks. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right? <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's like a big tuning fork, right? <laughs> Coming up out of the earth. What's it made out of? This is uh, what's volcanic. So get this. There's a. Let's see. I think that Jeff has a photograph of himself like standing right oh, really? there the day that he bought the ranch from Bigelow. Oh, really? Yeah. And it was the same day his son was born. Oh, wow. In the hospital. Oh, that's right. He said that. Yep. All right, I'm going off. Okay, you're Looking taking for a mark. Auras. Okay. Feeling different here a bit. There's... Well, we're still going up right by Craw Creek where everything is. The natural spring is literally just right up here in the reeds. And I just feel like the way the geology is jutting up out of the ground here has got to be connected down to whatever is vibrating underground. I feel it. And so you can feel right it yeah. yeah. right up the hill here is the flake zone straight up hill from us uh where all the a lot of the artifacts are spear points arrowhead right flaking yeah. right up the hill everywhere here i mean there's been a ton of stuff found and then the lava vent tubes are right up here um that look like they've been explored and then there's another dam and another pond further up if we mm -hmm. keep going yeah but you say you feel something here? Yeah, right uh, right about where Trace is standing. Yeah, so this could be a point, one of the 30 points, you know, right here at the pond and the dam are in between these stones. I feel like it's almost like tuning forks coming up out of the earth or something. Well, you, you almost, you just want it to be a regular, I'd almost rather look at a like Google map area. Yeah. And then say that we'll put the spots here, but, you know, try and align it with this one you know, as well. For sure, yeah. yeah. We definitely want to, yeah. That's why. We... And avoid the drama. Oh my god. Avoid the drama. Like drama, it's it sells, yes, but you always get what you what you put out there. And if you're gonna put, if you're gonna be focused on drama, you're just gonna get bogged down in it. Hundred percent. That's why we have to come and find actual points, places where the history lines up, all the way back even into the indigenous cultures. And then you use everything that you have at your fingertips, open source, and check for yourself. Well, well that's why you get more data points, you know? Yeah. Yep. So we're going to walk right down the channel now. There you go. <laughs> With the goggles on. I do with what I think is interesting. And I think somehow the theory seems to fit in at least if we can provide more data about the universe. Or nature of data. Yeah. It's interesting if you're, if you're proposing different ideas to people to consider. Right. Different models. Right here. And not be so confused or so angry all the time. True. Or to just provide a different way to maybe look at science. Yeah. Technically, hey Brent. So right basically here could be potentially the top of the battery because there is a spring here. Right, here. right here. Yeah, the water will come up from, so it comes down, runs off the mountain, and then a spring literally comes up from here and creates Craw Creek. 
right here. So if we're at the negative end of the battery down in front of the settler's cabin, this could be the positive end. If it's not ultimately at the top of the mountain, it could be right there. He's like a, a grizzly yeah. bear. <laughs> Yeah, coming up the bear coming down the through the trees behind us. <laughs> <laughs> Are you making it? I can't get low enough. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta push through. So right here, when the runoff melts, a spring actually forms right here that runs down into the aquifer. So right now, the runoff from the mountain, when it's not flowing down the creek here, it literally kind of surfaces and comes up to like. 20 feet below ground and then runs clear down to the meadow from here down. So potentially this could be the positive end and down in the meadow could be the negative end of the sure. battery or whatever. But I don't know, but this is an interesting spot right here. You feel anything off ever? Last time I was here, I didn't spend a lot of time. It was just like enough time to check it out. And then we hiked all the way up to the upper dam and kept going, but. I'm wondering if the rocks over here have the same effect in this area. For sure. Yeah, but yeah, this right here is where it comes up right out of the earth um, and then flows down to the cabin. So that got three sides to it. That was going to be a strip or a little point. Uh, cool. It was trying to be worked as a point. This is probably very, very old. As I can tell, it's been worn. So it's been probably sitting here for who knows how long. So notice how it's like an out of place stone. It's an out of place stone right here. It's, it's a totally place. different color than surrounding. Yeah. So it was probably like something that was yes. flaked off of and then just dropped like it was the original yeah. piece that was made. So you're going to find yeah. these in these flat <clears throat> areas of washout. You're going to find stone artifacts like that very easily. My grandfather used to teach me to find them. Where well, there's going? a ton. We're walking up into the flake zone right now. So. Oh, and this is just one of many then probably. Yep. Uphill here to the left is where I found pottery and where the uh, shaman's house was or the archaeologist saw the shaman the first time. So as we cross the road <clears throat> over to the left here, there's flakes and bits of pottery and agate and stuff all over the ground. Yeah, wait till you cross. Right up here on the left on the road is where I found the top of a pot. Oh yeah, this is prime area. And then just straight up the road here is the archaeologist house where he saw the shaman. So I say we just head up there and then we'll go back. Yeah. So yeah, if we dipped into the trees off to the left, this is all considered the flake zone where there's arrowhead artifacts and all kinds of stuff laying on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. See, you're right by the parked car. Is that funny? Well, let me see. It was by the by the artifact, yeah. man. You found a real artifact. So it's just another scraping tool, but you can tell. It's been worked on the sides here, but over years it's been worn down. But see how it's like the crystal geology. Yeah, too. it's a crystal one. So it's right interesting. Here. So yeah, out here through the trees, there's a ton of this. Yeah. So if you, even when Jeff has walked out here, he's picked it up and stacked. Oh, I just stepped over. Flaking right there. I'll show you some of the pictures I have. So look, start looking at your feet here. There's oh, flakes all over. Yeah. So look, right like right here is a flake on the ground. Try to focus. Oh yeah, look at that. That's boom, a, boom, right here. Look so at that, that one. Look at don't that one. touch them, don't touch them. Just look, yeah. Look at that. But look over here, there's a, I actually, don't pick them up, but there's a obsidian. Where did I see it? There's a flake here. Here's, yeah. So why don't you pick them up? Well, cause, yeah. well these are just flakes, so because they could those. be clues. Here's a flake here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. There's a flake. <coughs> There's another. What, look at that thing. Is it the white. The oh yeah. Look at the, the yellow. yellow. Yeah. And then the red over it's here. All, yeah, red through here. I found there was a black piece of obsidian on look the at ground this. here. Look at this orange one. Oh yeah. Look at that. Look at that. You can oh. tell how it's been flaked away right next to the one <coughs> by it. Yep. Right. Like somebody stood there. See, and, made, and made a tool, and now those are the remnants that have flaked, flaked off, off, of, the flaked off, off. of the tool. Yep. Right. See that black oh, piece yeah. of glass oh. right there? Yeah. That's totally not natural to the area no, here. Not. This is like traded in with another tribe, mm -hmm. probably from Yellowstone. This is the location where the archaeologists were living. You can see where the deck used to be bolted into the front. I'm going to show a picture on screen right now of what it used to look like back in the day. 
but apparently they, uh, one archaeologist stepped out on the front porch to go to work. And right out here, basically where Bartell's standing, there was the shaman, and that was the first sighting, kind of like right down here in the trees, uh, where that occurred. And then everything has started to unfold, and that's when Nids came up and started looking for the ghost, and that's when Jacques Vallée started talking about it. And anyway, yeah. So you, that's why you asked me to stand here? Yeah, this is the spot. <laughs> you didn't. Yeah. Huh? No, you didn't ask me to stand I didn't ask you to no, stand no, there? No, no, no. Oh, yeah, that's the spot. I mean, yeah, well, it's... That's basically where the front door was, where he was standing. Yeah, when he saw the apparition right there. I thought it was over here, but in the photos, you can see that the front door is pretty much where you're at. Here we are again with the infrasound device, but this time we are up at the original house where the archaeologists from California had the first sightings of the shaman. Uh, right, basically right where Chris B is standing. And so we're going to go quiet again and we're going to check for infrasound as soon as we can fire it up. Do you need my glove again to cover the needle? Here you go. If you want to use that. No, it's not, it had nothing to do with that. No? It's just, okay. It's just, it's just wonky again. Is it giving you equipment difficulties again? It's just not working. Infeltech model I N F Man, my hands moving all over the place. Infra 20 infrasound monitor. There's the information right there, so you can go check it out. It's really awesome having you guys here with me, man. Oh man, it's so cool. Such a pleasure, such an honor to be here. It's an honor having so you guys. I love not being alone on all this. I love uh, not having to fake anything and feeling like I can just bring people and we can just check it for ourselves. You know. I'm trying to get the infrasound sensor set up here. They're typical, you know, these in areas like this. The sensor hasn't worked uh, the first few times I had to restart the computer, replug it in, try all that. It was working down in the meadow. We came up here to the area where they saw the shaman and typical, um, it's not working. So I just got it plugged back in, just got the computer restarted and I just started up uh, recording a trace. So we're going to take a look at that now, but it's been what, about 10 minutes since yeah. we got started. Yeah. And, uh, yep, just now got it working. Okay. so. Holy f balls. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, you getting this? Yes, okay, dude. Okay, jumping fing balls. TikTok. Um, this is not normal. <laughs> no, this is not normal. <laughs> so, why does it look like a jumping cat? Uh, because that's. Uh, it but it is... this could just be it started up, right? I mean, no. like, no. didn't it just start and it just. It just, that, it like, just started. It just had some weird. Thing. Yeah, but it's. Uh, wow, this is. Okay, so there's... What are we seeing here? It's it's what we thought down in the meadow. We thought that if we were, were down there in the energetic area, if we came to an area that was an outcropping or a, a, a cave or something like that, it would amplify what we were seeing down there, which was the Schumann frequency, 7.8 hertz, 14 to 15, and then 21 to 22. And that is exactly what we're seeing right here. We've got massive spikes, about twice as intense within that entire, uh, entire range from... 7.3 to 10 right here and it, it's it's lit up and what do you have here 12 it doesn't even look like a natural signal brand. no 12 to 14 and then what do we got here 21 to 22 so these three octaves of the schumann same as the meadow it's really rich in harmonics and it's really rich look in chris that that line line is. look how What's thick and crisp that line it's is. crazy it's crazy it's like we're at a metallica concert but it's, you can't hear it it's like on the dog whistle realm or something oh, carl i like them real thick and juicy <laughs> this is what we got today <laughs> <laughs> wow and this is right where the archaeologists had the first experience the paranormal encounter with the shaman up here 
that started that whole NIDS investigation yeah. so, into the, the psychic effects yeah. of this place. And this area could absolutely be uh, very psychoactive with uh, with what we've got right here. I'd, I'd be surprised if uh, it, didn't, in fact, it, it, it didn't affect somebody in this intensity. It's crazy. So freaking cool. So we're using the infrasound uh, equipment here. This is the device right here if you want to go check it out. I'll put the link down in the description below. Say there's all the information that's linked up to his laptop right now and look at what we're getting here at the shaman's house shaman's cabin yeah carl we had had some issues trying to get the equipment working when we first got up here it took a couple tries restarting the computer and getting it all plugged in it's working correctly uh, but typical of these areas there's anomalies with like the electronic equipment you know failing on us and such we got this going and then we see this <laughs> this is completely anomalous as far as the, the readings go. You see a lot of activity here below 10 hertz, which is, you know, theta brainwave uh, and the octaves. Theta brainwaves right right of that where you're pointing? Yeah, so okay. this black line 10 hertz below that is basically going to be the, the area of altered consciousness, intuitiveness, remote viewing, and what have you. So like when they were putting like the, the god helmet on yep. or whatever, they were literally artificially... Uh, projecting these signals into their subjects, test subjects' brains in order to give them those out-of-body, remote viewing, astral right. projection experiences. And you're saying we're finding that here naturally mm -hmm. at Mount Wilson Ranch right very, here. Very, very strong signals. At the yeah. shaman's cap. Yeah, very intense. Uh, when they brought uh, Ingo Swan in to test on him, they improved his remote viewing by attuning him to this, uh, this 7.8 hertz. This is a... Uh, so, and, and when you just saw this, though, I remember you said, holy F balls. Yep. Is literally what you <laughs> yep. said. Holy. Uh, right Go watch you, the TikTok. You want to yeah, so yeah, so watch funny. the TikTok. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah, but this this legit. surprised me as well. Yeah. yeah, so you have have you seen something like that before? Like that not sort like of... This. No, not, not this intense. Not that intense. You, you see the a, blackness of it, right? Like how close together the points are. It's just like when we were down on the, down taking the, the readings in the, in the field. Uh, you'll see s small individual spikes. They might be more uh, more amplitude. Than the other ones around them and you'll know that that's an active frequency there but this kind of intensity is in the schumann resonance something. can you show it again there you think it's sure. the same you're seeing the same octaves yeah well so we're seeing it seems like a few more than one are, you know there there are yeah we're seeing quite a bit under 10 hertz so we're seeing so it starts basically starts right around eight hertz actually and up to can you point to it with your finger maybe yeah so yeah i don't know if you can see my yeah, cursor here see. so this entire yeah. area is just overloaded here up to 10 hertz and then you got 12 to 15 ish so a spike through. there spike there and so there again here. 14 in the middle uh, almost again yeah yeah uh, it's 19 and a half through 21. so the same three digits down as down in the metal but here it's yeah way amplified it's, even more. The only difference here is the metal was more tuned to the Schumann frequency. It was really close to 7.8 Hertz when we were there. It was like 7.79. Here it's just above right at 8. So it's, it's it's close, but it's very, very intense. Much more intense in the field. Wow. Okay, so that's wild, man. Yeah, it is. So we're going to try and get multiple points of reference for this and test the equipment and see if it's the same. So would you say this is indicative of like a natural geological thing or does this starting to seem more foreign or, or strange? I, I think it has everything to do with the, the geology and the topography of the area, but also the energetic properties that uh, affect consciousness. And stuff. Yeah, it's, uh, I think people naturally go to areas that are energetic. People build homes in, a, in an area that's empty on areas that are energetic they'll get together just like we were in the field naturally people were standing around the area that seemed to have the most activity i right. think humans just attuned to it and go to it naturally yeah. it feels good to be there i agree yep. yeah so you can watch it happen real time we're talking about doing uh Articles. quantum entanglement double slit experiments down in the meadow because we're going to try and do multiple varieties of different experiments and research up here to see if we can get any kind of more anomalies that we can't explain so seeing the double slit in person i think it's just cool it's, you can visually see that light acts as a as a wave right which just doesn't make sense just blows your mind i think when you see it in person i think we should do it in the saloon and with the fog machine yeah. and then we could or and if the weather's good in the day or something with no breeze we could try to do it down in the in the meadow but we're going to go in and warm up in the saloon and get some food and stuff and get set up for some really interesting stuff we're going to do on the sunsets. Like it with the logo that was on the building. Yeah. Oh. Look at this jacket. 
Bigelow, Genesis. This is your Genesis official wonderful. team jacket. Yeah. Aerospace. I earned mine through sweat, pain, suffering. You didn't get it in the gift shop. I didn't like buy it at a gift shop. Seen. <laughs> right, yeah. I had to earn mine. Right. I got a couple of them. So Brent is currently down in the saloon right now getting clean uh, signals now with his, what is the device? I just had a brain fart. It's infrasound the detector. infrasound yes. detector. Yeah. Carol was just saying that Jeff took her up to the top of the mountain and has seen that Vortac tower up there. And this is what's on top of it. That's the, inside it. Inside the tower on top of Mount yeah. Wilson. And I, that just counted. Look at that. The so this is what it looks like on the outside. It's like a huge tower with this like white cylinder on top, like a beacon. That is crazy. And then it, on the inside, how did it, was there a door? Yes, there's a door at the bottom of that. And I opened the door and it said, do not enter forbidden trespassing. And of course I went right in. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> and that's what is inside. Whoa. And there's more pictures in that too, I think. What is that? Okay, we're going to have to show this to I'm Brent. He might be able to see what that is. Check it out online with the FAA or SEC or something. Yeah. Interesting, guys. Danger. Yeah, I think I've got a better one than that. This is danger, permit required, confined space, do not enter. I means there's a shaft going down. Mm -hmm. That would mean there's a shaft going yes, down exactly. into the mountain. So that's, wow. Oh, you got a video. Mm -hmm. That's inside there, too. What? I was going kind of fast. I was pretty good to catch. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Look how flat it is up there. Yeah. And then this is just like it's an like antenna sticking out. The mountain is just cut off. Wow. And then there are these, round, these white things. That's the panoramic with the hole around. What is okay, this? Okay, those, those things are in a circle around that. There's the tower. There's... So like, it's like a big dish, and maybe that's the middle, and then these are like a perimeter. These thing. are around the perimeter of it. Really? So like a so ring? There's or... maybe 20 of them. Really? Yeah, and I took pictures of the underside of that and the bottom of it. Wow. Look at that. Yeah, under, up underneath it. <laughs> oh yeah, so, yeah, okay. It's buzzing, there is a hum going on like, and it says this thing has been decommissioned. What did you FAA say it was? Well, it looks kind of like a Vortec, because it's like... Vortec, yeah. Yeah, we right. see a in, which would be a, you know, a directional device for airplanes. To tell normally them, they right? don't have this extra thing up on the top, normally, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know, that's, that's what it could be. You know, you, you're going to put it up on the tallest hill so you can yeah. transmit the furthest. And when it's right by the site and everything, they're going to want to make sure to keep people out of there. So it could be like directional, like stay away from here or whatever. Yeah, or, I mean, you're going to pick the tallest, if it's the tallest, flattest area, then and you're going to want to keep people out of there so they don't like break it, you know. Yeah. You know, could easily make that argument. Hmm. Um, but I've never seen inside of one, to it's be nice. honest. It's kind of cool. When you look inside, you see different... It would, I guess I'd see, yeah, assume there's uh, receivers and transmitters. Yeah. Because basically it just she was saying receive, those smaller, sends all the time. The smaller antenna are like in a ring around that spire in the middle. You guys can see the motion. It basically, that's how yeah. aircraft navigate, right? Because you send out these these pulses of known places, and you look on the map, and you're like, okay, that's where it is. It's yeah. that direction. So it's miles. basically like a ping. <laughs> so yeah. this is where we are. Ding, we're going west. So that's how you know where you are. Is, it's air navigation, VOR attacking. What Tactic, about tactical air navigation? Interesting. That's interesting. You see the, the Skyrim mod? Somebody modded Skyrim to be Macho Man dragons, and the dragons would fly in. They'd be like, Macho Man, this they'd fly in. It's like, oh, it's fantastic. And they had his face, and they're wearing the, the leather no purple. Word. Oh, yeah, Google it. It's fantastic. It was like 10 years ago. It was good stuff. Oh, Where is it? Stephen Dusson. Okay, so first of all, what did you find when you got Roger. a baseline down in the saloon? Yep. Yeah. With the infrasound, yep, what uh, did you figure out? Uh, it's a lot more quiet in there right now without us in there amping it up. Same frequencies uh, in certain parts of the... So closest to us on the bar is, is kind of quiet. 
down on the other side, it's uh, quite pronounced actually, the, uh, the same seven and 14 and 21, um, but nowhere near like what it was outside or even in the meadow. So, really? Yeah. Okay, interesting. So not, not as loud, uh, you know, loud. We, we just found out there's there. a Vortec right nearby. Well, let's see that Wilson Creek uh, Vortec. Tower. It's, yeah, so it's a TACAN receiver, you know, for airplanes. Hmm. Okay. We, can, we can tune to 116.3 frequency, uh, v, you know, should be VHF. So here's the question. What if that Vortec Tower up there, because it it's using power, you know, they're drawing, there's a lot of, a big cable going up the side of the mountain, uh, with elect electricity running through it. And look at where all the snow is packed on the V of the mountain and how it runs right down Craw Creek, right in front of the settler's cabin. Do you think any residual energy could be bleeding off through the geology into the earth? And maybe that's what we're picking up. Possible. It possible. possible. Yeah, so it's, it's, it could be uh, because of the, uh, seismic things from a hyperloop or some other railway that might be out there in the desert that we don't know about. How many people have we talked to that say they think there's trains underground here? Numerous. Numerous. Over and over. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's been a positive Wait, effect. Wait, well, what was this place originally going to be for? Well, the MX Missile Program. The MX Missile Program, which is a, a, a rail system, uh, missile program, underground rail system for moving mobile nukes around. <laughs> so nobody would ever know where they are. Where they were. Right. So you were saying you were uh, part of the Psychotronics Association? Yeah. So the U.S. Psychotronics Association been around since the 70s, a long, long time, late, late 70s. Mm -hmm. And it was all uh, the movers and shakers in the, uh, the fringes of science. So uh, consciousness research, etc. They've got guys like Andrea Puharish and uh, uh, Dr. Bob Beck and all these people. Um, half of them were intelligence assets, spooks, whatever like that, but they, they put out some really great information among themselves within the U.S. Psychotronics Association. And uh, I think we were just about to talk about the Philadelphia Experiment. Some of the earlier people that wrote about Philadelphia Experiment, Montauk, uh, Car Carlos Allende, uh, Carl Allen, uh, Preston Nichols were part of the U.S. Psychotronics Association as uh, protege to people like Andrea Poharish and stuff. Um, and they were picking up the information about all of these psychotronic uh, technologies that are, you know, we're theoretical or they're, you know, releasing some of them in limited disclosure, like guys yeah. like Bob Beck. And they were putting them into stories like the Montauk Project and uh, the Philadelphia Experiment. So you Project. think the name the Montauk Project is kind of just like a cover, like? I think Preston Nichols was a very sad man that needed to make some money and he stole a lot of stories from other people in the USPA and mm. fabricated a fantasy around himself yeah. as some kind of superhero being taken over to be put in a psychic chair to whatever. <laughs> that makes um, sense. He was drawing on real technologies and real things people were talking about in his around him, his, his entourage. Um, but he, that's all nonsense to me, honestly. Huh. So, yeah. But here's the thing though, so where the Montauk project was like a, just like an exaggeration and all this stuff that didn't really occur. But what was real? Andrea Puharich, yeah. yeah. we've got photos of him sitting in the saloon down here. Uh, what were those guys up to? Puharich actually had a real Stranger Things camp for kids in New York. It wasn't Long Island, it was uh, in another area of New York. He had one in Maine before that. Uh, Andrea Puharich was an army doctor. He was booked through medical school and he specialized in mind control technologies, voice to skull technologies, hallucinogens, and anything that could affect the human mind. And he did testing in Maine on people. Um, then he moved off to do chemical testing at Fort Ord in California. And then he went and created a, a new think tank in New York. And just down the road from it, created his school for the space kids. And the space school kids. for space kids. School that sounds space exactly space. like Stranger Things. He was the first one pushing that narrative. Uh, his son had friends that would come over and he would take them into the Faraday cage room and hypnotize them and tell them they were special and they were space kids. And the parents found out and they burnt that fucking school down. They burnt Whoa. the school down. They, they, Puharich, Puharich, they, they burnt wow. that portion. Now, it, was a, it was a camp, supposedly. And, and that's Puh the story. Yeah. And Puharch, so they were doing all these experiments with kids. Yeah. And, and now, who did he mentor? Uh, he mentored Preston Nichols, uh, but he also mentored The Law of One, the Raw Book. The so, Robert. so he yeah. told them, Puharish was funded by the Astors, by the Rockefellers, by the Bronfmans who owned Seagrams. They would get together in seance circles and they'd 
channel Ra, or the uh, the Nine, the Aeneid, the Egyptian Aeneid. That was the story at the time. It yeah. was the Egyptian Aeneid, the Nine. That became um, channeling Ra, and then that became the Egyptian god. The Egyptian god, and then him giving the name Ra as an alien entity to uh, Ruckert and. Uh, I forget the other guy at the moment, but Ruckert was the uh, the channeler for the, the, the Law of One, the Raw book, and he, they didn't start channeling Raw until they met Puharish and got that narrative from him, right. and then they started pushing that, and that became a metaphysical phenomenon, and all the trips went out throughout society, and they, people started talking about that, and Puharish, oh God, Yuri Geller. Um, Yuri Geller was one of his star kids, right? No, Yuri Geller was, uh, Puharish went to Israel and was talking to a colonel from the Mossad that introduced him to Yuri Geller to put Yuri Geller into the United States to downplay uh, psychic ability because James Randi was also an intelligence asset that were meant to play together and debunk one another. Geller was a, an Israeli plant he was in Mossad. the Stanford he, he, he's program? Mossad. Yeah. Really? Absolutely. Okay. Um, and they were meant to make it look stupid. Meanwhile, powers. Meanwhile, Yuri Geller. Yeah, right, yeah. I got a power to put a pine so in my ass, sure. But it's, who, so who has the mess, who has the RV powers? Uh, Ingo Swan. Ingo Swan. Ingo Swan. Uh, uh, McDonald Douglas used to teach people PK, and it was really provable. They did, used to do it and mm. gather the data, and they could take it. It's real. It, it's real. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. How put off, right? How put You got these guys uh, warring with one another publicly while Israel is pulling over all the Russian psychotronic so, uh, scientists like uh, Larissa Vilenskaya and such were moving to Israel to create uh, non-lethal weapons and they were using all the old Russian technology Soviet technology non-lethal weapons there you mm -hmm. go how <laughs> familiar to you yeah. so yeah I know a lot about the boat look at this jacket <laughs> there you go no, that's, what's in the right uh, that's, that's a cool jacket well, that's a cool jacket <laughs> anyway it's good anyway. all set so, survivor <laughs> all sap survivor contestant all sap survivor <laughs> human biosensor survivor <laughs> nice try <laughs> nice try so we've got um, <laughs> we've got Puharish as a mover and shaker in this this field of you know non-lethal weapons and all this uh, we've got him interacting with the Stanford Research Group, uh, put off and Targ and all these guys, bringing Yuri Geller there. Uh, I've got documents. Bob this. Monroe. Bob Monroe um, mm -hmm. was mentored by Puharish and probably started up the Monroe Institute in that entire bit. Gateway. Probably, maybe my personal opinion is that he created it at the behest of Puharish to give it some legitimacy. Um, I've got documents from the CIA talking about how they're going to slush funds through Edgar Mitchell's Institute of Noetic Sciences. Edgar Mitchell. Edgar Mitch Mitchell's Institute of Noetic Sciences. I'm talking to Dean Radin yeah. in January. Yeah. About, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're going to pay Puharish even though he's a scumbag and they don't they don't like paying him, but he brought in Yuri Geller and now they're going to use him as an asset. So they got to pay him somehow. Is he still, where is Puharish? He's dead as shit. He's dead. Yeah, he's, he's dead. dead. He's, he, he, so, he, Puharish lived on the private estate of the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company heir. Um, lived in a private house. The te that guy had people from the USPA doing um, psychotronics and non-lethal weapon and whatever mind control research on his property in North Carolina. And somebody push, pushed uh, Puharish down the stairs. Well, and when did he die? Um, Somebody pushed him down. I can't the remember that. I think it was the mid nineties. Maybe it was the nineties. So I, I it was before. Uh, yeah. So he's in the photographs mm -hmm. that we have in the saloon with yeah. John Keel and Jacques Vallée here. He's in the Mount, same photographs. Same as photographs yeah. as those and dudes. We had no idea that he had anything to do with Vallée or Keel. 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 So what are they? What are they all doing up here? In your opinion, now that you. have are here sitting at the same place that they all were and it's kind of coming together. Like I always puzzle. thought that Puharis was trying to net, to take the natural phenomenon of telepathy and psychic ability, whatever, quantify it, qualify it, and then turn it into a weapon. Right, yeah. right. So then what, uh, Has it always been a one weapon? more quick... Because he was military. He was getting paid to... Run. Yeah. So one more quick question. How do you have all this archival information and knowledge? Because you were part of that, back full circle to the beginning, mm -hmm. part of that psychotronics association, yeah, well, and yeah. you have all the files, well, I, right? I paid, I paid attention. It, it was very public. It's just nobody ever paid attention. And I weaponized my own autism to go out and find all this information. <laughs> yeah. and yeah. it. No, I, I just look, and I'm that interested, and I'm, a, I'm an expert hobbyist. I just yeah. really was interested in what I saw from them. And I started gobbling it all up everywhere I could, reading all the. You have all the archives and everything. And he yeah. works yeah. for Bigelow. I mean, how did so? How did Bob? How did Bigelow come? Used to? How did Bob Bigelow come into play? Like, 
How did he take over for? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how big Robert Mitchum is. We have the, the, the crossover. Yeah. We have an interesting. We have the crossover in the same book here, yeah. where suddenly we have one photograph where we have Jacques Vallée sitting next to Pouharich, and then in 1994, in the same book, you've got Jacques Vallée standing in photos out in the meadow next to Bob Bigelow. Maybe to answer your question, Chris. Maybe they viewed, maybe they viewed Bob Bigelow as a resource, yeah. a guy who had money, deep pockets. And access, and maybe they could trust him not to share, like right. you said. Yeah, the CIA would right. trust uh, Bob Bigelow assets first. Was very, he's very passionate about the UFO topic. Yeah, and so maybe that was these guys all sitting together. Yeah, where's the other? That's the from the book. This is Jack Ballet's book. Yes, Mount Wilson Ranch, mm -hmm. right here in Nevada. Yeah. See where the trucks parked. See the front of the motel. It talks about Pioch right over here, mm -hmm. and then it says. Uh, Pioche Caliente, their intriguing names. The ghost of a tall Native American is rumored to show up in one of the rooms. And if you walk through that door right there and go outside, that's where the room is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right there. So cool. Yep. You want to talk about how expensive this place was? Yes. Yeah, Let's talk about the financials. This is an eight minute one take right now. This is so cool. Yeah, this is just like a whole show in and of itself. Oh, <laughs> Putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. I love just doing one show, yeah. Dude, it's awesome. Carol, when you find the footnote part, where's the footnote? The footnote? I've, I've got it. Let me actually look. I've got, I can search my Kindle. So we've been talking about all this stuff, and here is Chris Bartel, who worked for like six years active, basically total, at Skinwalker Ranch. And... I mean, you were taken to Reno, Nevada and had MRIs done and not told why or what or anything. And now hearing how this all pieces together and that they were dealing with psychotronic experimentations and they were trying to find these types of energetic hotspots and portals and things like that. And they were literally building the God helmet and doing... Uh, you know, all this kind of stuff, like the Stanford Research Institute, remote viewing things. How does that fit in with all that time that you spent at Skinwalker? It makes a lot of sense, which is why we did experiments like sitting inside Homestead 2 alone in a lawn chair, trying to make contact with whatever the phenomenon is out there. Um, also, a remote viewing experiment we did with me and some other officers. I never got the results from that test. No, never got the results from They anything. never share any of that no. with you? It was kind of like, hey, this is what you're going to do. And you just did it, you know. And, uh, and then later on down the road, I got the MRI done. And then the MRI was a whole other thing where, you know, you're flown to Reno. <laughs> and then we're told the reason why the, the reason why I was told I was getting the MRI done was to see if there's any changes in my brain patterns. But you just got one MRI done. Right. So how can you have a baseline to judge the changes? Right. So obviously, they, so were they scanning all of you guys working no, there? No, no, it was just they, they asked you, and basically I said, yeah, I'm, I, I, I have no problem doing it because I was because I had experiences on the property. I had yeah. real experiences, and I would hate to think now that they were somehow manipulated by outside forces because I believe, like I said before, the Native American stuff right. there is what I experienced. And so, you know, looking back at it now, could it have been somebody else? I don't know. Could they have been doing any kind of experimentation, like right. trying to, I don't know. Mind manipulate me or whatever, because they have a blueprint in my brain or something? Maybe. I have no idea. You know, it's just, it's questions, and that's kind of the whole reason why I came public in 2019. It's actually the point of impact for me. Right. When I, when I'm at home, and I read about OSAP, and then medical testing, and I'm like, wait a minute, I had medical testing done. And then I start, you know, making calls and getting kind of the door slammed in my face a little bit. And then I start getting making... blocked by Gary Nolan on Twitter. And well, I... yeah, <laughs> that's how I'm getting blocked by Gary Nolan. Yeah, and then you know, <laughs> I and then for three years I am on this quest to find out what's going on, and I'm worried about my children. I'm worried about my family because, yeah. you know, you hear Mr. Bigelow saying, you know, the rumors are that he said that he believes all the negative effects in his life are from his interaction with the ranch and right. that would explain why he was never there the whole time I was out there right. neither was calm neither nobody was out there it was just us right and because they were either scared of that place because they knew something was going on or or they else. were using it like to observe for what whatever else. they so, were trying to explore so for me for it's testing a, yes and so for me this whole thing is just about closing a chapter in my life so I can 
figure out what to do, prepare myself. And I have been, I've been, you know, medically tested since then. Yeah. And there have been deficiencies in my, in, in some of my, I have a thyroid pro problem. And, really? other, and yes, and other things like that. So, and I've reached out to other guys that were involved in the ranch and guess what? The common denominator is thyroid problems. So yeah, Almost a lot, yes. And, or and like so, Havana syndrome type stuff they it, mentioned. It, it could be, yeah. Up. And this know. is not like an allegation. I have medical no. documentation yeah, to back it up. And I have a doctor currently monitoring it. So it, it's concerning, but also, I also went to Nevada test site, you know, and there's tons of radiation out there as well. But what the difference was, yeah. I had a disseminar on out there, mm -hmm. you know, and I had blood tests done right. a lot, and there was more physicals done. Right. And then, you know, and then fast forward 2019, I, I, a scientist says to me, basically, like I've told you before, you know, the first thing he asked me was, did I know about radiation? And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Like at Skinwalker? At Skinwalker. And then he asked me, did I know about $22 million? No. And then the final thing he said to me was, how does it feel to know you're possibly a guinea pig and all this? And I said, if that's true, I don't feel very good about it. And then once he said that, my whole con my 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 whole mind is flipped. And I was just like, what the hell? Suddenly everything they had to do was starting to fit together. Yeah, right. now we've come full circle all the way up here. Now we're first we've circle. traced their, their breadcrumb trail all the way back to the beginning and traced it all up all to the, here and, and what that meant to all that time and what yes. they had you doing on the ranch. And it's the same players involved in this whole thing. And like I said before, and, and I think somebody asked me the question, you know, Bigelow's involvement, you know, and I think that the people around him saw him as a mark, basically, a guy with deep pockets. And he's passionate about the UFOs. He's passionate about life after death. And so they used him. And maybe even the properties in order and the places. Correct. And he had the which interest is, and which to is, get answers too. And so he's willing to maybe even. Yep. And which is why Hal put off, or Hal put off and Kip Green pitched the, the ranch to Brandon Fugel because yeah. the pockets were dry for Bigelow. And, and then why keep, they jump over the, to Tom DeLong and to the Stars Academy yeah. and you have the same sort of it's, pattern. Yeah, you follow, you follow the money. And it's yeah. not even yeah. a conspiracy theory and it's not like, I'm trying to. It's it literally like, how it's the game exactly is played when you're yes. in these compartmentalized programs Correct. and things. It's how the dirty game is The government played. is going to use private citizens' money before they have to use exactly. this for special access program yeah. projects. Yeah. Yeah. Like been. And the side effect of that is things like yes. you. But now you have the opportunity to come back here yeah. and get closure on all of it and then do it on your own terms. Right. On and, your own terms. And my yeah. point about it is like, at the ranch, I focused on the positivity of, of stuff. Even here now, I focus on the positivity. Even knowing that if I was a guinea pig, which it looks like maybe I was, yeah. I can't just dwell on that because that's not how I'm how I am. I, right. I gotta look past that. I gotta look forward to my kids' future. But I'm just trying to close chapters because yeah. this is the new chapter I want to open up and keep exploring these realms of possibilities. My arm's gonna fall stuff. off. I gotta change cameras. <laughs> I guess the twenty-two million dollars. Twenty-two million dollars was awarded. So this is the, here's the here's the gist of it. Yeah. So in 2007, James Lukaski reaches out to Robert Bigelow and says, "I read Hunt for the Skinwalker book. I loved it. Can I come visit the property? He works for the DIA." Mm -hmm. Bigelow says, "Yeah, let's go." So they go out to Skinwalker Ranch in 2007, um, and and Bigelow. It's actually in the new book too, Skinwalker of the Pentagon. They talk about this. Uh, in less than two hours, basically. James Lukaski sees something inside Homestead One, which is Gene Deese's house. And he sees, he sees like a tubular structure and, and like a hologram in midair, basically, that's what he says. But it doesn't say anything. True. This is in the book. This is in the book. Yeah. This is what they Which you just say. read on the flight which here. Which I read on the flight here, because I, 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 I've kind of pitched, I kind of looked, scanned through it, but I haven't read read it. Right. So I read it on my flight here. And I've had people read it and then ask me questions about it. So I, there's certain things I have, I do know about it. But so the uh doesn't tell Bigelow about what he saw until like, like a day later or something. Goes back to the Pentagon and with zero evidence, gets $22 million funded through Harry Reid to push a bid for offset program for Bigelow Aerospace. Bigelow wins the contract and starts BASS. Mm -hmm. The problem with all this is besides the fact there's no evidence to use taxpayer money to single source and all yes, that. Yes, yeah. it's, it's, it's taxpayer money. Um, Lukaski never goes back to Skinwalker Ranch. So in my viewpoint, if I have a team member who has intel on a site, I want to use that asset as much as possible. He's a valuable asset. I can learn from him. I can get guidance. So Lukaski not coming back to Skinwalker is ridiculous. Yeah. 
Yeah. And how do you know he didn't go back? Because I, mean, I was are you there. Sure, he yes, said I it. Or... Sure, I was on the yeah. positive. Because I went. Because I was. I got hired in two thousand ten. Yeah. But obviously, the guys before me caught me up to speed about who was out there and who wasn't out there. And, and they yeah. kept log books and everything. Yeah. Guys, who who came and went? Right? All so that was log. The security officer, right? right? So we're tracking who's coming out there. Oh, so you know as yes. well, right? And yes. so when you come back, like you've gone home for like vacation, you come back. And it's like you ask who's been there. There's or log books. Yeah. yeah, like who's coming, going, everything, right? Yeah. So back in my day, it was like you know two weeks out there, then you're back in Vegas working, two weeks out there, off and on. So, yeah. um, so anyway, so then um, you know he never comes back to the ranch. So from the start, the operation has failed because now you don't have all valuable assets on the ground. You have guys. Mm -hmm. So the, so when I got hired, there was no direction really. There was no guidance about what they wanted us to do. And it seemed like nobody cared what we wanted to do. And we and it's like on a security ask point and tactical situation, we didn't even have one working camera to monitor the, the gates. So we had to constantly be on foot patrolling the property to get ahead of trespassers. That was the only way to get ahead of it. Because heaven forbid something happened on your watch and a, a trespasser gets on the property and but you know vandalizes the property, kills somebody, that's going to fall on your, your shoulders. Especially so. after, like, so the show got more famous. Is that what put a lot more pressure on? Well, like, the, is that back in my why time, you so worried about trespassers? I mean, no. what would it matter, you know? Well, because I mean, back in my time, we had intel that there was somebody trying to kill us. Oh, really? Yes. yes. Yeah, that's right. Yes. As so, a security it, guard. See, this is the difference what people don't understand yeah, about yeah. the ranch. Because it's, it's now... It's why? Is it, why would they want to kill you? Because I'll tell you why. Because people believed that we were hybrids on that property. Or they believed that we were cursed and could not be killed. Dude, there was people, there's phases of people that want, like wanted to go commit suicide because they wanted to become yeah. skinwalkers. So they wanted to go there and hang themselves or OD yeah. and stuff. So, I mean, there's a whole yeah, just skew like cold, of people. Cold, yeah, it becomes like, it's military. like a moth to the flame yeah, for yeah. weirdos to try and go to a place <laughs> yeah. like that. So like, right? I said, like I said before, you're a military <laughs> professional. So you're given a task to secure a site. So you have that mind frame. You're, that's yeah, your mind sure, frame now definitely. is to secure the site no matter yeah. what. And so you're automatically yeah, operating in this in this hot zone of like, I gotta be a good soldier. I gotta be a good pr protector for the property. Right. Not just for the property, but for gene, for the ranch managers. I'm there to protect them. You were living there. And stuff. Yes, I'm living there. So I gotta right. protect them. I gotta protect me. I wanna go back home and see my family. Right. So and you, not to mention that you're walking out and finding like animal skins strewn across the fence right. posts and all yeah. kinds of weird occult things happening on the property. Correct right. on the on the far west on the side. far west side. Yeah. And so all this is going on, and then on top of that, you're you're having experiences out there, and you're you're kind of like second guessing reality of like what the hell is going on here? Is my am I getting cabin fever? Am I you know because I've been out here for so long alone, you know, and then. You're just out there really alone. You were saying that. With the You'll dogs. Just be out there totally yeah. just you. Just me and the dogs. That's it. I mean, the yeah. first year, the first year we had a secondary officer when the offset program was still going. Yeah. yeah. But back in my time, yeah, I didn't know about the offset program. It was just, hey, this is our job. And then in 2011, we lost all assets and it was just one guy with tasked to secure a thousand acres of land because we, we leased the land around us to give us more, you know, coverage. And so, you know as well, on a security standpoint, you don't ever put an officer anywhere by themselves for a thousand reasons. I kind of fall in a crevice, broke my leg, die, attacked by wolves, killed by a trespasser. So all this is going on in the back of your mind of like, you know, operating in the red zone as much as possible. And then I'm sitting inside Homestead too, in a lawn chair, trying to make contact with the phenomenon on top of that. And then while I'm sitting there, I'm thinking to myself, okay, if I'm not at the East Gate or the West Gate or on top of the Mesa, that's where the that's where the trespassers are going to come on the property and possibly either steal something, do harm, whatever. And so you're constantly in this loop of just aggressively patrolling the property and experiencing things. And then now you got to do the data reports and there's a lot How, of stuff. Who would who would be the one that would like say, hey Chris, your assignment is to go and do try to levitate a button in a jar at Homestead Two or try to do this or do that, like the Stanford Research Institute psychic experiments, suddenly you're doing them on Skinwalker Ranch. Like, right. who's the one asking you to do that? Or how so do you get those jobs? That At the very end of OSAP, it was very clear that there was people scrambling for their jobs, basically. It seemed, it seemed like people were scrambling to create data yeah. for whatever was going on. And so those people were... They need to send stuff back to 
all the, the way up the ladder to continue justified. the justified funding. Right, right. So the it won't just be like, look, guys, we we haven't done anything. It's been five, five years. This right. thing's gonna end. We need to. We're gonna get all get in trouble stuff. if we don't produce results. Like, right. We've we been doing. Oh, nothing. I thought you were doing it. You right. know, like, right. is that what it happened? Gotcha. So it was the people underneath column that was giving those orders. Column Kelleher. Yeah, underneath, underneath him. So well, it sounds like they were right, but it sounds like you were doing some, at least some of it. When you were talking about the remote viewing stuff. Yeah, that was us. It yeah. was us that were the ones that were doing it. We were the ones that were involved in the. You program. seem pretty proud of it though when you were explaining it. You know, like it was like a cool kind of experience when you. Oh yeah, it, it was awesome. Or... I mean, it, it was. I mean, the whole thing looking back was cool. I mean, I didn't... and even the experience of going around and like being on a TV show and all this. The even TV... just being out there alone. I mean, it well, still the t- has to be like it's some sort of. A the whole reason why I even went on the TV show was because. I had important information to pass over to the team. And when Bigelow sold the property in 2016, we weren't able to do a proper changeover with a new team. And that always bothered me because I they had didn't to... let you on, right? You said as soon as it was sold, they, you, they wouldn't let you do a, a proper handover. Proper handover. Because to... of liability or whatever. Literally, Bigelow put everybody under NDAs, yeah. gave them several people money to not talk, and then like kept all his files, put them in his vault down in Vegas well, or whatever, yeah. and then handed the keys of the ranch over and to I, Brandon and Fugel felt, and didn't and, tell him and anything. From my, my perspective, is like I just spent like almost six years on this property collecting all the Native American stuff and GPS locations and areas of interest, and I had all this data to pass over, and it's just going to sit there. So that's when I was like, well, okay, I guess there'll be, there'll be a story to tell my kids one day, you know? And then an opportunity arose in 2019 where they said, hey, would you come out to be an advisor right. for the show? And, and I said, yeah, absolutely. And, and then, but uh, now they're talking to us. They have us going up and out doing a lot of stuff off the ranch, off of Skinwalker yeah. Ranch. And literally why a lot of reason why we're all up here right now mm-hmm. is to kind of like, what the heck is real and what isn't? Right. What is real and what's we not? We want to find out what's real and what the, the, some of the stuff that we're doing here, we're discovering there is some type of weird anomaly here that we're trying to you know, uncover. 100%. You know, but back in my timeline, we didn't have any of this. We didn't have any tech. We didn't have any scientists. It was yeah. literally boots on the ground, old school. And that was my viewpoint as a police officer. This is a giant crime scene. I'm going to find solid evidence to back up whatever is the claim here. And so my, my data that I collected led to the conclusion that it's Native American based with all the stuff I found out there and then tracking the high areas of artifacts of people's experience. And look what we just did today. We went to the shaman area where everybody's seen a shaman and what's right there? Artifacts. All the artifacts. It was an area, it was, an, it was called <laughs> evidence of yeah. occupation. Yeah. There was a massive establishment there at one point, you know. So that energy, that frequency, that vibration is displaced in that natural environment. Yep. Totally. And that's what I've been saying since 2011. Yeah. It's been a dumb deaf ears. It's been driving me. I felt like I've been taking crazy pills since 2011, mm-hmm. like screaming at, at a wall. Yeah. And then I meet you, and I meet Chris, I meet you, and I meet, I meet, I meet James Keenan. Yeah. And I'm able to kind of like and figure it out. And figure, put pieces What together. happened to me? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like, I'm more concerned about my kids' future and my wife. I don't care so much about myself. I'm more worried about them because I know things that I, I know my wife had experienced some things, negative things, and I think maybe it could have happened to my kids as well, I don't know. So for me, it's a different game I'm playing here. I'm playing, I'm like on a war path to close a chapter basically. Right. And I need to get answers because my kids are gonna get older one day and they're gonna come looking for answers and they might not do it so peacefully. Yeah. <laughs> they might, and I'm not, I'm just, that's, I'm being honest here. Yeah. I'm trying to put myself in their shoes if I was a young boy and then I find out, that, you know, down the road, something happened to my dad because of some weird experiments well, this has or always something. Been, yeah. The military's done this for many years, you know, like my uncle died from uh, Agent Orange exposure. Right, right. <laughs> and know, I see it every and, day at the uh, VA. I see it every day. Yep. So you see, I mean, you I work see, at the VA too. Yeah. yeah. And I see it every single day. I really, yeah, I really wish we could fix the fear effect. Just and it, it kills me. I see, I see the pain and suffering yeah. every day and I'm involved in it. And it's, it's, it kills me. It yeah. really does. But either way, I think, uh, man, that's awesome discussion. Yeah, Chris, it's anybody amazing. ever give you a solid reason why they didn't have the cameras working? Because they, they make it sound like the whole place was surveilled. Uh, we tried to get cameras a couple times and we never got us. One reason was because we couldn't uh, draw a line from the East Gate to the Homestead one because the ground was too hard, which is totally BS. We could have easily done it. Do you, do you get the feeling that they were just keeping you out there stressed on purpose? Yes, I believe that they wanted to study long-term effects of ranch exposure. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it, it, it sounds. It, it sounds like it, it 
like Rendlesham. Do you guys know about the Rendlesham case? Yeah. 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 But was... the thing is, for them, it's like they want to stay long term effects of the ranch exposure. And I, and I said, I've said before, my exposure out there was positive because I was able to just convert that negativity yeah. into positive yeah. creative visions. And so that was the long term effects was yeah. me being out there it's, alone. Instead of sitting scared in the yeah, house, like you went out with the dogs right. and your I camera and got involved. I wasn't yeah. reading scary books and then going out and trying to scare myself. I was like, this is my home. This is my place. I'm going to protect it. Yeah. And I'm going to show right. people how beautiful it is because it was such a beautiful place for me. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. It was still is to this day. This day. Well, one of the references I ran into that got me scratching my head is that they were postulating different ways they could actually open up abilities in people open up remote viewing and psychic ability, whatever, PK. Right. And long-term stress was one of them. Well, that was one of the avenues that they oh, were trying to... I mean, it was definitely so stressful. Wonder, yeah. yeah, I wonder if that was like one test bed for yeah. the long-term stress experience. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah. extremely stressful. It would even make sense with you trying to levitate bottle caps. Like, is right. this guy taken to the program or not? Right, yeah. right. Interesting. And then going back on that, a lot of the stuff that I experienced, whatever, I didn't even report down because I still had an active two clearance for the DOE. I was afraid to lose that. I'm like, I can't put my name on when I'm, I'm saying I see I saw a ghost or something like that. Nobody's going to believe me, you know? Yeah. It's like, and then when we lost the second officer, we, now we've lost the second witness. So now I'm definitely not going to write anything down because yeah. I don't have a witness. I don't have anything to back up my story. So it was really just like... And then you see people's psychology working alongside of you start to deteriorate yes. over the years. And people getting, like, really their mental health I saw mental health go you. down, and I saw that, and I've said that before, that ranch will eat you up, you know? Yeah. And it did. If you're out there alone with your thoughts and you're dealing with the stress of securing the property and then the paranormal stuff on top and of it. And you're that. saying that that was something that they would do to make people more suggestive to those types yeah. of so, experiments. So, so the, the, there was a Rendlesham UFO case. That was that was a hoax. That was a, a test of the security forces using new psychotronic weaponry to see how they react even with the new weaponry in play. See if they'd still be able to maintain their composure. And people have lasting effects for years after all of that. Yeah. Um, that was, so you think it's a hoax though, Rendlesham? It is. Mm -hmm. It, but I, there I, is, I know the technology they used. So, yeah. What is the technology? Oh, leaky pipe. Well, I could show you all about it. Oh, yeah, wow. I'd be yeah. interested. Yeah, what about the download it's, it's, and the guy and he touches it in the code? What's that? What about the code touching the yeah, drone? It's, it's all about putting you in, in a state where you're suggested. And so it's like the altered state of consciousness, exactly. the theta waves, that's, the, that's what the human residents, yeah. and then when they're walking in that field, then they're suggestible to be implanted with yeah. like a signal, and, almost like a from a truck or a satellite or something exactly. or what, you and know? It, I know it's tangential, but it makes me wonder if they had similar technology in play. And, that and according to yeah. Dr. Stephen Greer on the latest yeah. toe, action, the okay. latest toe uh, interview, and I, I can't believe more people haven't talked about this, he says in one minute, one, one hour, 17 minute mark to one hour, 22 mark, he said, Dr. Stephen Greer states that Colonel Alexander and his sidekicks is what he says, use technology to scare the Shermans off the ranch because Bigelow wanted to own it. And where was he at before? There. He was here. Right. And he didn't. And Wilson, what, who was here? Bigelow was here with, with Hal Fudoff and all those guys were here. All the same okay. crowd. What, we need to date those uh, photographs, right? Yeah. You're talking about. Yeah. Well, they're, the ones that are in the book yeah. put yeah. them in the same, uh, dressed in the same clothing in 1994 yeah. was when both of them, but there's one photo that has Andrea Puharch and he died way before the 90s. So he, yeah. Um, that means they were up here in the saloon, probably back in the... This was August 1996 when they were... 96. Have they that. updated their clothing? Tonight. Probably the most important part. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, but there's there's mention that, that, that Vallejo actually publicly mentions that they were here even way before this. So. Yeah. What is this here? Okay, now we had talked about uh, the funding for Mount Wilson versus Skinwalker and that this place was significantly more expensive and more significant to them at the time. Uh, Jacques Vallée's got a I mention of it in the book in page 501 and notes and references under part 15. What book is this? This is uh, Forbidden Science volume number four, the Spring Hill Chronicles by Jacques Vallée. Cool. And again, on page 501, he's got mention of uh, the operational budget for the uh, uh, for NIDS. He's got the first category is payroll, 249,000, science board, 210, travel, 124, rent, 45, supplies, 23, advertising, blah, blah, And also under operations Whoa, were the Mount, a lot of money. Mount, Mount Wilson Ranch was $350,970, uh, $350, and the Utah Ranch was 200108 So Mount R Wilson Ranch was almost double. So he's, this is back in the 90s, and he's yep. oh, in the budget. His ex 
operational expenses annually are half, over half a million dollars oh, yeah. between the two. Between the two. And so he had to just make a choice between here and Skinwalker Ranch up yep. north, and they basically made the choice to sell to Jeff. Yep. Okay. There you go. Here. <laughs> Welcome to the party. Yes. Now we're all here trying to figure it out. And it's very interesting that they also went through and they bought a UFO, uh, a UFO library. Uh, I believe that was from, uh, oh shoot, I forget his name. They bought a UFO library from a researcher uh, who used to be with the, uh, I believe, he's a Blue Book guy, I believe. House communication House devices. House communication devices. 23,000. And we could talk all about those. Those are interesting. You know what they are? Uh, yeah, he makes mention of them in the book. Uh, how, how put off supposedly at communication devices like Close Encounters with uh, light and... Light and uh, flashing light and such, uh, and the ability to measure uh, spectrums coming back with a spectrometer uh, to communicate with these. So things. basically everything from the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind, yeah, that's based off of Jacques Vallée, the French scientist. Yeah. How put off is the one yeah. building those devices? Yeah, loose, loosely based on it, yep. yep. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, and he's running around with Hal Putoff and Andre Poharich and blah, 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 blah. Well, he was mentioned uh, that the Philadelphia experiment was a, was a hoax. <laughs> he says right there. Right there, it's a hoax. There you go. It was a hoax. Really? Oh, yeah. So, I'm not, yeah. I'm, it's, uh, it's not Philadelphia experiment hoax. That's what he says. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, in, in, in some circles, that's just really well known, and they just kind of, they're like, yeah, that was Carl. Fascinating. Now we've got the mind-to-mind <clears throat> -mind headsets and some lasers. Gonna head to the saloon, do some cool experiments in the saloon tonight because it's freezing cold out here. <laughs> Let's go. We've got a laser going in here in the saloon, but we're gonna try and set it up with a fog machine that's got a warm up here. And then we're gonna do a quantum physics experiment. We're gonna try and double slit the laser in the saloon to see if it has any kind of strange effects in here. So we're trying to reveal the waveform, right? Trying to split, <laughs> split it. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, what you can do is we put it through a, uh, a double slit, so we need a hole or a hair. Can I have one of your hairs? <laughs> okay, we have one hair. Yeah, and you're gonna try and split it. Yeah, let's kick it on again. Yeah, and then turn off that light. Yeah, but if it hits the, it should be showing it, but I don't know if it needs to be like more stable. We should just move it on to the bar top if we can. It's so low. It's like hard to. So we can do it down the entire saloon instead of all cramped up like this. Yeah. So we need to move the smoke machine. Whoa, dude. It's like a laser grid. Point it towards me, Jeff. Yeah, on the just on the ground, so it looks like yeah. Toward, wow, that's so cool. Now we're talking, we've got a whole laser grid going on. Is this your laser, Jeff? This is Duana's. Duana's laser, her grid laser, wow. So we're gonna kick the fog machine on and uh, see what we can see in here. This is so cool. So you can paint that up the wall and everything. You can't duck, you can't duck on. <laughs> oh, this is the fog maker, okay. Okay, gotcha. I don't know how it turns on. If there's some way we can um, either make these settings. Hold it right here. So there should be an interference cutter on, on the uh, far wall. An interference cutter is basically... Can I uh, kind of see that, Jeff? It needs to be stable, like I can't hold it. 
the hair done. itself. Yeah, I think it needs to be like held by something because I just can't hold it firm enough. But yeah, it needs to be really firm. Paper. Tape against the wall. Yeah. Or tape it up. Just need any sort of tape. I can probably. Look at this. <laughs> Adam just pulled up. <laughs> you just did? Yes. You knew he was coming, huh? Yep. Wow. Okay, so we're devising a system over here now to just hold, hold the, the hair, hold the hair in place using a mug, so we can split it's the not laser. Going so well. <laughs> exactly. Another there time. we go. <laughs> I think we'll be able. It depends. You know, this isn't the most it's the best tape in the world. We couldn't yeah. find tape. It's just taped to a mug. Let's be honest. That looks like, I need to just work. get this tight. This is <clears throat> well, the laser only has to hit one little piece of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you want it just to be stable, right? Or here, Perfect. I'll let you try it. Can you just get it? See if it's tight and get it the hair to pull down tight. We want the hair to go through here, yeah, then we'll shoot yeah. the laser through. This is... Yeah. MacGyver. And then we're gonna take that over here and split the laser with the fog machine on the grid over here and see if we get any kind of dimensional anomalies uh, with a laser here in the saloon. Is it too too tall? We need to put the laser up on like a coaster. Yeah. Mount Wilson Ranch, Pioch, Nevada coaster. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Um, yeah, that'll work. Perfect. Okay. okay, so I'm trying to line the laser up on the. Where is it? There we go. Okay, so it's cutting the hair. It's you touching see? the hair. Yes. Right there. So now we should see an interference pattern on the wall. So we'll go look at the wall. Interference pattern means uh, you'll have a... Like it can't decide. A plus and a minus and a plus and a minus. So we should see gaps because the, it's interfering, the wave is interfering with itself. What? Is the laser dying now? No. It just beeped like it's going to turn on. Is that an interference pattern? Look at the edges of it. I can't tell if that's the wood grain. Yeah, let's like clean it up more or not. Thank you, I turn off the... <laughs> I think we want to... We're doing the double slit experiment. Nice. Yeah, man. Of course. Anyone know any buttons? Do they do anything? I have no idea. There's a button on the side. I just want to turn off the uh, that that mapping thing. I just want to have a straight laser, you know. Oh yeah, not a grid. Yeah. I don't think that's the wood grain because it looks exactly the same. You yeah, have. You see a change. Watch as I as I. Totally. Uh, are, oh yeah. There. Now it's. It's like it's uh, decided and now it's undecided. Yep, so that's no interference pattern. It's just going straight through, right? And now we put the hair in the way. Put the hair in the way and it completely fractals out. It's splitting it. So what happens is then it acts like a wave. So anytime light comes up against the surface, you can do it with half a piece of paper as well. If you, move, if you block half of the light, half of the light stream, then it would bend around it just like water bends around in a pool. Whoa, you got the green laser going now. Look, watch the pattern. Boom. Okay, so you're Fucking going. spreads way out on the wall. You're going right on the hair. Okay, we're going to follow it up here. Well, look at that pattern. Whoa, you can see it. Look at that. All the way across. It totally the splits. Now, dude. Jeff, can you get the smoke? So it'll spread out like that, a total wave across everything. Yeah. So explain why what this means to our understanding of reality yeah. and the 
it means we still don't know what the hell's going on. I don't care what anyone says, because it acts like a wave, man. How does it act like a wave? Tell me that. They what? can't explain it. And you say, oh, please explain it. And they make up these very complex mathematical formulas. They talk about Hilbert spaces, and they make up mathematical constructs. It's but all, the simple it's understand, all basically we don't philosophy. understand because philosophy, yeah. It acts as a photon in certain instances, like the photovoltaic effect where you have waves from the sun, you know, that Einstein discovered where they'll hit a, a substance and it will emit a photon, right? Yeah. But normally, if, just like through water, wave, lo, uh, light will act like a wave, just like you see there. It should not split, okay? It's just a, a single hair. Right. And what it's doing is it's causing a double split. Basically, it's like it should decide split. either right or left, but what it does is it goes out like it can't, like it goes into yep. some quantum split and can't decide. Yep. So, so it both goes. Sides are interfering with the other. So what it is, it's like peeking into a multiverse of possibilities because it can't same. tell what's, what, so where it's supposed to go. So it, what it does is it goes like that, a dashed line. Yeah, and off to the sides, right? Why should there's no light going over there? Right? There's no light going over. It's just like, for some reason, it can't decide where the laser is supposed to hit the wall, so it, so it splits up into yeah, like now you're gonna see this. 12 now different you're gonna see spots. This. So now we have the fog machine going. We're gonna see what? Can you get it like the right? You're gonna see the laser, the whole light will, should split into that interference pattern. The whole thing should reveal like a wave? That's what I've understood, yeah. But it's, I think we might have talked it out of, uh, no, it's, it just gets like over here. Are you seeing it, it's, the, it's like a dashed line going are you all the way. the interference pattern on the wall? Get right on the hair. Yep. That's good right there. Uh, yeah, I could see gaps and then it's trying to, yeah, it's doing the dash off to the side. It just looks like it's going through the fog now. Yeah. So you should see it. Th oh, I can see it. I here. can see it. Yeah, can yeah, see yeah. You're splitting now. If you look back through the fog. Yeah, you can see it. See it's like a Morse code. You'll see it look like a, basically a a lines, like many lines. Yes. It should so, look like waves. It almost looks like it, like uh, gaps. Or yeah, waves. Yeah, it looks like waves. You'll see literally waves. That's what I'm saying. It's like you're, it's going in a wave pattern. Like why is that? Why is why does light act like a wave, but then we can we can turn it into a photon in certain instances? Look at that, you see it spreading out? Yeah, it's consciousness. You think? What? We don't know. I don't know. No, I think it's uh, <laughs> our understanding of, of physics is, you know, is incomplete. Yeah, it's gonna hit something. Oh, the laser is gonna... Laser's dying. Laser's dying, yeah. Here we go. Maybe if we turn that light off above the pool table too yeah, real quick. Yeah, try to... Laser's dying. We should see it with this too though, right? Yeah, it shouldn't matter. That main primary laser should... Oh yeah, 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 look at it. Just see the the fog going through it like ripples right now. Is it on the hair? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Walking in the dark. It's right on the hair now. Yeah, it's totally splitting. Is it? Did yeah. You see it? it only this the split is like really really tight. It looks like tree rings. That's why I thought it was like the wood grain on the door, but it's so not. It's super tight. Man. Yes, the fractal looks like uh, curves going away, like arcing away from the laser, like outward tree rings, like inverted tree rings. Yeah, but you should see literally the laser here is split. Like uh, you should see waves when we look at the laser beam that I'm looking at right now. Look at that, I can see waves. Down the laser? Yeah, as we go, just aim your camera down. As you're looking down at the laser, oh, yeah, you yeah, should yeah. see waves, like uh, you'll see 
How do we know that's not the, just the fog passing? Well, through. you'll see the fog, but look at the. You should see many lines, like it's a. Yeah. It's like oh yeah, 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 yeah. Separate, discrete. It lines. looks like uh, fiber optics. Exactly, because it's going to interfere, right? And when it interferes, you're going to get a blank. And when it combines a constructive interference, then you get a bright spot. So you get bright blank, bright blank, because the waves are slightly offset. Does that makes sense. I see that. I see that. It looks like literally like waves going back and forth. Whoa. Look at the lines. See the differential pattern? Yeah. Whoa, it. that is cool. <laughs> yeah, dude, the plus. And I tell you, I mean, they can say what they want about we understand light, blah, 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 but you know, it's deeply integrated with matter. Light is in some manner matter, right? It's energy, our perception of energy everything. Energy is yeah, matter. It's some sort of change over time, you know, in tropic time somehow. <laughs> You know, who knows, man? But I think we're gonna find out, dude. I think we're gonna find out. You're gonna see some rapid breakthroughs coming. So you can see that. Man, that looks so cool with the, with the green, yeah. So see, yeah, it turns into a dashed line and it reveals the, the how it's, it can't decide where the light is supposed to land. And then you can see all of that happening in the beam itself. Look, like, look in my camera here when you get down low see how it, it's the laser is split into like oh, yeah. thousands of lasers Definitely. that's because it cannot decide which side of the hair it's supposed to go on yeah it goes on both it's a it, so it goes on both so basically a photon is going going all these places instead of yes, one it's it's, it's in multiple places at once when it shouldn't be that's cool. yeah the, the photon is landing in multiple possible places instead of where it's supposed to land. That's really weird. Uh, <laughs> Dude, that looks pretty cool though, look at that. Nuka Cola, right? Hell yeah. Radiating this This is like what water life does. It's like what we do, boom, capture the light, you know? Oh yeah, so none of it, around. none of it passes out the back none side. Look at that, dude. It's all completely boom captured within yeah. the containment. Wow. Is like so is that why we have the perception of of uh, like that we even have physical bodies and everything is just separate objects? It's something to do with light. Something to do with light. And something to do with time. Yeah. Because of course it, it comes down to energy equals equals matter, right? Yes. It's E equals MC squared, quantum entanglement. They can't find anything to freaking look at the bottom when they go to look for the bedrock. All they're finding is changes in states and changes in energy. And what seems to be affecting those changes is awareness and looking at it and weird spooky things like consciousness and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's certainly the human experience. Is, uh, certainly it has that to do with it, right? Yes. Look how it bends it like oh, that yeah. with the glass. It actually art like curves it the wrong way. Oh, look at it. Right Wah. There. It has four. Yeah, it comes together. Look at that. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we're in here in the fireplace room next to the saloon. And we're hooking up these mind to mind halos that Brent has for sale on his website. Where uh, these do these come off of my, Michael Persinger's designs? Correct. And uh, yeah, so they're meditation enhancement halos that we put on that sends a current through the hippocampus and the brain yeah. and the brain waves and everything and then we all uh, meditate here so we're gonna hang out. Should we ask y'all a question or hold up something? Uh, I forgot the, the, the Put your hoodie up over your head and then set it on top of the hoodie. Yeah that's what I'm doing. I forgot the little cap to go with it. Okay. So why don't we do the reverse remote viewing thing where we visualize like our exact location and all the details of the ranch and exactly where we're sitting on our place in the state and in the all the way up through the solar system and all the way up so what i did is i created a meditation that uses the vr headset yeah that is a video oh here we're going into a meditation okay yeah. this is awesome we're gonna Let's do see it. what i get here i'm filming another video chris i'm breaking my promises <laughs> bartell do you put a halo on and sit with us you got to do this man
Also, Brent said to set your necklace thing, your halo pulse, so that one and three are up and two and four are down. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready to take the red pill? <laughs> uh, it took a long time. <laughs> is that, which one is that? That's the way you escape the matrix. That's you escape the matrix. Yeah, and then we all learn kung fu and we fight the AI. Right? Or can we befriend the AI? What? Can we just be friends with the AI? We can try. You go first. <laughs> Okay, so, wait, wait, wait. We all had like a vision, kind of. Uh, yeah, I, was, I didn't have one. You didn't have one. Not that I know of. So I Ooh. had a vision of a Native American Indian. I did too. Was, was, did you too? No, I, I, I wasn't like enough because I joined after. Okay, wait. What so what color did he have? Face white, paint on. White face, and he had black hands like this. Yes. Black did black. he? Did he? Have, I mine had uh, the forehead on the top of his head painted red. Oh wow. With like clay. This one, he had like. His face is white and he had two black hand marks like this. I saw the black hand paint too, yeah. And he was pointing like this to three jagged big rocks. Three big rocks. Really? And he was like this. Over here? I don't I have no idea. I haven't seen him, but you might. It was weird. And he kept doing it like here, here, here. Three jagged rocks? Three jagged big rocks. That's so awesome. That's but fascinating. his face was white. And I kept, it kept replaying in my head over, like I'm, it was weird. And then my head started feeling like it was spinning. Spinning. Yeah, with the halo. And I was like, whoa, this is getting, it was getting more and more intense. Like he's more pointing like, hey, right here. Okay, so I was doing the reverse <laughs> remote viewing thing. And then I had like these flashes and visions too. And I saw like a figure standing here. I did a visualization like the gateway thing, but I visualized there's a doorway in my meditation space. And then I go up to the doorway, but then I overlaid my visualization doorway with this doorway mm -hmm. and imagine opening it and inviting in the shaman. That's cool. And then all of a sudden I, I saw him standing there, the bottom half below his eyes painted white, white face, white face. same thing. And he goes like this, hands painted black, top of his head from the eyes up painted red. No and then I see glimpses no, of no. him standing up at the cave, uh, sitting in the middle of the stone circle, all these places around and all over the ranch and all this stuff. And basically, and then back here, standing in the, in the yes. room again, just like, poof, 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 like That's flashes. Right. Yeah. That's what was flashes. Yeah. Wow. Write it down, over again. Yeah. Write it down as accurately as you can when we see it in the next few days. And yeah, and I saw like almost the front half of his head shaved bald and then like a spread of feathers like yeah, off the back of his head. Like I had a headdress on too. A headdress like yeah. a spread feathers yeah. sticking up off the back there of his head. There are white feathers with black tips. I didn't see the color of the feathers. I was just like looking at the face and asked like where do we go, where do we go and trying to see that. And then it was like I was seeing all these places like around. Yeah, I was like, right. behind you. I saw like a like a laser light show, but it was like a flower um, trying to get away. It seemed like something was trying to get away and it was being like pulled back in. Really? It was, yeah, it was like a flower trying to like burst away, but then it was getting just continually pulled back. Like, like a, a sacred like character. a sacred geometry type of yeah. thing? Like and a cartoon character. We got to get you a flower. to hold that better for you because it was kind of cockeyed. Mm. It should, needs to be like Interesting. We're just sitting here riffing off and it's like we both described him like he's maybe mid 30s. He yeah. what we were both surprised that he wasn't that old like he didn't look old at all. He looked in like in good shape, young and strong. He looked healthy. He looked healthy. Very healthy. Strong. Yeah. Yeah. And he and I followed him up his path and he turned and he I saw scenes of him literally hunting up the meadow and all this stuff and then up sitting in the stone circle and then up at the cave and then other places I have no idea where they are just like boom 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 just like glimpses where there's jagged rocks going up great jagged rock like this like one two three at any angle and three 
We need to go up to the cave, Jeff. Walk up that way. Tomorrow. You need to find Let's three jagged rocks. Let's go up tomorrow, I think. Yeah. And we might we might know where that is even. Hmm. Some more details but are coming like, out. So you were saying it was like a star yeah. moving in and out or whatever, like a pattern, but really it was like I mean, describe it now again, what you just said. I mean, said. but I don't know if it's from your own brain, you know? But do, I don't either, but the, we're just trying to collect this. You know that movie, movie like where the, where the, where the it's the freaky movie where the girl comes out of the TV screen. The poltergeist. The one, no, it's uh, the, she's in the well and her, she comes out with the hair over her face. The, the grudge. And she's got the long hair over her face, she crawls out the, well? the TV and she moves The ring. The, the ring, the ring, the ring. The ring, sorry, God, I'm just like yes, playing, yes, and it goes, we're playing charades here. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And I was like, oh, sorry. so that's really what the sense you got? I mean, that, that's the impression I got. Yes. So like something it, trying, it was like something couldn't get out. And it something was like, trying to get out of something them. trying to get out, but it would it would be squeezed back in. It's like the impression I got. What? What about Porter's parents, Rick Earl? No, no, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> What, dude? That's crazy. That like strange things, like <laughs> like something trying to get out of a hole, like out of a tunnel. Or just some, I don't know. Yeah, just or it's my mind messing with me. Yeah, he knows, right? Right. Check it out. We've been getting infrasound data out here, and I woke up, come outside. Brent's already out here. Are you collecting more? Yep. Like getting baseline. So you have to get it when it's clean, right? When nobody's like making a ruckus and walking around and talking, right? Get it when it's clean and uh, at multiple, multiple times during the day to you know, average it all out. All right, so all this time we're up there playing shuffleboard and goofing around. Brent keeps sneaking off and setting up the infrasound, collecting data, and we're finding some interesting stuff. You're getting much. cleaner readings yeah, now? Yeah, getting cleaner readings from yesterday. Uh, still the same peaks that we're seeing. Same, so, like uh, 7, 14, 21 yeah, range actually, right in the Schumann? It, if you average out the time that I've, I've had it out here for about 20 minutes, if you average out the entire 20 minutes, it averages to about 7.46 hertz. Really? Uh, which is you know right there in the, in the correct range. 7.46, but it averages above. So between seven and a half and eight is where you're seeing the most activity. So just walking around here, you're, every, people are basically bathing in a, uh, <laughs> a sound bath of Schumann residents and theta waves that could be yep. conducive to paranormal encounters and enhanced vision, remote viewing, out-of-body travel, all that stuff that the psychics were doing, right? Yeah, yeah and this, uh, this area seems very, very strong. And if we went back down to Vegas, we wouldn't see the, the same intensity. None of it, yeah. yeah. So that's probably why they were here. Yeah. Probably a big reason, because it, it had that energy here. Yeah, I think people just naturally seek it out because it feels good. It seems to be the most relevant. Yeah, they just migrate here naturally, maybe yeah. like we did. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah. Up here, we just got done eating pork roll and pancakes. We're getting ready to do our expedition up to the cave. <laughs> and we're making more discoveries. What's going on? So, we're talking about things buried underneath the Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah. And when I was out there during my time, I found a drill hole that had a cap on it back in 2014 on top of the Mesa. My, my camera had died that day, so I was using my my cell phone to take pictures. So when I found this weird hole, I naturally took my cell phone and took a picture of this hole, it was a drill hole. And according to Jeff, he was saying that the individuals that did this drilled down and hit something hard and metal and that's when he stopped drilling. But when I took a picture with my cell phone, it turned my cell phone color purple. <laughs> And I have pictures of a green. This is the drill hole then, that's the, the, drill you, hole. the photo that you took. Yes, and this is my boots, obviously. So this is me standing above the hole. And it, Why did it turn your phone? Like, it looks like you took it through the Dysonian goggles. Right, but so Eric Bard also had the same anomaly when he first got the skinwalker with his cell phone. In certain areas of the ranch, he took his pic and it turned his screen purple and green. And I have other images on my phone. Let me pull up real fast. I have photos at the Magic Mesa, right, at the Petroglyphs that do that, really? that did that to me. And then a bunch of them that are just blank, like black files on my phone when I try to take the pictures. Yeah, that's weird. So it's kind of interesting that he says that. And I'm like, I found this. So here's the drill hole with my camera because I went back the next day. So that's what it looks like with my camera. As you can tell, there's no purple anomaly. But that's how I, I found it. And there's like a wire there. Oh, what the? There's a what? There's a wire attached. There's a wire and coming weird. out of that. That's like the so, plug? That's the, so that that's the cap. So look, why would there be a wire on the other side of the cap? It's like a core sample. Right? And then they just plugged it off so, so that's, like an animal would, you wouldn't step in it or something. Right. But what were they drilling for? Is that like a that core? drill holes in the mesa too. Right? That's on top of the mesa. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so that fits with like... Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. I have another picture of the 
because it, it warped my phone for a while. Like it turned to purple, green. And That's here it is right here. So here's the other images of it. So uh, this is from my cell phone. This is 2018 Reject. Green. Then it, wait, it went from pink to suddenly it like went, turned to yeah. a green color. And these are the original files I can send these. Right when you're standing over the hole, like yeah. there's a yeah. energy yeah. funneling up out of the hole. Yeah. Boom. With that, like a radiation <laughs> Turning my phone. coming up out. Yeah. And this is where they made it hit the hit the top the of metallic it. object. Yeah. And we have interesting uh, data to go off of something similar, maybe buried under the ranch here, right? what it's sounding like. <laughs> I love it. He always gives us, uh, maybe so, <laughs> to be continued, <laughs> right? Beyond yeah, no, <laughs> Jeff and I are kind of blood <laughs> bloodhounding around some that. interesting, yeah. similar yeah. data here. So, Pretty interesting, huh? Yeah, dude, that totally fits in with what we're going off of here, for sure. funny. This is how we roll. <laughs> We've got uh, Adam's off-road Toyota here at the base of the meadow at Mount Wilson Ranch. We're waiting for call sign Otis to come out. Always waiting on the officers. Always waiting on the officers from the Air Force to Always. get their button gear, right? Anyway, we're going to be heading up the mountain to go up and check out the, what is it, the, the circle and the square and the cave. We're going to check it for infrasound. We got Brent from the Museum of Tarot back in there. We're going to be hauling a bunch of gear and metal detection equipment to see what we find. It's all happening. Right on. Chris always said, hashtag true grit. True grit. How cold do you think it is? It's pretty cold. It's freezing. We're freezing our asses off up here. <laughs> We've been doing the infrasound experiments. I woke up and came out of my room this morning and Brent was out already at this freaking break at dawn yeah. doing scientific experiments in the meadow. And it's been nonstop making connections uh, from Skinwalker Ranch, the Nids era, all the way up to what is really happening, what still remains here at the ranch today. And now we're trying to take the timeline to see if it fits together, clear back into the indigenous culture of the primitive people that dwelt here. Yep. We find all these flakes, these medicine wheels, these ancient artifacts laying around, and we wonder, is that why the primitive people were here too? That same theta wave Schumann resonance signal that enhanced their shamanic abilities and what they were doing with their meditations and rituals as an indigenous people. So we're going to go up and test that now at one of the sites that Jeff has been keeping secret for decades. Do you think the uh, the old NIDS team ever came up here? Uh, for sure not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Pretty sure not. Pretty sure not. <laughs> this is a real deal. Here we go. Oh, Mount Wilson is all the way up there. This is back oh, okay. We're the, just down at the hill. The eastern edge of the property. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And there's a few of these volcanic vents, as they would be. Tubes. Fishes oh, these are the lava the tubes. Are the vents right here? Yeah. Are these are the oh, lava right tubes. Here, right here. Right here. Right. Hey, when we come back down, we'll go, maybe we'll meander if everybody's yes. up for it. Look at these lava vent tubes. So all of us don't have to follow the same path? Yeah, so follow our intuition and spread out. Last time we were here, we found an aircraft part and an old bedpan and all kinds of weird stuff. So First you never know. First man-made park wins the day. Yeah. <laughs> but we want to wind up around this hump. You don't want to go I got up it this right hump. over there. First man-made park. We're going around this hump to the right, kind of, and then up and over, right? Yes. So around go around the saddle to the right, and then up and over, you'll see the rock formation up at the top. Yeah, it makes it more fun because if you're you're prone to find artifacts... We might find something new. Yeah, you know, even with a little bit of snow cover. The adventure continues. That's right. Mm -hmm. I got to get the cool adventure video shots of everybody walking by me through the trees. 17 more miles will be there. 17 more miles, Chris. Seven, Suck seven. it up. <laughs> Suck it up. I'm just kidding. Jeff, you were just saying you talked to your buddy and he said that there's several places up here with pottery still hanging in the trees. Yeah, he's 97 years old now and he surveyed everything up here and he told me specifically there's several trees with pottery still sitting in them. So just like the pottery that has the holes drilled with the string going through it, hanging from the trees. Yep. So as much as we're looking on the ground for artifacts, look in the, in the trees for pots hanging. The one that, uh, oh, what's his name? Clark. Clark said was uh, painted red on the outside so with red. Up too. What's that? Look up in the sky. And look up at the sky for UAPs too, for sure. Yeah. Especially when we get close to the, the circles. 
Oh, I made it all the way up to the first stone circle. And I actually had a dream about the stone circle about a week ago <clears throat> that this line of sight with those rocks stacked up right there actually point to something. I think, sorry, I'm out of breath, that if you line that up like a line of sight and follow it that way, that it could potentially point to something. See how these cracks in the rock right here also seem to point like three rocks pointing like a gun sight. And it follows in a straight line either up that way, up the mountain, towards something up there, or down the hill towards that peak in the distance. Chris Bartell has a bunch of photographs from Skinwalker Ranch that are getting featured at a museum. Uh, where's the museum, Chris? Uh, University of Maryland. University of Maryland. I'll put the link down below. You guys can go check it out. But he's going to be posting a lot of these exclusive photos on his new Patreon and maybe even creating some NFTs and other cool stuff. Yeah. So it'll be awesome. Now we're going to set up here. Brent has his infrasound device, so we're going to set it up near the circle and see if we get the same Schumann residences down in the meadow. Uh, or up at the shaman's house and in the saloon, or if it's actually peaked up here, being at this ancient ritual site where the stone circle is. Is this a clue to what primitive people were doing and what, uh, um, why the NITS team was up here? But I don't think the NITS team would have had any clue that this was here. You eating our snow, Odie? Yeah. Well, don't eat the mushrooms, because apparently Chris said he found some mushrooms growing out here. I wonder if there's... If there's psychedelic mushrooms that grow up here, if that's an indication of what was going on too, right? Yeah, could be. Look at that. Here, here, here. These look there like, is. I don't know, these look like puffball mushrooms, but I'm not sure. The perfect thing to do would be to camp out here one night and take the green laser pointer, the strong laser pointer, and spotlight your alignments. To whatever Try and see, yeah, we could bring the laser up here, you're right. And then we could use it almost like a, like a sight to line up where those stacked stones are with that pointy rock is because I had a dream that I laid down and lined that up and that there was something on the rocks down on the hill down there. It is extremely windy up here. We're doing the best that we can. We just did a tobacco offering here at the Medicine Wheel uh, just so we're not doing anything violating or taking from or whatever. But now we're going to actually conduct a scientific experiment with the infrasound device to see if we get any kind of readings or stronger readings up here at the wheel. This is the moment we're all capturing data now. We're going to try and hold as still as possible. And we're getting the infrasound data. So as soon as we're going to go clear, we got to lock our positions in, right? Okay, here we go. Should we just give it a minute and be really quiet? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, see it's spiking up like crazy all over right there because we're talking. So we're going to walk away. We'll come right back and see what we get. We can't just go off of dreams. We can't just go off of intuition and feelings. We can't just go off of ideas. And we can't just go off of folklore and oral traditions. We have to be able to merge all of that together with actual research and do it open source and then validate it with real science and fact check it all and just keep going. So it's going to be awesome. Let's see what, what we find out. Pointed to seven sevens. It's a, it's a little so different. different than the meadow. A little bit different. We got fourteen. We have the octaves. We have fourteen, but seven isn't. Let me take an average. So the average is well, no, I'm sorry, seven point. Was that four six? 
3.46. Yeah, so right here, the average, yeah. the, what, what it's doing is drawing an average across the time series of data, and you got 7.46 as the average of the max, of the, the, the major, um, most prominent intensity here. So. 7.46. 7.46, which is beyond close enough. So would you say then that that would match? Or, I mean, what's your conclusion there? Or what would you say with, to that data? It's kind of windy too, so you might have to speak loud. Yeah. yeah it's, it's rich up here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're definitely seeing the octaves. We're definitely seeing 14 and 21. The 7 is... There's, there's a lot of activity going on here, but the infrasound for this area is strong. You have 14 and 21, and again, high potent infrasound. Yeah, I mean, all of this is like everything here is basically a brainwave range. Brainwave. Uh, but this energy, specific site does not seem to be exactly Schumann as much as the uh, it's down in the meadow or at the uh, cabin site where the shaman appeared. But we'll do a, another reading here inside the circle. See if we can get that more. Pinched. Also, the thought, what you know, we're always trying to do these meditations and use mind to mind. And even Stanford Research Institute, they were linking each other together. So, what if it's a combination of someone being at each spot and then also down in the meadow and kind of linking together? It's very possible that we are informing what is appearing here. That our, our very, it's just like the double slit experiment, us actually being here is tuning it to something that our, our own brains are in training to the area. Like it's interfacing with our subconscious and that's yeah. filling in the gap it somehow? Seems, it seems to be a possibility, yes. With what's occurring? So, yeah. yeah. And we just did infrasound testing. We've been discussing now, that some of this technology is new to us. And so we're gonna we're doing this all to learn, to share with other people and to find out what it all means, if it's significant. But we are getting these numbers that come in the, the Schumann range. We'll see what's, whoa, dude, what is that? Look at that. Everything's buggy right now. The whole system's kind of crashing. Rotate a little bit out of the glare for me. If you don't mind. It's just the whole thing's glitched. There we go. Yeah, it's, it is a little buggy. What's that? I can't hear you. It is a little buggy. I'm recording data. It's just. Oh, it's still gone. Accessing it is. It's. <laughs> I mean, there's, I mean, yeah, it's, it's twice as strong as it was down in the meadow in very, you know, within a hertz. Wait, twice as strong? Yeah, I mean, within a hertz. It's, it's, it's all right, right in those but Also, how come within the circle, just five feet away, is drastically different yeah. than right over there? Yeah, Why? It's different. Standing in the circle is way different. It's, it's different. Interesting. It's, it's also glitching the computer out of there. So. The whole computer is glitching. I don't even like standing in here, honestly. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe you're glitching too. I don't, <laughs> right? Probably. Probably. We'll, we'll, we'll know by what happens. Uh, if you make it down the mountain. A bit later. Yeah, we'll find out. Okay, so. Okay, so this is, this is we finally have this clear. Whoa, okay. So right Whoa. here we've got seven, seven, that's 7.82. That's as close to the Schumann. Yeah, this whole area. Down in the meadow, we were seeing spikes, but they were. This is a this is a good thirty percent more intense, more dramatic. Thirty percent stronger than the meadow. Seems it, yep. And then fourteen, yeah, right in the same range. And then right around nineteen twenty one, yeah, okay. But you could see the intensity up here. Yeah. And it wasn't like like that over there. So for some reason, just like five feet outside of the circle is a significantly lower signal yeah. strength mm -hmm. than inside the middle. And let me get an average. You had everything I the mean, same. I mean, the, the average. device was in the same yeah. lane like that. Yep. Yeah. The, uh, let me just see. Man, we're fighting the wind and everything up here, so, so that twice, is so cool. So, twice the intensity. Yeah. Twice the saying, intensity for, inside the circle as outside. Yeah, for the shooting frequency. Yeah. The point is getting our own measurements, right? Yes, so getting our own data. We've got something interesting here. We suspect this is a, an old. An old site. Now you have it's, it's evidence that this energy was being uh, used by primitive people a long time ago. Potentially, Na they were just naturally drawn to come to these spots. Yeah. This entire range is, is going to be. I'm um, so glad that the entire range is going to affect your physiology. 
but so we're seeing in here doing rituals yeah. it's gonna you're gonna experience things potentially yeah and, and we're, we're seeing big spikes in the shoe in 7 14 21 again um but the, the most pronounced frequency here is 82 82 completely different yeah and it's yeah 82 is the most pronounced frequency yeah so it's that's the strongest frequency coming through here so that's so inside the circle is like a 30% stronger Schumann resonance than just even five feet outside the stone circle. It's a low ball again. I need to put this on a better visualization software to really get some usable uh, inside. Really get good graphs out of it. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, this software kind of sucks. Yeah. yeah. But it works and it's recording the data accurately. It's yeah. just the, the visualization software is... Uh, Being able to see the data is difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it looks like it's a... Uh, VB script or something. Wow. Yeah, it, it's it's very. I mean, that's a thick band though that shouldn't just be well, like here in nature. Yeah. Know? One thing I'd like to say about the intensity is that when we were measuring down the fields, it was around 80 to like 150. Yeah. The intensity. We're up in the thousands. From 80 to 100, up into the thousands. In the thousands here, so that so it jumps up by an order of magnitude uh, when we're up here. But I'll. Uh, so imagine if you were from Stanford Research Institute like Ingo Swan and you came to a spot like this, instead of having like 60% remote viewing accuracy, you might bump up to 90. Yeah, and it's, it's loud up here. We just can't hear it. It's really loud. It's loud up here. Right. But you might feel it or have effects, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. That's Correct. the whole theory that we're trying to figure out. Yeah. Just that much. That's wild. Five feet. So thank you, thank you. The rock type underneath. Yeah, so what if the square is a different signal? So if this yeah. is, you were saying it's at 80 hertz, is that what it is? Yeah, 80 hertz was like the strongest signal in, the, when, when we averaged out the data over time, 80 hertz came out as the strongest, even though we saw in, at a slice in time, you know, 7. .8. And you were saying 80 hertz is within the range that the, like, they use for crowd control. As, as I understand, I need to go look it up. For non-violent crowd control, yeah, uh, yeah. directional energy weapons. So, and and that's the signal we've got coming out of this right ancient here. medicine wheel. But then, yeah, five feet out of the circle, nothing, none of well, that. How do you know it's a medicine wheel and not a screw you up wheel? <laughs> well, Stay just, out of this wheel and go to the other one. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I thought 80 hertz was fast gamma. Am I incorrect in that? Fast gamma? I don't 80 know. hertz is, is your, if, as far as brain waves, right? So it's, uh, yeah, and it's 12 hertz is like your normal, like uh, alpha, right? So what would 80 hertz do 80 if hertz you were bathed in 80? That's when you're die when you die, supposedly. This is, again, really? you know, not, yes. But okay. when you die and you see the white light, this is, uh, you're going to a fast gamma brain state. At and 80 that's hertz. when at 80 hertz yes so sit in that circle <laughs> so chris do you like what we've been experiencing sit in the circle and meditate for an hour and see if you go to the white light like everyone else i mean i could do and 10 then minutes. don't do it imagine if you're a remote viewer from stanford you're ingo swan and you're hitting numbers like 60 70 percent and then they bring you here what if you could do 98 90 100 percent accuracy right so you're you're sitting in a like basically a portal of 80 hertz that is literally in the line with the same brainwave frequency people experience when they're going through afterlife near death experiences, right? Yes, yes. So you have fast gammas at 80, and that's supposedly when you die. This is again, oh, Alexei told me about this. Yeah. Basically, and the idea is when you're at 80 hertz. And you see the white light, uh, that would be your brain going to, your brain waves essentially going to the next dimension. Right. So in order to make an interdimensional uh, portal or communication device, the idea is if you can raise your, the waves that you can receive, your waves of perception essentially. Match your brain waves and your perception state. to 80 hertz and you will go to the white light and have an out of body near death experience. Sort that's of the interview. idea, that's the hypothesis, right? And then the, they also say uh, that's the DMT frequency. The DMT ayahuasca, realm? Yes, and so supposedly when you people under DMT, when they go on DMT trips and ayahuasca, they go to 80 hertz. So do you find it interesting then, <laughs> Lado, that you have 80 hertz right where you're standing, but then when you step out of the stone circle, five, 10 feet, we're not getting that at all. Yeah. You get it in the middle, but not out. I mean, I, I, 
do, I do, I don't know if it's just obviously, obviously mental, right? You're on a hilltop. Sure. And you step inside and then, but when I stepped in there, I like did feel some. You feel it, man. More content. To <laughs> you feel it, man. Right, it's awesome. I don't want to like, uh, you know, obviously it's mental. You just, you know, is it mental that you believe that this is an ancient site, you know, that you're, you're yeah. Had a vision that the, you know, the chief was in here, or the shaman was here. Yeah. Or you know, believe there was an apparition, so the shaman apparition appeared. You know. Right. But I don't know. When I walked in there, it did feel. I feel. I don't. I don't argue that consciousness is a substrate component to the formula. Well, I think that awareness and intention is a big part of it. Yeah. Let's hook you up to an EEG to see, see if you go to gamma. We could put you and we we could do put a, basically a, a a god helmet on you and sit you in the 80 hertz and you could do it. All right, why not? Here we go. We got a metal detector here. There we go. Okay, we are at the Stone Square now. And first of all, I want to show you guys this over here right when we were walking up found evidence right here of a flake. So this gives an indication of how old the site might be and not just like modern hikers and hunters coming up here. So we're going to get infrasound readings up here and I got the metal detector to walk around and see if we can find anything. How old, have you found stuff around these sites? I, the last time I came up here was only one other occasion and I uh, just carried my phone and a water bottle up. So now I've got a backpack full of equipment, metal detectors, infrasound, uh, all kinds of stuff. Even a thermal imager, EMF detector, all of that. And if this was like a pioneer camp, you'd expect I'd be going ding, 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 hitting, 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 hitting nails and, and metal artifacts and stuff around right off the bat. But all we get is arrowhead poking and stuff. A significant difference in the intensity. Really? Of the activity is up in the, the thousands for intensity, and you're also seeing up in the thousands again. Yeah, well, over there in the at the, the, the stone circle over here, it's in the in the hundred range. It's in the hundred, so way and lower. It's, and it's it's indistinct. There's nothing. There's nothing peaking out here. It's all just kind of the same. Uh, really, it's mean, just a dumb question, but you, does it matter which way it goes, up or down? Not really. No. So here's a stone structure, but I get literally zero metal detector hits. So that would tell me that this isn't a mining camp or pioneer camp because we'd find literally tin cans, scrap metal, screws, horseshoes, all kinds of stuff. This would just be going bing, bing, bing in the ground, even from their coffee cans and stuff. But uh, that's what we find over at all the mine sites like crazy. But up here we have stone circles and no metal detecting, just just flaking. So that would be a clue that this is a lot older. And plus there hasn't been any Native American tribes up here in, I mean, 100 years. So Jeff, yeah. metal detecting around the circle and the square, there's literally no metal artifacts, no iron, nothing at all like we find around the mining camps, which would mean to me that when we find like literally flaking on the ground all over from tool making and primitive people and then we have these stone circles and we're not getting anything on the metal detector. I do not think that this is Spanish and I don't think that it is like a mining or pioneer camp. I think this is a Native American or indigenous square and circle. Unless you came up here and did this, you prankster. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. No, man. that's what I'm saying. This, this actually, that would make all sense in the world. This yeah. is definitely. Yeah. Little... It's fascinating. Yeah. But yeah, so this is this is old. It's not something anybody's been hiking up here doing recently at all. The difference in the chart here versus even the other hilltop. Oh, way different. And it's significantly different than the other sites we tested. The uh, the homestead, the, the the shaman site on yeah. the field. Yeah, it's it's this is what it this is what it normally looks like just out in the atmosphere. At a normal spot. Yeah. And so when we see those really, really thick bands, that's why you're saying, wow, the signal strength is super high. It is, yeah. Yeah, but this is just pretty normal. Yeah, nor it's usually like this. There's not really any pattern to it, but we're seeing a, a hell of a lot more density at the other sides. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So the square and the circle. So here's what's fascinating. When we get to the Magic Mesa site down at the Anasazi Trail, I'm going to take you to a spot above these med a medicine wheel down in the valley. 
and we'll turn around and there's ancient petroglyphs of a circle and a square carved on the rocks for some reason. I don't know why. It what, right? what was always done in the old world in Europe and uh, Egypt and such is there were various areas of procession. Yeah. If you were going to go do a ritual, a shamanic ritual, uh, you would process through different stages where one would pre prepare you for the next right and i wonder if there was a, a similar procession that would go from one to the other to the cave or yeah something almost like a pilgrimage and correct. you had to go from point to point to point and do yeah. certain things correct that makes total sense gradually yeah. uh gradually move the end of that yeah yeah and each one had a different phase of effect to you as you did the thing there correct that makes sense that's what did you just say carl to and then well. like two miles later he just said that that other piece of rock is exactly This looks the just like that rock over by the mines. The rock people? The rock people, yes. Some of them did, yeah. Look at this, and there's there's a can here right on the ground. So it's weird. We start to find more and more weird stuff like this around as we get closer up to the cave. Yeah, that's weird. It is kind of unusual. It looks like a really dense volcanic with like, man, I don't know. I tried to light some on fire, like thinking it might be charcoal of some kind of, but, or lump, lump coal, but it didn't light. <laughs> yeah. Surely lived in the sucker. Any mountain lions around? Yeah. Yeah. I guess she makes some noise, huh, when you're out here? This place is legit. There it is, man. Totally out. It has a natural chimney for the smoke to escape. Look at the ceiling above your head. If you take your glasses off, you've got the charring from, from primitive campfires, right? So see all this black soot comes up to this natural chimney yeah. going up and out. Well, that would make it and you look, you've got a grinding stone on the ground behind you with all the, uh, you've got the, this grinding stone that's found in here with these little offerings and artifacts. That's a grinding stone. What is a grinding stone? They made food. So they would take another round rock or stone and put seeds or grain or whatever kind of food or even bones if they were hungry, like animal bones. And they would crush it up on top of this, like put their, their stuff on there and then grind it with another rock. And then they could make it into soup or eat it and consume it if it was too hard to chew naturally. Whoa. It's not like they had a dentist, you know? Yeah. Had to make baby food sometimes. I mean, yeah, surely you need yeah. people, ancient people, at least spend some time here. And animals, all types. Whoa, did you hear that? No. A hollow sound? Yeah, we should, yeah, we should start experimenting in here. Yeah. It's like, it feels like there's a, a void underneath. Stomp on that back corner there. Just, <laughs> just stomp on the floor, stomp on the floor real hard right there. Yeah, you can feel it. Up behind you a little bit more. Right there. Hear it? Yeah. It's like hollow underneath. Man. Hear that? It's like a drum, right? Yes. Oh, Right? It feels like there's a void, like it's not completely solid underneath. Look at how the the ice drips in here and makes this really cool ice formation. Going up the edge of the rocks right here, it's really cool. 
Mm -hmm. Awesome having everybody up here. Yeah, we'll have to do the infrasound and hang out when everybody clears out up here too, Brett. For sure. We'll just amplify. Yeah. Right now everybody's kind of checking it out, and when it clears out, we'll do some science. Oh, no, that's really crunchy. Well, it's frozen. Something here. It's gone big. I'm not gonna dig in the cave, in this primitive cave, but it's interesting. There's something right here, Jeff. Careful, dig. Look. You got something? Yeah, there's something right here in the corner of the rocks right there. Oh, really? Yeah, one sec. Oh, there's, look this. There's something back here too, right in the corner. Right there, look Jeff. There's definitely something right here in the corner too, bud. And, yeah, and listen. And listen. It's it's a pinging that it's deep though. It's deep here. Use, like, something Nothing over here. Yeah. Check it out. Every single setting on the metal detector here in the back corner. Odie, I'm going to start picking up your noggin. <laughs> you got to watch out. See, look at that. It says like 13 feet down, really deep. There's a signal. Watch. And then so I'll zero it out up here. Change the, the setting. Go over here. Look out, Odie. Wow. Odie, come here. Come on, Odie, look out. <laughs> Do you, she probably knows there's something <laughs> down there. <laughs> what is it? What's okay, we'll go back here, right? Odie, you know what's down there? You got something underground here, Jeff, in the back corner, right here. And then listen when Just I go like, like in, uh, <laughs> and when I come here, listen. Like tonight, I'll wrap up in, uh, some sort of That's my guess. So it's like a whole void down underneath the ground right here. I have not found any other Look at that. <laughs> what did you get more? Hot, a huge signal under right here, dude. Every, it doesn't matter which metal detector setting I put it on to check for any kind of metal. It's oh, picking up everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what is it, Odie? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what is that, Odie? Right there. Wow. Yeah, yeah dude. I think you've got a void underneath with something under there. Really. Even down, even here. It's crazy. He's got a black light, so he's going to look for interesting stuff. Especially, look at this over here. This is a weird... Yeah, I saw that. It's like it's a like... black tar, Jeff noticed. And Oops, Andrea sorry. noticed over here on the wall. But it's not like it's coming from anywhere. It's just like it's oozing out from the the rock almost like something out of stranger things yeah right it's super weird but then i've got this uh pinpointer metal detector that i'm going to see if we can check the depth on the spot over here and see if it's actually more shallow than we think. do you know what this is i mean it just looks like no idea it just might be it might be just moisture that's yeah. frozen you know yeah. but i don't know it's pretty weird Hey, look at the green in there. What the hell? That's green. That's like snot. You oh, see that? It could yeah. be like a type of algae, like a slime mold that grows in the moisture. <laughs> what is that? That's is weird. It? A weird spot for it to be there. Look at that. You it found very alien weird. life. Yeah, right. Watch we all die in like three days. Well, I touched it, so I'll be dead. Okay. Uh, Enjoy your last couple of days. Is, he's using the black light now. Yeah. I'm checking this stuff. So you see that? There's like. We're just checking the bottom of the cave here with this one to see if it's less than a foot deep or not. And we're actually not getting any signal here now. 
which means that whatever's down there is deeper than we think. I think there's, I think the cave goes deeper underneath the dirt here, man. And there's something underneath that corner. It's hollow, I mean, it's unless this hollow. rock is just porous rock that sounds like that, otherwise it's hollow. It's but there's something there yeah. that's setting off every single uh, setting on my metal detector, my big one. That one really digs. I don't know. Bring a shovel. Right? Unless you want to dig. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was, I dug out a little bit out of there. Nothing there either. Did you? No, that's rock. Yeah. What is it? I don't know. He's got the green vein back here too, right over his head. I'm shining the light back here too. Where was that green that he just had? Oh, right there. Yeah, right up here. Interesting. And it sounds hollow right underneath him too there. Find something? Yeah. So there's a little walkway that goes through here. But if you look right here, it looks like a silhouette of a human face. There's an eye oh, socket, weird. bridge of a nose facing out. See that? that? Yeah. And that looks like it's been hand carved out. Where that ro rock is stacked up place. in there. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And if you look, it's facing that way. And there's a big bunch of boulders over there where treasure could be buried. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a treasure Like it's marker. pointing off to that way. It's looking that way. Interesting. Yeah. I kind of want to climb up over there and see right, what's on the ground. Right through here and see right what's there. Oh, good idea. It's the pupil of an eye yeah. look, looking. That's what caught my And attention. then what did you say was over there? That direction is our the mines. That we where have. the abandoned mines are, the where that current mines. is stacked up. There's those three abandoned All mine shafts. We got a hike there tomorrow. Yeah. We could do that. For sure. Okay, are you going over there? <laughs> I'm gonna go. I can't fit this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just teasing you, dude. I'll try <laughs> I'm going. So I'm trying to look on the ground here now. See if there's any other carvings or indications or Something. petroglyphs or anything. But Chris, you're right. That's like, it looks like an eye. Almost. The bridge of the nose, maybe the it almost looks like a face with the eye. This is part of it though. It's not placed here. That's crazy. Like this is part of the mountain. Yeah, so it naturally looks like that. But it totally looks like an eye looking over to where those those mines are over there. We're back in the cave now, uh, up above from the medicine wheels. We've been doing infrasound, uh, Brent back here in the cave. Yeah. So and we've got a, maybe five minutes of data here that I just averaged out. You can see that the main frequency is 7.468 to 8. So it's, this is the strongest area, which is theta. Theta waves again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Which is different. Did you, we didn't get that at the square. No. The square Not at circle. The square, right? <laughs> the square yeah. circle. The square stone. Yeah. Yeah, and you can see that those, those frequencies again popping out. The seven, uh, the seven to fourteen, or yeah. Seven to fourteen and, and twenty-one. This one's around nineteen. So nineteen. Around so pretty much the same. That doesn't look as thick of a band here. It's not. No. We might need to clear out and get a clean signal. I tell you what would be really interesting is to get you over here drumming. Drumming. So boom, 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 boom. Okay. Yeah. That's Anything at eighty? What's that? Anything at eighty hertz? Not even close. Nothing not here. Even close. Interesting. Here we are at Oak Island, and this is crazy. This must be Blackbeard's treasure. Don't think you have a problem. That's old Blackbeard's treasure. Yeah. Now we're getting an overflow error. It might be because we're making too much noise, but it's uh, the the entire uh, trace just like flattened out completely where it normally was trending yeah. downward. It's uh, yeah, it, yeah it's, it's different now. So the the entire uh, trace just like flattened out completely where it normally was trending yeah. downward. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's different now. So. Now it's, yeah, it is trending differently. So we'll, we'll get quiet here and test it again and see what's going on, but this is uh, interesting. I have the mind to mind headset on the Halo meditation headset. Bartel's sitting back over there and he's putting on an EEG uh, brainwave scanner, right? So yep. it's going to read his brainwaves and Brent's going to monitor that. So I'm going to try to do a meditation link up with Chris Martell right here in the primitive cave and see if we have any kind of paranormal experience together. You brought uh, up one of the halos, right? Yeah, same thing that we did down like in the, uh, by the saloon last night. We're, I was gonna put this on, do mind to mind with these guys, do a meditation in the cave while we're doing infrasound, like super quiet and see if we can do like what ancient shaman were doing up here. 
we have any kind of experience. Carl, oh, you, you guys have a history together. You're really yeah. Well yeah. Too. yeah. Try to think about Chris. Chris, try to think about Carl and see if you have a coordinated experience again. So, I wish, I wish I would have had this on Skinwalker. Yeah, see, yeah. Bartel, you had no context for why you were doing similar experiences in Homestead too at Skinwalker Ranch, but at least up here with your friends, yeah, you get to do it on your own terms of your own free will and everything. You know, you know what you're doing. It's like <laughs> this is awesome oh, and, awesome. to come full circle and have it. It's I can't imagine it's got to be a little bit validating and it's a little bit yeah it is a little bit validating also a little strange too but I mean that's a little strange and surreal strange in a good way you know <laughs> strange in a good way yeah so we're gonna hook up Chris to uh, EEG scanner and uh, get his brain waves while we meditate in here so this is an e EEG this is, scanner this is called a uh, motive epoch it's an EEG uh, just portably in it that goes on a little dongle that connects up to the uh, wife uh, to the laptop. And then I've got the uh, an, a brain visualization tool here, and we can ask also uh, record the traces in real time. Cool, and, but you can't do that at the same time, right? As the infrasound. No, right? so no, it's it's uh, yeah, it's either one or the other because of the USB ports. It's probably better to wait for the infrasound until everybody's kind of ready to head back down the mountain, and just like a couple of us linger behind to do that because you have to we, get we, clean. We, Clean data. Yeah, we know there's infrasound in here. Okay. Yeah, just, we are. It's going to amplify the infrasound. Right. right. Okay. Okay. So let's. Uh, there's a yeah. button on the side. Dude, uh, I'm we'll stoked. <laughs> this is so cool. They got a sweet go. fire on there. Let me uh, connect nice. up, and then we'll show you how to make the, the contacts. I think it's going to be fun. Okay. Yeah. This is like Minority Report. You know, when Tom yeah. Cruise puts the when they talk to the. People and they'd use telepathy to predict crimes, pre crimes. Yeah. <laughs> right? Imagine. What are you going to think? Are you going to think about something? Imagine. Uh, I'll probably do my. I'm going to try to remote view myself back at Skinwalker. Interesting. That's, that's where I'm going to go. Try to make a connection between. I'm going to imagine right. myself back in that chair. Back at your meditation <laughs> spot there. Yep. We're going to come. Gonna go no, give yourself back, a high five. I think I'm going to get myself back in the either lawn chair where I was scared or back on the rock where I was free. Yes, sir. So maybe I should go on the rock. Time to heal, oh, Chris. Positive energy there on the rock. Yeah, let's bring it all yeah. full circle and and uh, see what happens. And you, what are you gonna? I'm gonna use the, the god. This is the god helmet, right? I'm so gonna use the god the, helmet, the mind to mind, and I'm literally gonna just go th through an initial cleansing protocol, be really present, and then I'm gonna just like literally try to travel along like a companion on Chris's journey and then I'll see if I can describe what he saw like a if I can hitchhike along. Okay. <laughs> so there was a place on Skinwalker Ranch I used to call Meditation Rock and I would go there as much as I could with the dog to sleep there at night and I would do this uh, routine where I would lay there. It's like a perfect area. It's almost got like an invention for a body to, to lay there. Yeah. And I would lay there and I'd ground myself with the hands and I would stare straight up into the, into the stars, and I would just imagine myself floating and floating and floating, and then eventually I'd be in the stars. Yeah. And then it, it, it got kind of scary sometimes. I felt like sometimes I would go too far, and I would come back. Yeah. But then after these big meditation sessions, my creative, my creative juices enhance or you know, yeah. increase. Like everything in your life sort of aligned and yes. everything. Yes. Did you feel like you had to go through sort of like a trial first? Yes. Yeah, me too, man. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah very too. very harsh trial. Yeah, it's like you have to go through a no, rite of, it's the Buddhist way. Existence. Sort of like a rite of passage or something. Yes. Like. Existence through suffering, suffering through existence. Totally. Yeah. That's weird. And now we're all up here doing this like this techno shaman stuff. Yeah. This tarot scapes. Uh, experimentation. Yeah. yeah. Well, I like that you just do what you want. Your, uh... Dude, play the tarot scapes in here, man. That would be amazing. Yeah, it's a it's an actual uh, working better, way better than CE5 that uh, Brent has developed. So we could do that too. Yeah. Some big words. We might fall through a hole in the in the cave here. Yeah. Yeah. No. I I find like way more potent results like occur when I'm doing meditations and things when see like when I was taught in organized religion and through like prayer it was always you're asking and, or praying or or needing something and I found that that puts you in a state of like begging or like hoping or wanting all the time which right. is sort of a negative experience to where you find yourself nervous and scared and paranoid in a bad 
self-esteem. So the idea of just being like uh, open with like how awesome this experience is, that with our intentions being amazing and all that, like um, you almost don't even have to anticipate what's gonna happen. Uh, it's more like trusting, right. you know what I mean? You think yeah. about the, the, how old is this you think this cave is? I mean, we're talking. The flakes and the stone circles. I mean, I'm and sure the, there's paleo finds around here, so. We have a couple of like points that seem to be almost Clovis, which would be clear back when there was uh, mammoths. There has been a mammoth found in Panaka over by Pioch, which is only like a half hour drive away from here. Wow. Like in the ground. So know? it's possible if you think of pyramids, that all the pyramids around the world. And then the recent argument, right? What was on Joe Rogan? Uh, Randall. Randall Carlson and, yeah. and uh, Graham Hancock. They were both arguing, you know, that, uh, or there are arguments at least that the pyramid could resonate at some frequency. That they're yeah, that's relic that's energy that's systems that's that were that tapping that in. That was tested decades ago. And what did they find? It's, it's, just, it's, it's a Schumann tap point. It's it a Schumann well, tap point. You can actually adjust it. The pyramid has a, it's called a systole and diastole. Uh, the water coursing underneath it with the valves that were underneath the pyramid causes a dual heartbeat. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, the val, the water going underneath the pyramid, just like the water going into the meadow, right? Yeah, under the meadow, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that, and that systole and diastole is, is a 7.8. Right. It's, about, it's 7. It's not, it's not as exact as 7. Right. So what's the how point do... of the pyramid then? Why, well, what would it do? You know? What do you think? Well, just like this in the cave, they would go lay in the king's chamber down there and then they would get the water channel flowing underneath that chamber and the entire pyramid acts like a resonant vibrational, uh, literally tapping into the electromagnetic field, creating the, the Schumann resonance and theta waves so that the Pharaoh could talk to the gods and lead the people. That was literally the, the way they were doing it. And that's the, all the hieroglyphs were about, the esoteric secrets of all of it, right? Yeah, so not to talk over contact, you. Contact, right? That's it what we're making for contact here. with the with the <laughs> gods. I mean, the ultimate goal would be: can we make contact yeah. with some other consciousness? Yeah, exactly. And and also, it's kind of cool that it's sort of like Professor X in Cerebro, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like we're the X Men right now, <laughs> right? <laughs> totally. Okay, I'm gonna put my camera down. We're gonna get let. Uh, Lato's going to film this here while we get in the zone. If you guys want, while you're watching this video at home, you can meditate with us and see uh, what if your results at home match what Chris and I see. So that might be a fun little at-home game you can play along with us here in the cave. That's a good idea. So he's putting on the EEG device that will read. It's basically capturing information and then we have the the god helmet which uses magnetic some sort of magnetic uh, spinning effect electromagnetic toroidal field so it creates like a donut of energy that goes right through the center of my hippocampus and then it basically amplifies the already existing natural theta waves in the cave uh, into the the Schumann resonance, just like they were trying to do in the Great Pyramids. And then we're going to try to channel all the way to Skinwalker Ranch from Mount Wilson. <laughs> like, and you said if people at home could try and remote view, right? If remote viewing is, is, is correct, then, then it's time, time. Linear time, time doesn't, doesn't even matter. matter. The fact that, we're filmed, that we've there. filmed yeah. this in the past is irrelevant. As you're watching this right now, you should be able to remote view at home. Link in with the coordinates of this cage or cave or where we're at, just within your imagination, and, and then see what we say here in a minute. What we see in our visionary quest, if what you experience at home meditating with us is if it matches up or what you see, and let us know in the comments for sure because we want to know. And don't skip ahead and cheat because we're not hoaxing here. <laughs> All right. Yes, yeah. and smash the like button. Yeah, man. <laughs> Oh, is this his brain? Trying whatever that, that is is insane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Chris is lit up in theta like a Christmas tree right now. Uh, I get on the temporal lobes, occipital cortex. Dude, stop thinking. Okay, we're gonna go in. I'm going in already. What is ready? Yeah. Wait. I'm gonna start up. Uh, okay. Go ahead. You guys are welcome to talk. I don't think it'll yeah, affect us here, man. I've already got laser like, focus right now. So. As soon as I closed my eyes last time, I felt like I was going to fall through a hole in the floor. Whoa, it's, you can read his ring.
Okay, here we go, Chris. You ready? Yep, I'm going. Go for it. Going to the rock. I love you guys. Yeah. You guys are my best friends. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm in the Pocatello right now again. My whole entire body's tingling oh. to my core. Oh. Oh. Holy shit. Okay. Oh, shit. Damn. That was intense. That was fucking intense. Cool. Oh, shit, that was intense. What happened? It was like a thousand lightning storms blasting me in the face. And then I saw my father, my son being born, like, and like, like, with, like shocks of life. Like every time the thunderstorm hit, like a lightning bolt hit, it was like a vision of my father, vision of my grandfather, my son being born, my other son being born. 
Um, it was like the most significant parts of my life just exploding in my brain. <laughs> like, like, like memories, like, previous memories. That was, and then I felt like my whole body was like getting, like, like going up, like tingling. It was intense. That was intense. Probably one more book than I bargained for. That was wild. Yeah. <laughs> I swear to God, it was like a thunderstorm was blowing in my brain. And every time a bolt of lightning hit the ground, it was a vision of my past. And it was just intense. For me, everything was like looking through Vaseline. It was like, a, like blurry, but it was like, a, like, um, like a, like my life flashing before my eyes, I, yeah. just, just, just like I was gonna have a seizure. That's what it felt like. But then I, I kept feeling like I, I kept trying like in the out of body stuff. There's a technique where you pretend like you're trying to turn and face the other way and leave your body and go the other way. And every time I did that, it was like, yeah, it was like, <laughs> it was just it was like, like electricity going. <laughs> Through my brain. It, it was like it was like um like flashes of your life like bam 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 like yeah intense. I couldn't even I, I couldn't, couldn't keep tell up. what it was it was like uh, I couldn't keep up I was, it was freaking me out and then my whole body just went Shing. it was literally like somebody was like like hitting me in the face with postcards or like yeah. uh, Polaroids <laughs> like a slideshow <laughs> and I would like whoa and I would try to like go somewhere with it or go anywhere and then it was like I was like pulled down in rubber and it would feel like I was getting shook in a block of jello <laughs> and then it would all be like electricity I don't know I'm just saying it was like emotionally intense for me it was like I was like shaking dude I was like yeah. what is happening I, my, I felt like I was and then the surges of electricity going through my body yeah. you know, I was touching the earth it was, it was intense I uh did you go to skinwalker at all I did Okay, can I'm, I say what I saw? Sure. Okay, I saw, <laughs> I literally had, I was like, oh wait, where am I? Because I had this click out thing where everything went black and all of a sudden, it's like I see the mesa kind of on my left, but I'm sort of on the mesa and then two dogs go boom and run past me. Oh my God, I got chills right now, dude. <laughs> dude I really got what? chills on my... No, you got the same dude. thing. So two dogs go run past me yeah. through this grass, like they're following like a trail, like a little walking path thing. And then there's this, through this, through the window, through the door or whatever, there's like a, this entity, this dark wow. shadow thing, like it from one of the homesteads. And as you're walking, it's this sensation like, this thing is watching me. Like this thing knows I'm here. This thing knows yes. I'm here. And then it was like <laughs> electricity, and then <laughs> postcards in so my face. I started. At, I started. At, I, started <laughs> I, at, I started at Meditation Rock, where I used to be with the dogs, uh, Max and Ruka, the Black Labs. 
and they would lick my hands, and I would, and I would kind of tune in, and I was getting sensations of them licking my hands while I was laying there. And then I, I was like, okay, I'm done here. I'm gonna go to Homestead too. And I ran, I walked down my path down the Mesa, and usually when the dogs hit the main road, they bolt ahead of me to catch rabbits or get ahead of me. And that's and I stopped before I got to Homestead too. I said, I'm not going there. That's what I said. That's, that's not, seriously not like what I saw was like there was a, this dark end of the shadow thing lurking in the in the building, looking through a window or like the crack in the door, like, I know you're there, I know you're there, right. kind of a sensation. And I right after I see these two dogs go and like run ahead of me. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> That's exactly what I had in my mind. Uh, that's what made me think, oh, well, if that was Skinwalker, like, because you were on control would, with the dogs. Or, I, I, yeah. 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 And that's it. I started off that was, with Brock, and I probably went down to, to Homestead 2, and, and I stopped. And in my mind, I said, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. Everything else was, like, getting, like, uh, just tossed in a shaker jar. Yeah, that was you. Dude, I don't know. Right, so what did you guys get at home? Did you get the same? Did you remove view oh, yeah, that yeah, would yeah. be the question, right? <laughs> we'll see if you, if you remove view did. Did anybody get know dogs comments, running man. past them? Yeah, did you get dogs like running past or anything? Entities in the homestead? Yeah. Let Any us know entities. in the comments. Yeah. So where was the gold eagle? Uh, which tree? Right. <laughs> yeah. That was a bald eagle, right? No, golden. Golden eagle. Okay. Those are still big. The Gateway Experience or gate, uh, Gateway Method came from the Monroe Institute, which is um, I don't if you know that. go to CIA.gov and type in Gateway Experience, and, and you'll see what I'm talking about. CIA.gov. Yeah, CIA's <laughs> website. Watch that. that and they website. have it. Yeah. But they, yeah. Anyway, it's the Monroe Institute. They were partnered up with the Stanford Research Institute guys, this NIDS, who was all up here too, and. Uh, so they, it's, it's basically just been like consciousness research, trying to get people into astral projection in various states, but they were also using um, some of the Monroe tapes yeah. privately published for Army INSCOM to do remote viewing, you know, yeah. you know, the remote viewing state. And the thought is that after that point, the Monroe Institute became basically a money line. But the methodology and the technology actually works, it's just whether or not it's been tainted. Let's go over some historical context so everyone understands what we're about to do. Here's our team standing at Mount Wilson Ranch in front of the motel, the same motel where Bob Bigelow took the NIDS team and had his paranormal encounter with the ghost shaman in motel room one. Here you have Hal Putoff, Jacques Vallée, Colm Kelleher, and Bob Bigelow and the rest of the team standing in the same spot. We also have Bob Bigelow, Jacques Vallée, and Hal Putoff standing above the meadow at Mount Wilson doing some kind of research there. Follow Hal Putoff throughout this story. It gets interesting. We've got Hal Putoff, Kit Green, Russell Targ, and Pat Price in the next photo. These guys invented remote viewing and built the psychic spy program at Stanford that was used by the CIA. They were remote viewing everything from Russia to UFOs to Skinwalker Ranch and beyond. Hal Putoff, Phil Corso, George Knapp, and Colonel Alexander. NIDS, Bass, ATIP, Project Chameleon, AKA Skinwalker Ranch, To the Stars Academy, Mount Wilson Ranch, they're all connected. You've got Hal Putoff, Lou Elizondo, and Eric Davis in the next photo. Here's Bigelow, Tom DeLong, Elizondo all together. On September 14, 1993, Bigelow, Linda Moulton Howe, Stephen Greer, Lawrence Rockefeller, and a whole team of notable people were at the Rockefeller Ranch in Wyoming. The current owner of Mount Wilson Ranch, Jeff McBurney, purchased the property directly from Bob Bigelow, and he said that soon after, one of the Rockefellers actually came to the property and said they wanted Jeff to take him to see the portal. The Rockefeller Initiative included some major players. Here he is with an autographed photo with President Ronald Reagan. Reagan was announcing his Star Wars program, which included everything from MK Ultra to the MX Missile Program. Mount Wilson Ranch was a potential location for the MX Missile Site until archaeologists ran into a load of indigenous artifacts and multiple encounters with skinwalkers, the shaman, and even extraterrestrial encounters that began on the ranch. Here's Bigelow in front of the fireplace in the ranch, the same fireplace rumored to be designed by Howard Hughes himself, the same location we are researching today. 
Nids was actively researching at Mount Wilson Ranch. And you can see in the photos in front of the motel, there's Hal Putoff. Keep your eye on him because he is going places with Bob Bigelow and it might surprise you where. Bob Bigelow, Jacques Vallée, and Hal Putoff are going directly to Skinwalker Ranch. Hal Putoff, Eric Davis, Eric Bard, and Brandon Fugel. There they are, standing at Skinwalker Ranch. Eric Davis was one of the original physicists and researchers supposedly conducting research at Skinwalker Ranch. Eric Davis has interesting connections to some highly public figures in the UFO community. Jeremy Corbell, Gary Nolan, and Gary Nolan is the Stanford research scientist who's been going on Fox News and the New York Post claiming that people who come into contact with UFOs and paranormal phenomena can have health effects called interference syndrome. Similar MRI brain scans have been conducted on my friend Chris Bartell while he was working at Skinwalker Ranch. If you're surprised where Hal Putoff is currently working, he is alongside Tom DeLong at To The Stars Academy. Here he is listed on the advisory board right there on their main website. And this brings us back to Mount Wilson Ranch. Here we are back at the hill above the meadow at Mount Wilson Ranch with Bob Bigelow, Jacques Vallée, and Hal Putoff. Hopefully all of this information comes full circle back to Mount Wilson from Skinwalker Ranch and you see the connected pieces. The big part of this that connects is Chris Bartell. Chris has worked at Area 51, the Nevada test site, Nellis Air Force Base, and over six years as a lead security officer at Skinwalker Ranch, where he was asked and tasked several times to conduct psychic experiments, including trying to levitate things and do remote viewing, similar to the research done at the Stanford Research Institute. The way that Chris Bartell was able to keep himself clear and his mental sanity intact was by spending his time with the dogs. Chris Bartell took me to Skinwalker Ranch personally and helped me meet the team, search for petroglyphs, retell stories and recount paranormal experiences that we've had with the team, and even do research and collaborations outside the ranch and beyond. We've been able to explore underground tunnel systems, conducting infrasound tests, and using EMF and radiation sensors in underground aquifer sensors and around Skinwalker Ranch, looking for the source of energy that might act as a portal to another dimension or a gateway that unlocks human consciousness. Chris Bartell and I are together now in the cave recreating these similar meditations and remote viewing experiments based on all of these historical connections and hopefully all of this makes sense now. Discrepancies even in the sound wave files that the Gateway Experience original tapes had and the current ones and then Brent has worked with uh, sound engineers and we've actually or he's actually crafted uh, a new version that's actually clean to use. Um, anyway, yeah. but the idea is it's a protocol, meditation protocol, a visualization system that combines ancient Buddhism with what they were trying to do, like making contact. You know? Is that recorded? Can that device actually tell if you're doing the protocol or not? Well, it can't tell exactly what you're doing. It can tell if you're in the brain state that you're, you're trying to get to. Um, so basically, the, oh. the, the state that we try to get to with like the, my product, the Terrascapes, the, the basic methodology is body asleep, mind awake. So that point where you're in the hypnagogic state, where you're just going to sleep, your body is turned off, and your mind is completely awake and lucid. That's where we want to get to. And that's we can measure that actually with EEG. So you can, and you call that the theta brain state? Yeah, it would be theta. So the the active working state that you need to be into to go out and get information and bring it back and be accurate with it. It's called the mental access window, which is about 7.8 hertz. It's a Schumann frequency. We believe that the, the resonant cavity frequency of the Earth is the actual carrier, is the actual Signal. conduit that you need to be tapped into to get information that's not mobile. In your head, like when you wake up, you're like, oh, i got to get to work, and you have this whole dialogue and thoughts going on. But... Uh, Terrellscapes and everything that we've been working on the last couple of years is like a system where you clear all that out, clear your thoughts out, don't have all that mental chatter, but then you're also enhancing the experience by putting yourself in the perfect theta brainwave state for making contact, you know, with other dimensions or opening up to clairvoyant possibilities or telepathy or all kinds of things. But then I we guide that with certain visualization steps, like where I imagine. Uh, 
going up through a room, opening a door, and going into a, a waiting room where I invite things in. You know, it's all like trying to use your subconscious to talk to something, you know, on the other side. And the mind of mind system enhances that entire effect of what you get back. What are you reading now? This is the infrasound. So we were measuring the, uh, Chris's uh, EEGs. This device was completely charged up before we came up the hill. And it died as soon as I put it on Chris about two minutes ago. It just died. It. So it's it fast died. charging, right? So but it's, it's a small it's battery, so yeah. it may charge quite quickly, right? Yeah, fast charging right now. Uh, so I turned that I turned it off, turned the dongle out, and I put the infrasound sensor in because I've got a, a theory, a hypothesis, that our consciousness informs these areas. If there's a field in this area because it's tapped into the Schumann frequency, the reason people see the ghost shaman, the reason people see things in these you know, special areas, is because the consciousness of people that were there before overlaid on top of them like a hard drive. Mm. And I thought that could possibly influence the infrasound, could possibly influence this frequency. And we're seeing exactly that with this trace, where 7.4 to 8 is much thicker and much more active during the state. And Carl and Chris were in their working state. You see more activity. And right when I would feel like I would think of Chris really solid, I'd hear him go, oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah. It'll be, I think it'd be cool, man, it, yeah. to do the remote viewing, uh, you know, yeah. but at the end, like, while they're watching. With everybody Because I was just, because I was also day. doing it, like, yeah. I was, like, you know, also trying to meditate, just holding it there and also meditating. I think it'd be yeah. cool to see what they... It would be interesting if everybody saw it similar. You know, and don't fake it either, just be honest. You know, there's nothing to do. All right, here we go. Super cool right there. <laughs> it's going in my ear over here on the side. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we're doing EEG readings. I'm going to do a meditation here in the cave. Uh, what do you think? Should I should I just do um, a tarotscapes meditation and try to do a contact protocol? If you like to, yeah. I'm just going to okay, that we'll do that. That'll be cool. We'll see if anything make con makes contact. And what's cool is we're going to be doing it um, on the EEG machine and uh, Lato's going to be filming it. So we'll see what the results are of my brain waves. So what is this going to capture? Yeah, this just captures, you'll see it's a brain, but a whole visual of your brain. A whole so visual of my brain. Give me the, the drop circuit. I'll be right I'll be right I'm going to make you wait here in a second. Just hold it It's all right. The price we pay for science. I know. <laughs> so, like, look. He's pouring he, cold water dude, down my you back are like now. Professor X, dude. There it is. Because I am like Professor it X. It wouldn't I work as well on me because totally like, like Cerebro. I have too much in the way. I'd have to shave my head, I guess, to get like right. full on. So he's like uh, Beast or Magneto. Basically. Like he's the, the genius. Holy, like, beast. holy <laughs> bro. Okay, this is Carl's Theta. What, dude? No right way. Now. Okay, you guys no ready? Way, Carl, this is not normal theta activity for you, brother. <laughs> Please get that really good on camera for me. Okay, you guys ready? I'm going to go Dude, in. it's like a super All brain. Right. Carl, you, you here we like go. You got, should I go, go down Alice in Wonderland? Let me, let me turn down the intensity of this. Go movie. say hi to the cosmics, determine if there's any alien life around, and bring back some secrets of the universe related to sound, light, and frequency. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Can I put my hoodie up over top of it? You certainly can. I'm turning down the, the gain on all this. There's one rock coming right on my tail. Okay. I'm going to turn down everything except the. Uh, I'm going to see what his pure theta is. That's Carl's pure theta activity right now.
Thanks for your attention. Tell you what we have to do with. No. <laughs> That's the hippocampus. It's right here, but this is the right hemisphere. That's where we see all the remote viewing activity. Right there. I see. Yeah. Right there. Ghost would lighten up right now there. Yeah, it's on the right side. That's right. That's the psychic ability. Receiving. Yeah, it's perceptive. That's that's the areas that are uh, receiving. Visual cortex, etc. Receiving the visuals. Communication. It's just seeing communication between neurons. There it is. And that's that psychic ability. That's something. That's he's getting something in. That's what the mind the mind that hits it does is it opens that up. That's why it spins in the direction it does. The mind element does that to, yeah. to open up that area. state because he's getting more pinks and purples. He's coming back to an alpha. Oh. There he is. Let's get a look. 
pinks and purples right now. It's yeah. because he's coming back to a normal, uh, normal functioning state. Okay. Oh, what happened, man? What's that? Let him give him a minute. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I have to record it. It was awesome, man. Dude, we're like, you don't, you don't remember hearing us. I don't talk. remember hearing you guys. Dude, talk. we're out here, and I'm like, and Brent's like, hey, man, he's seen some crazy shit over, and he was whispering. Like, that. I have a, I have an awareness, like this. There's like a background, yeah. a bedrock awareness that I'm still sitting, sitting in the cave. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't remember raising your arms. No, I know. When here, I, was, I know. I raised my arms in the vision. Was I doing it in the cave? Here, yeah, you did it here. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Okay. And then you put your arms down. Because Brent comes over and he's like, hey. And he points me over here and we have it on film, you know? And he's yeah. like, he's seeing some he's seeing some crazy stuff now. Oh, right yeah. now. Your, your right hippocampus is lit up with uh, So you were in a state you were getting something in. And then your left visual system started lighting up like you were seeing a visual. And you were seeing something. Oh, like, yeah. There you go. What'd you and see, then the rest man? Of you would just light up. So, and then, like, hearing something. Did you get the answer to the universe? Like, well, like last night. And that stuff? No, I, I did a gift exchange. Oh, cool. That's I a did a gift exchange. Like a Christmas style? Um, pretty much. Yeah. I offered tobacco, and he basically gave me a point, like a spear point, like a thing. He? Yeah, the shaman. So, you yeah. saw the shaman again? Yes, sir. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. The whole thing started. It was like I was uh, just went clear, did the the whole protocol thing, you know, where I, anyway, long story, but I, so I go through my whole cleansing thing, then I open up, and then all of a sudden I do the click out where it's like a blank spot, and then it's like I'm that eagle flying over Mount Wilson Ranch. So I'm like, and I'm like flying up the meadow and around. So I'm just like, soaring like out of body you know like awesome. lucid dream flying <laughs> flying over the canyon and up the meadow and then uh it's like i'm back in my meditation protocol i'm counting like up to 12 you know brent knows what i'm talking about anyway and then i go up to 12 i'm like this is the, the protocol you were talking yeah. about to, to reach a meditative state yeah to get clear and make contact and all that stuff okay yeah, get into that right ideal state of mind with the Anyway, and then, so yeah, so I'm flying, and then all of a sudden I, so I'm back, I count up, I go to my doorway, overlay the doorway to the cave, I have a blip back to this <laughs> repeated past life encounter thing that I've had a couple of times, it's like this Atlantean figure. <laughs> I don't what? Know. We will get into that. Yeah. Wait, what are you talking about, dude? <laughs> yeah. what? No, no, no. This is the no, contact, no, no, no. bro. Don't Ultra terrestrial. Go, That's okay. No, there's What's a guy. the Atlantean? Uh, it's a thing. it's a figure from another timeline, named Ka El, who was like me from another life. Or we have interactions sometimes, like I am first person as him, and other times he's doing all these other things. But he's going into meditation chambers underneath pyramids and meditating to create energy that's supposed to balance out nature and help humanity and all this stuff and that was his job but i would sit face to face with this guy in meditation through like this veil and we would sit with our legs like in meditation style across from each other facing each other and we would telepathically share our meditation secrets and what we did for our life and even things like what I would do in my day-to-day -day life and what he did in his day-to-day -day life. It was like we were friends across space-time kind of a thing. And you saw him this time? I saw, I, yeah. So when I set up the door, I overlaid it with the front of the cave, went in the room and invited someone to come in. He's who came, that's who came first. Yeah. Was that dude. Cool. Uh, L. Yeah, so he's <laughs> the first. And it was like, ha-ha, like this cool moment, you know, like I didn't expect him. Yeah. Right? And all of a sudden, I'm sitting literally like knee to knee with the shaman that we saw last night. Right. Face painted white. That dude, the same face paint. Face painted white. Wait, what What so color? Did he, he have face white, paint on? White face and he had black hands like this. Yes. Black did black. he? Did he have, I, mine had uh, the forehead on the top of his head painted red. Oh, wow. With like clay. This one, he had like... His face is white, and he had two black hand marks like this. I saw the black hand paint too. Yeah. And he was pointing like this to three jagged big rocks, three big rocks. That's but fascinating. His face was white. And I kept, it kept replaying in my head over. Like I'm, 
It was weird. There's a doorway in my meditation space. And then I go up to the doorway, but then I overlaid my visualization doorway with this doorway mm -hmm. and imagine opening it and inviting in the shaman. That's cool. And then all of a sudden I, I saw him standing there, the bottom half below his eyes painted white, white face, white face. same thing. And he goes like this, hands painted black, top of his head from the eyes up painted red. No and then I see glimpses of him standing up at the cave, uh, sitting in the middle of the stone circle, all these places around in the all over the ranch and all this stuff. And basically, and then back here, standing in the, in the yes. room again, just like, poof, 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 like flashes. Red on the top, feathers on the back, hands painted black up to the half of the forearms like that and he's sitting straight face to face same thing telepathically and it's just like hey who are you who are you just like two guys like normal guys <laughs> you were just like, like who are you hey, yeah like, telepathically like hey man how you doing like like i found your cave <laughs> he's like hey you found my cave kind of a thing like that whole yeah. thing all communicating and stuff and basically um uh i he asked me like what are you doing here kind of a thing and I said, we're here because your magic is real. That's what I was telling him. I was like, we're here to prove that your magic is real or discover that, you know? And then he like made me see what we were all doing. And then I was wearing this on my head and he goes, you're doing magic too. And we were like, ha ha ha. And we started <laughs> laughing at each other, right? So then I visualized. I do remember you like laughing. Like I remember <laughs> seeing you in there, right? In the cave, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what is he? What is he laughing about? Yeah, dude? It was I was like, like a funny thing. Like we had yeah. this joke where he was like, "How funny!" Like I, he was like, "What is all this?" You know? And I was like, "They're scanning my like my brain and everything." It was like this whole interaction. Like he was, and then this was really cool. I'm gonna try not to cry, but um, then it was like I put my right hand on his right shoulder like a masonic thing and he put his hand on my shoulder like this and we put our foreheads together and uh <laughs> shit <laughs> <laughs> and then i gave him tobacco with my left hand and then next to my hand he offered a like an arrowhead like a point or whatever like a hunting tool and then he put it in my hand and i put it in his hand and it was like we had this fellowship thing and it was like, I don't know, that was like, that was the whole deal. That's yeah. so cool. And then it was like, it was like, thank you, all this cool stuff. And then back in the cave. Yeah. Whoa. That was it. That was the whole thing. Yeah. You'd laugh and then it would be like, oh, she's seeing something funny. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's that's the difference between neocortex and like, you said the right hemisphere. What's that? But then you said the neocortex. Is yeah. the neocortex no, I, no. in the right hemisphere? No, no I didn't I say neocortex. Uh, in one time, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not. There was one time, yeah. I just didn't know the parts of the, I don't know the parts of no, the brain. No, no, just the, the right, the right hemisphere, the right hippocampus, um, that's what we have always found is, um, that's, what's, yes. that's what gets stimulated when you're uh, having a psychic experience or remote viewing. That's, and that's, that's what was lighting that. up on me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We oh, yeah. That. He's like, he's seeing something. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I look over and you're like, oh, and then you're like, I was wiggling around and stuff. Yeah, man. We got it in. For a while, we had it to where you could see the, uh, you can see it, because like we got the video of your brain and you, so you can see like your brain activity in your face. So, yeah, yeah, we'll be able to see it, I think. Yeah. The right side, Brent's like, hey, he's seeing some crazy stuff right now, and then, yeah, I look over and he's like snickering, or it's like, arms I have my arms in the air, air. I have no idea I was doing that. I was seriously like, I was flying over the, the valley and all this stuff, and sitting face to face across from the shaman or whatever and the half the time it's just like poof, 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 right in my face but yeah brent was recording it the whole time um pretty wild i'm still just trying to warm up and come back out of it but what what a cool place we're gonna hike back down the mountain now uh get warmed up after we do a, a clean uh infrasound test actually i think we got it all right yeah. we got everything we need Okay, cool. We're gonna head back down and get warmed up and have some dinner. Yeah, like it's your your old past self. And did he look like you? Did he have like a no. a beard? No. No. What did he look like? No, he just looked like. A, Was he Indian looking? Yeah, a little bit. Not like stereotypical. Just like a. It was hard because he had face painted white and red. And His like face is painted, yeah. Feathers and stuff, and it's little like dream like a dream you know so i'm really trying to focus but there's a lot coming in it's like a whole thing 
So. so you don't think you didn't feel like it was your past life no. and you were like some comanche that's hard for me because i have like i'm kind of like i in philosophy and stuff i'm sort of a non-dualist so it's a little bit paradoxical where it sort of is and isn't yeah like, like who exactly are the other people in a dream if they're not really you but they are maybe other entities and so huh. can, can be both we just have to make our way down but anyways. we are coming down it's so beautiful Valley. Look at that view. Amazing. Amazing view. So beautiful. So we found these uh, lava tubes. Can you explain what these are, Carl? Yeah, they're just volcanic vents, tubes that come up out of the earth. They don't look like a lot. They also could be like test mines from early pioneers up here today got one right here, another one over here, and the ground all over is covered with this like baby powder like ash. Yeah, it was like, it felt like moon ash or like something as you're ash. walking yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. Walking it's up interesting. Uh, but all that ash could have come out of these holes that over a long time, maybe hundreds of years, since people have gone down in them maybe, they just like collapsed in and filled in, but the potential to be able to dig them up or see if they go anywhere or lead somewhere. It's pretty high because there's one there, one here, and I think there's like three more as we go down and they all basically lead from the cave, the circles, all the way down. This kind of stuff fits with like what I was seeing with the mind to mind last night with him being in the tunnel system to get out of the rain and stuff anyways. It looked like it went down to a lava, lava tube. Like, like a lava tube, tube, yeah, like this or something, yeah. potentially. What does the set do? The set is the wood structure that you set up, like a frame, basically, to stabilize the entrance of a tunnel or a mine or a cave, you know? And it seems like there's a lot of evidence of digging because there's rock like this laying all around that looks like it was dug, hauled up, and chucked out from inside. This is archaic. This, this is isn't, archaic, yes. Yeah, this isn't, yeah. Huh. Right? This is super old. There's no axe marks and on this. Over the mountain clear over there, there's uh, like five more of these. Yeah. Huh. One of them looks almost just like this, only the wood cribbing or the set is still almost standing up like gotcha. an apron. Yeah, I saw the video. Huh. Yeah. So you think the whole mountain could have these like tubes running through it? It could totally have tunnels going underground that lead somewhere. Huh. Maybe into a chamber. I don't know. You got it. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> what was that? It's breakfast oh. time up at Mount Wilson. Uh, could it be gunshots? There was gunshots this morning. We heard no. prob probably Adam. There was a sonic boom right above the ranch. I saw the cloud. Just now? Because I was out there sitting and I heard a lot of them. Maybe it was hunters. I, I was looking up earlier and there's some that look like a, a puff with like a streak behind it, like a jet oh, yeah. flew and that, broke that, the that sound barrier you, right over here. Yeah. yeah. Today the plan is we're loading up. We were gonna to go to Area 51 and do a bunch of CE5 like investigations there, but we've been reading, right, Chris, that yeah. the, the FBI just busted some guy and they've been raiding his houses in Reno and around and stuff. So we're gonna go by the little alien, check some stuff out and go to the black mailbox and then probably just sneak back to my house and go do Magic Mesa and other stuff rather than push our luck, right? Even though Chris knows all the guys out there. Right? Yeah, make a few phone calls. <laughs> make a few phone calls, yeah. We could try, we could try. try, we could try, but I don't want to get in trouble. It seems like around. seems like a hot topic right now. These so guys we're, are trained professionals, they mess with right. them. We are here on our final day at Mount Wilson Ranch and we're in the infamous shaman room on the bed where Bigelow was sleeping and claims that the shaman woke him up standing next to his bed at night. So we're gonna do infrasound tests with Brent Stone of Museum of Tarot and Tarotscapes. And we're using the Infiltech. This is the make and model infrasound monitor that we're gonna be using to see if there's theta waves and Schumann resonance at a amplified level here specifically in this room.
feel a lot of pressure on my temples. It feels like you're in a barometric tank, huh? Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, yeah. When I sleep in this room, I feel like I'm falling through the bottom of the bed and then waking up like, like I'm going to fall out of the back of the chair. So, yeah. It's interesting. Come look, Dwana. This is the room Dwana's sleeping in right now. <laughs> Same 7.4, but very loud. Very loud. A lot of activity between six and a half and nine. And yeah, um, you got some, you know, five hertz. I believe this looks like 7.1, and you got your 15, your 21, your octaves as well. The same three for the Schumann, huh? It doesn't yeah. look as strong though, like as mm -hmm. amplified. No, it's it's actually very loud here at around five. About five. What if we try this? So Duana wants to do a meditation. Let's do one more quiet reading and she'll sit on the bed and we'll, and she says she wants to try and call him in and see what happens. I'd be very Did you see Carol's? Um... Her video. Your video of us. She just got another stick figure of us okay. while we were just taking pictures in the saloon. Did you? It's so like the same? this whole place is weird. <laughs> you got the same that I saw? The same thing, yeah. yeah. On the top yeah. of the bar there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's go quiet. I'm, I'm gonna go sit. Cody, you wanna sit? Um just let this happen. I'll sit in the corner. Actually yeah, I'm gonna go, stand go here on. so I can get the no, data go on go camera. Or we're good. Yeah. Mark where we're starting. Yeah, you bet. Okay, so our consciousness, my, my, my thought is that our consciousness is affecting us. It affects, affects the, affects us, wow. informs it. Right. So, so, it. so we're projecting, this. it's picking up our consciousness maybe in the theta waves look, as we're doing look this. Look at the activity and look at the peak. It starts here, right here, I'm sorry. Okay. And all the way up. So the amplitude is massive for 7.47. Yeah. One at 10.1, so 10 hertz, which 14.4. And 20, 22 and 23. So right in the Schumann yep. range for, so that's the uh, the wavelength yeah. for uh, psychoactive and yeah. psychic abilities it's, and telepathy and remote viewing and <laughs> These, uh, all of those things. Same. The activity, is, it's extremely intense here at the the, the median is a center of mean, 7.46 right here. Ton of ton of activity right um, in the psychoactive yeah. range. And if yeah. I show you other uh, snippets, when, I noticed the same thing when you were meditating in the, uh, the cave yesterday. A lot more activity within this range. It's like it focused it in, tuned it in, oh. and amplified. And it's it. actually detecting my brain waves. It like is somehow through the infrasound. So it's so it's, this would mean that our thoughts actually affect are, are non-local and affect reality around us, even though we don't see it. Nail on the head. So when we think things in the infrasound level, we're really actually projecting something, some sort of a Schumann resonance outside of ourselves that interfaces with yeah. our environment. The point of the Schumann, of being inter intertwined with the Schumann, with your consciousness, hitting that mental access window is that you get in resonance with the Earth's consciousness itself. And, and then you're tapping into information yep. from the beyond. Correct, and, you, and you're probably amplifying it locally. And uh, yeah, it's, I noticed this even in traces from the, the wheel and from the field. Totally different, looks totally different than what we did here and what you did in the cave. There's a lot more, like I said, it's like it's more focused more on. Well, see, now we need to go hours away to the Magic Mesa and do the medicine wheel there and see if it's the same thing. And we real, then we'll start to make the connection of maybe what these indigenous people were up to. Now we are getting a reading of the infrasound in the back of the truck, but we're at the site of one of the um, sightings of the shaman. Chris Bartell is up there on the ridge. Down there is where the windmill is. And look at this. We have a suspicious Penske moving moving vehicle that just followed us up to the ranch, turned around, and was coming back. So maybe we just got uh, zapped with infrasound directed energy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that is weird. They just drove clear up that road and back when they 
sauce. But anyway, we won't jump to conclusions. We're gonna get an infrasound test here away from the ranch a little bit to see if we can get a, the same reading or if the Theta Wave Schumann resonance is just up at the meadow in that area. So we're trying to get a sample out here. An insignificant amount of Theta. So not nearly as much Theta? No. No? No, it's all, it's 1 into 25 hertz range here. A little bit here in the uh, 18, so 18 to 25, we'll see. But not, not, so we're not, not getting not the same 7, 14, 21 like no. we were having down actually at the ranch itself. Yeah. But I mean, so out here away here. from the ranch is totally different. Yeah, you can see a big spike here, and you can see a big spike here. It's just not there. It's certainly nothing like what we saw up at the, uh, the cabin, the, the, shaman, at the shaman cabin. Right. Yeah. So do you think the first sighting where the archaeologist was up at the cabin above the upper pond there is the strongest, most amplified we've seen it so far? Probably the strongest, most amplified we've seen outside of the cave. Yep, definitely. Oh, the cave was the strongest. Yeah, yeah. Well, gotcha. they're, they're comparable, uh, but that was anomalous for being out in the open environment. What about the circles, would you say, now after seeing everything? The, the circles actually were a bit different. They were they were tuned more towards, like I said, 80 hertz was the, the predominant. Like near death experience type yeah, yeah. phenomenon, like that. Yeah, the eighty. Um, it's okay. it's pre it, it's present in the entire ranch area that we went to, but uh, definitely the shaman cabin when we were standing outside was the most uh, the most theta activity. Really, yeah. awesome. Okay, next stop, Rachel, Nevada, and then Magic Mesa and elsewhere. We have a lot still to do and uh, a lot of road to travel. So let's go. Let's do it. Here we are. This is the gift shop near Area 51. I got this giant metal ET out here. Check it out. Chris Bartell's running around in here like a kid in a candy store. It's hilarious. <laughs> Hi. That's so funny. They have all this gift shop stuff here. It looks like a spaceship back here. So we should get a photo by the sign. That would be sick. Okay. Right? Is this the original? This is the original one. They took it down and it put is. it in here. Yeah. It's freaking cool being here with you guys. <laughs> right? Isn't it fun? Yeah, it's fun. It's like a big kids' field trip. <laughs> here we are on. Groom Lake Road, UAP Society, Chris Lado. We're here, dude. I've seen weird stuff. I know they do flare testing and everything, but I've uh, seen stealth craft fly overhead here and all sorts of stuff. But we're gonna try the Dysinon goggles and look for cloaks, things in the sky and see if we can and see them. It's kind of cool with Chris back here too, because whether or not he wants to say how much he wants to talk about, he's done a lot of work out and around in these parts. Home, home sweet home. Home sweet home. Yeah. <laughs> right? You know some of your buddies are probably right over the, the hill looking at us, huh? Yeah. I don't want to mess with them because it's probably about lunchtime for them. So <laughs> yeah. Mess around with them. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, dude. This is amazing. Oh, I love it. I have the... Uh, the lens right now over the, it was like the, literally the best camera right now so i can see just hard. like the dyson and goggles we had nothing and our weapons it was the best time in my life. wow we're at uh yeah grim lake road this is where bob lazar films all the intro stuff he says this is where you come here and up at the black mailbox where you're supposed to park to see ufos flying around so pretty cool is it weird for you coming back? It's pretty cool. Yeah. I was telling uh, Chris down that road over there. Um, you can't really see from here, but back in 1999, I was on a crash site with two F-15s that collided in midair, and we stayed out there for a week and a half camping out in that desert area, and uh, it was probably one of the best time times of my Air Force career because it was like me and my partner, my buddy, and some other airmen out there just camping and securing a site. It was pretty. 
pretty cool being back out here. And you've told me that like during that, there are some interesting things that occurred. There are some interesting things that occurred. Yes, indeed. And you can't share those for I everybody. Share those. No, <laughs> yeah. no, I cannot. But yeah, but that's part of why you're on this quest to find answers for yourself. Right. Huh? right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. This is the place to go, except for, you know, this is not the places linger very long because no. the FBI has been taking stuff very seriously around here lately. So we're going to head on and get some hamburgers at the little yeah. alien. <laughs> Where does this black mailbox go, man? It's actually yeah, private right owned for the farmers that live here oh. uh, up on the ranch, but everybody associated it thinking. Oh, it's where the mail comes to Area 51. And so it's like the thing to do. But really what it is, is like, it's the best spot to park and actually look and see all the weird stuff flying around in the sky. All you have to do is look over the mountains here and to the south. Probably come back here and sit for a minute, see if we see anything in the sky and then drive back to my place. Because we're going to go to Magic Mesa, a couple of other interesting petroglyph spots. But look how beautiful it is here, right? I'll get my face out of the way so you can see. <laughs> well, does it fulfill all your hopes and dreams of coming and seeing Area 51? It does. Does it? Yeah? <laughs> yes. Is it amazing? It's beautiful. It's certainly quiet. It's so quiet, right? It's, it's quiet. It is weird to sit here at night when you actually do start seeing stuff in the sky. You're like, oh, okay, that's weird. It's oh, yeah. so big, you know, it's so big because I've been living in Europe and you don't see this sort of scale. Yeah. It's just giant, you know, so you can imagine even if there's nothing back there, it's this giant area, you know, which yeah. surely there's something back there. How far we've had to drive since the last gas station <laughs> yeah. to like actually even get close to this <laughs> well, I mean, endless, this crazy, there's nothing, else. there's nothing here. And then it's just this long dirt road up over the mountains and then a long dirt road before you finally get there. It's like beautiful too, just beautiful country. It's so nice. It's amazing. Yeah. We made it. We are at the little alien inn. <laughs> it's so cool being here with Bartel and everybody, all the guys. So we're gonna go in and get some food, some French fries, have a good time. I might sit here and try to do some UFO walking for a little bit uh, back at the black mailbox. Then we're gonna head back to my house. But it's it's cool when you're here in person, it's like way different than when you than what you think when you're watching it on camera, you know, like actually going in and being here. It's fun. I'm actually really hungry. I'm excited to go in and yeah, get a hamburger, yeah. dude. I really am. Wait till you see it in here. I'm just gonna keep filming. Go. <laughs> you usually they tell me not to film in here, but here we go, guys. So look at all the people who've been here. Like, let's see. Big bottles are in there. Uh, Look, it's George Knapp himself. It's George Knapp. Look at that. Look at that head of hair. Lush head of hair. And there's <laughs> Bob Lazar. This is. Just Chuck Yeager, dude. Wow. That's sick. I don't know who all these guys are. Oh, yeah. Stanton Stephen Friedman. Greer. Stephen Greer. Yeah. Whoa, is that Greer? I don't know. Whoa. We're actually back at my house, and we're at the Virgin Trading Post near Zion National Park. We're going to go check out some petroglyphs and other stuff today. And Chris Bartel just found some of his graphic design work and somebody else's hat stolen and put on someone else's <laughs> hat for sale. So we're going to take this time to announce that Chris Bartel actually has a new Patreon and so does uh, yeah. Lado Files. No, we're, by the time this video comes out, you're going to have your Patreon yes. set up and all that yes. stuff already because we're doing it tonight. Cool. A whole bunch of cool and stuff. And you'll have at least a few. That's right. It. right. You'll have at least a few. <laughs> so links will be down below. Shop is crazy. If you ever come to Zion National Park, you gotta stop here because they got all sorts of stuff. Like, right? <laughs> it's wild. Look, they even have like little guns and everything. Um, come over here, they got blankets and pottery. Oh my gosh. 
Big Macs everywhere. You can't imagine that you control it, but you can. Lado was doing dowsing rods in the meadow at Mount Wilson Ranch. And well, now... I can make it go like clockwise and then counterclockwise, but I'm not telling my hand to like do it. Bartel, explain what this is. Why so is it able to work? In your mind, it's like playing pool. You see the shot before you do it, execute. So your mind sends impulses down the, the string to the heavy rock and it moves huh. in your mind. And there's little types of energy that goes through your body that helps move. So watch, it's going in a circle. It's like pendulum. I'll, watch, I'll close my eyes and I'll stop. I mean, you, I can clearly see it. Like I can make it go the now, other I'll make it go left to right. So now remember and relate it back to how we learned with the uh, um, left to right. <clears throat> infrasound device. Forth, right. Hey Brent, do you remember with the infrasound device yeah. in the sh in the shaman room? Yeah. We started to figure out that when you meditate, that it actually extends out and informs the theta waves of the room. So just thinking about it actually creates an energy field around you. So consciousness is non-local to the body. It actually extends as a field around you. It's not just in your brain. Look at that. Dude. <laughs> yeah. In a circle. Anybody at home can do this. Just go try it. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's a, it's a trick. It's just a technique to. Yeah, and go brain, check it. I mean, you must be making it change, right? No, it's actually, you can something. actually look it up. It's just. It's, I, mean, I mean, I can feel like I can see, literally it's, control it. It's so weird. Now think know, about like, the same kind of thing as Ouija boards and and all that stuff. PK yeah. psychokinesis, where you're moving things with your mind. I mean, it's like. Well, we, <laughs> well, well what we got to do is just try multiple different variations of it and then measure it with the yeah, infrasound. That's the thing, right? Measuring stuff. Can we like do it with the infrasound? Yeah. Could we measure that with the infrasound? That's probably. Like this kind of PK, like, uh, yeah. Well, most definitely. Yeah. We measure it with the EEG as well. With the EEG. Specific part of the brain that's the whole point of why we're here, like the X Men. So you can do that anything <laughs> if you have at home. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. Right. All right. I'm driving, so I'm going to let everybody else pretty much vlog and photograph this whole thing so get make sure and check out Lado files museum of tarot chris bartell <clears throat> everybody's going to be doing youtube have patreons have instagram all that stuff tiktok go check everybody out we're gonna do this uh cool drive go to the moqui caves we'll get out here in a minute but if you want to see this view go check out their stuff so freaking awesome Makes you feel tiny, huh? <laughs> yeah, we're right down here. There's like a whole big dome right up there. We're right in the middle of Zion National Park. See, I can't even get it all in. I have to go to 0.5 so you can see the whole view. That arch is amazing. It's amazing, it's yeah. We're actually going to drive up. See, look up. Can you see up uh, above the car? Yeah. Way up there, there's those holes in the side of the mountain. Okay. Like those little tiny holes. Look on my camera. See, look how, look, look where I'm filming. Okay. I'll zoom right in right there. Yeah. We're going to drive through there. There's a tunnel that goes boom, cut all the way through the whole mountain and we're going to drive through it here in a minute. Yeah. It's awesome. We should get a picture all together here. <clears throat> right? Like, look at that view. I'm at the exit sign for the park right now. Everybody just like hopped out of the car. We're taking selfies right now. And uh, check this out. There's some deer running around off the trail. Let's see if I can come up and show you. They might have ran away already. There they go. See them. I can barely see them from here. They're being pretty sneaky. A little bit out of breath. Yeah. Lado and I are uh, going to the Moqui Caves. Clear back over there, you see. We just climbed up this big ridge. Now we're gonna go all, all the way along the top and explore inside real quick. If you slip though, look how far down. <laughs> Woo! That's no joke, right? It's pretty creepy. Oh, cool. You're saying this is this is where they shove people off? 
<laughs> 75 feet. Yeah, 75 feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh gosh. We made it. Oh, Isn't that dope? Oh. Goes way back in here. Feels like Star Wars. Look at this. And we are exploring the Magic Mesa and the Valley of the Magic Mesa and some other cool stuff. So we're getting up to the first set of petroglyphs that look like portal swirls that I feel like are in conjunction with the Mesa. And even though some of it we've debunked as being headlights, we're really not sure how to explain a lot of the stuff that goes on here, especially the paranormal things that occur down in the valley. And we're going to check it all out today. Uh, just saw. Very, very impressive. Very impressive how it lines up and everything. Yeah, you see the mesa right there in the distance. It seems like somebody hid right down here. Tried to record something. But you have these spirals right here that are so cool. Such a scenic spot. Such an amazing, yeah, dude. Like you would just sit right here like this, whoever carved it. And they were looking right at that, you know? Just like that. So, which would you say these are going? Would you say it's going, uh, yeah, there's a good view. Would you say this is a counterclockwise and then a clockwise? Yeah, they're going two opposite directions. Two opposite, how many times have you seen that? I've never seen that. Never? Never. Two polarizing opposite vortices of the spiral which every other one that you see is usually going one way or the other. Yeah. And in the legends, when you read it, it's the direction of travel. Like you're supposed to go this way or you go that way, traveling the earth clockwise or counterclockwise. So where are you supposed to travel? Where are you supposed to go when they spiral towards each other clockwise and counterclockwise in the same spot? That, does that mean that you've arrived or is it in between? Or does it mean in between dimensions or what? Yes. Well, that's why we need to go to the some of the other stuff that will make more sense, especially in medicine. We've been walking through an artifact field. Come up here, guys. I'm about to show these guys something I really haven't shown anybody else here at the Magic Mesa. Some other petroglyphs that may have something to do with it. And here's where it's intriguing. When we were at Mount Wilson, on our way up through the Schumann residence and all that, there was a stone what circle oh yeah the stone circle. and a stone square square, 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 stone square on the way to the place of significance right so check this out look on the rocks here ancient petroglyph you've got a square a circle, a circle. <laughs> and then over to the right another like square thing with almost like hieroglyph in it or a writing and then it gets weirder and weirder as the further along that we go keep in mind this is directly facing where all the weird paranormal activity happens at the mesa now follow me down below look straight down below in the opening on the ground there's the medicine wheel the stone circle wow. there's a second one another medicine wheel on top of the mesa on the left side straight in line between that the one on the valley and then the squares and circles yep. 
right? Actually, see the hump on top of the mesa? It's yep. on the left side, about probably 50 yards back on a flat spot. There's another one exactly like that on the top. And then you trace it all the way down and it comes up here and there's the squares and circles carved on the rocks right there like you would sit up there. And then the next place, best place to sit and look at the mesa or whatever they were doing here in the valley all the way, using this whole thing like a big resonant chamber, um, is down there where those other spiral petroglyphs are indicating that all is, it has to do with like portals and opening into other dimensions like you've arrived at where, where you're supposed to get, get at the center place. Chris is feeling a vibe right now and just laid down right here where the, the wheel is and the mesa is, the petroglyphs are, the circle and the square. You were saying you did this at Skinwalker a lot? Yeah, I would find these flat areas like this with the dogs and spend my nights laying on these flat rocks staring straight up into the universe. And I would just stay there until I felt you know, comfortable or had a type of vision or something. And I would do it all the time. And sometimes I would kind of drift off. But when you find areas with all this significance around, the, the pottery, the artifacts, the petroglyphs, the wheel, and you find flat rocks, I'm pretty certain are ancient. Oh, you know. They just called, did this right here and they would yeah. look straight up into the stars and get lost or maybe look for information or something. This place had a lot of significance. Yeah, we're gonna go up and see a, a bunch of more cool stuff now and go down and we'll show you guys the medicine wheel and everything down there, as well as a lot of the artifacts on the ridge over here too. No joke, everybody just intuitively here in this spot at the Magic Mesa right there, the medicine wheel is right below us down the hill. And everybody, Chris Bartell just laid down and then we all just decided to lay down here Soak it all in. Take a brace. That feels amazing, right? It does. It feels so good. I've been here all day. I imagine being here at night just looking at stars like this all night long. I know, right? <laughs> it's awesome. That would explain a lot of things. Yeah, we're noticing that a lot of the geology here, like the rocks and stuff, are the same. They look pretty good. Now we're using dicyanin. Yeah, they glow pretty good. They glow? They glow pretty good. Right, see that was something we noticed, this, these same volcanic rocks are on the top of the mesa at Skinwalker Ranch. Yep. As they are right here. These like weird, reflective. I wonder if we could use the lens, yeah, over the camera. It's this kind of volcanic colored, glassy looking stuff, which is exactly the kind of surface of rock they like to do petroglyphs on that they believed contained energy when you touched them that transferred into you. See, this is all pottery right like here. Like the black one, here. that stripe one. This one with the stripe on it. This is all flaking. Pottery right here, pottery right here. All this down this washout artifacts. This is a big, this is one whole big piece of pottery right here. Look at that chunk. Right next to flakes everywhere or a comet trail, something like that. And then you have this weird eye thing. In the right lighting, I think with LiDAR, this, this rock would probably reveal a ton more with a LiDAR scan. But this is like an eye or some kind of, it looks like a UFO, but it actually has, in the right lighting, lines coming off it that you would think is eyelashes or energy, and then have this whole burst. And then the further up the hill that we get, it gets weirder and weirder and weirder. Magic Mesa. You see these crazy designs right in the petroglyphs. Could these be ancient locations? Well, obviously ancient locations, but some sort of significance. And you say this is exactly like Skinwalker. Is 
That's the scene. Come get this photo with this. Just like, yeah, right there. Right back at the mesa. Yeah. I guess, you know, the, the question is, you know, is this a, a magical place? Is that what the argument is? This is ancient magical areas? Yes. The story depicted on the petroglyphs up here is that the supernatural being coming through a portal, conveying his powers onto the leader of the village, and he becomes the shaman, travels to and from through and out portals, and teaches the people everything he learned on to the villagers. So it gets even... Yeah, this is the whole panel. So they would write a lot of times from right to left and around. You see up there too? Oh, dude. Whole panel and around. This whole area and cliff face is covered. But this is actually... If you come up here, you might want to get your stick up at a good angle to see and extend it out. This is the spot, huh? The shaman's this shaman spot. This is the shaman seat. Yeah. Oh. I didn't know that. I was sitting here meditating, looking at all this and up at the stars for like six months, having visions and supernatural experiences, seeing shadow people move through the rocks and hearing voices, having visions and stuff. And then I found out later that right where I'm sitting is where the shaman would sit. It's right here uh, to do his meditations as well, right on that rock. I bet he slept up here too. Probably up there. Slept up there, yeah. And what? So what did you, you find the, out? The story of the petroglyphs. Yes, please. So, basically, the story starts up there. So really, we should go further and come back if we're gonna hear it all in order. Okay. So that? Teaser. We'll get yeah. a teaser and we'll come back to basically end everything up here, and then it goes down into the real world where it's. Oh, it's right here. It reminds me of like Far Side. Like a far side cartoon, right? Yeah. Here it's like the first far side cartoon, you know. First far side joke, right? Yeah, there it is. All right, Carl, blow <coughs> blow our minds. Ready? Hold up, Brett. Are you gonna film too? My phone just died. It's gonna Did blow it? our yeah, minds. Battery just died. This is not oh, blowing our minds right now. You guys gotta do this also. Here. <laughs> Thank you. Here. Mine is not blown. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is where a lot of the story begins. There is a lot more petroglyphs that are clear down in the valley beyond. I haven't even got to those ones yet. But what's amazing about these is that the story is told at one particular time of year, like in the summer solstice, right at one sunrise, when the sun is coming up through this gap in the rocks behind me up here, you can see where there's like little lines on the crack there behind me. The sun actually comes through that crack in the rocks and makes a circle of light, like a perfect ball that appears right here on the bird shaman. Boom, like this, like he appears out of a ball of light, like an orb. So this big ball of light appears as the sun comes up, it goes like that and just on him through the crack it appears and then it comes over into his right hand like a staff and then as the sun rises the sun come the spear travels up and passes onto the villager so he's just like the regular village man notice he doesn't have any clothes he doesn't have the chest plate he has a round head this guy has three fingers on each hand and bird feet like anthropomorphic feet one appears to be injured or something or shortened. But anyway, the spear travels up to literally right on this crack. <clears throat> and then it's like this guy and the light get carried up into this other dimension through portals. So then the, the sunrise comes up and tells this whole, paints the whole side of this cliff, right? So then as it unfolds into all this story, you see what looks like a man Ah, falling upside down ah, out of some other dimension or something and this whole story unfolding and then you're supposed to walk down here through the rocks and then over the mountain 
as the light appears, the story continues to tell what happens next. I've got an astronomy program open on my phone for the summer solstice. Let's take a look at what that actually looks like. So you've got Venus coming up over the horizon and the Pleiades and Taurus and right around at sunrise on the summer solstice, uh, just uh, June 21st, right around uh, 5 a.m. Venus and the Pleiades come up in Taurus and over the course of the next two hours, the sun rises in the east, right where Carl said it does. And there it is coming up over the horizon right now. Right there. And it would come right through this little uh, opening in the rocks above us. If you want to take a look at that, Chris. Yeah, right, here. Yep, right up there. And it cast a sha uh, shaft of light down here onto this rock. Oh, with the shaman. With so the we shaman. all need to have trip number two. Everybody comes back at the summer solstice and we witness it ourselves yep. in the morning. Also, yeah, that'd be sweet. And then you have the shaman. Boom, the supernatural figure. Look, one, two, three, four, five, four. He's missing a finger on one hand. And look, his legs are here. He doesn't have any feet. He's got the cow horns and head. And then between the cow horns, just like you see in Egyptian hieroglyphs, you have the horns or like the circle with the psychic energy above the head. You have this transmitting up and out and it flies out like consciousness coming down and then the story goes like this it comes down and then it's all like happens at once but this is like looking at a portal from the side and you have the ordinary villager come through coming through the portal here and here we have the symbol once you make this decision there's no turning back that's what that means like there's no going back once you do this and then here's what's crazy he goes from being a normal man with no clothes and a regular head to being full of whatever energy he got like an out-of-body experience see it's almost like here's his body here's his soul leaving his body like an out-of-body experience and as he does this you see him become the shaman on his journey do you see how it's like normal man becoming the god becoming the shaman so it's like phase one phase two Into phase three phase four a black in, triangle well and then this <laughs> was, it into a this is what what i've heard depicted is that one this all depicts like that this was done um with the whole village and this is like the overhead of the village but to me these look like spaceships especially when you look up there because it looks like spaceships with people you guys coming come out. Up here and see this shit. <laughs> yeah, because it's. And look, here's like a little guy, and a big guy. I see that a lot. A tall figure with a little guy on the shoulder. And then look, this is the same guy, and then out of his hand is like all this electricity or energy or something shooting out of his hand, right? Huh. And then up there, that looks like some Eno Enochian glyph, right? Uh, and then these are the big feet, so come count the toes over here. They considered the giants like gods or supernatural beings. Look at the toes you got. Even if you skip this one here, well, well we won't. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven toes. Seven toes. Seven toes. And then you've got these dots up above too like energy coming off these. And then there's other ones, even little teeny tiny ones up here, come over here. But... Little footprints. Oh uh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, three, four. These ones have five. And like, it's like a dog, right? And they have all this energy. Very cool. The wind has been blowing a lot, but we're down here at the medicine wheel at the uh, magic mesa right now we might even stay tonight to see the lights after we go get some dinner and the sun sets but we're just going to show you guys like just right here on the ground you know there's just all this ancient pottery even right there painted stripes on it and there's tons of it all over the place like if i walk right over here here's some more
We've done so much on this whole trip and now we're actually at the airport. I'm getting ready to drop all the dudes off. Everybody's flying back home. But you guys, uh, what an amazing trip. We've done infrasound, EEG, night vision, ancient petroglyphs. Double We've slits. done double slit experiment, meditations. We've done crammed as much as we could live stream <laughs> a live stream and everything into this whole expedition so make sure and subscribe to everybody uh down in the description below i'm not gonna get in a fender bender here in the airport but <laughs> all right you guys thanks for watching uh this whole thing i'm gonna put it into a full documentary and we'll see you guys in the next one peace